Speed Tour returns to Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta March 22nd through the 24th featuring the Trans Am Series presented by Pirelli, the Sports Car Vintage Racing Association, International GT, Prototype Sprint Series Association, and the Formula Regional Promotion. Saturday, you can take part in the Haggerty Cars and Caffeine Car Show. You do not want to miss the Road Atlanta Speed Tour. Children 12 and under are free. For tickets, simply go to speedtour.net. Hawk Performance packs 100 years of friction dynamics into every product. Backed by Carlisle Brake and Friction, the world's premier innovator of industrial brake and friction components, Hawk leverages R&D tools and motorsports experience to deliver uncompromising performance on the street. There's no reason to settle for less. Choose pads that are race proven and street legal. Find the Hawk Performance Brake Dealer near you at hawkperformance.com. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Speed Tour from Sebring. Yes, it's the 2024 Sebring Speed Tour, live from the International Raceway here in Florida, central Florida, where the oranges grow. And yes, the sun is shining once again here on a beautiful day. The wind has died down as well. We had a very breezy first day of action. And we start today with our coverage of SBRA, but featuring also Trans Am coming up. TA, XGT, SGT, GT action coming your way. But we start off with some group coverage of Group 6 and 12. Uh, a featured race from yesterday as well that we uh, showed you. And we welcome you to, once again, the Mission Foods Sebring International Raceway. Home, of course, to the 12 hours of Sebring and has been opened since what two since 1950 and uh, over the years it has been a venue that has grown in history and esteem and of course marked by the 12 hours of Sebring well as always Ben Sissel is in the thick of it and he's down on the grid let's head down to Ben Sissel Well, thanks, Jonathan. Here I am at the grid, Group 6, 12A, and the cars are just starting to show up. Now, for those that uh, are wondering, you know, you see right back here two different Mustangs, two different years. This green car here is a Group 12 car, and then the blue car, the number 80, is a Group 6 car. Group 6 cars are big bore, American muscle, Porsches from night, uh, from basically 1966 to 1972 and then a group 12 car is basically 1973 to about five six years ago so this is john strauss here john was running yesterday he was second on the grid john do you have a starter today or are we pushing it looks like we might be pushing push starting this car again today then another thing we could talk about and this was great. This came from our comment section. I knew that this beautiful blue car here with this little tail, you see this tail? So it is the fastback, but this little tail here and then the tail lights of it, this is a, gel, a Shelby GT500. We couldn't tell if that was the um, California Special or the GT500. So we're getting that going. You can see here, I love it, the old fashioned labels here. You see the fuel cell vent cap off to run so this is a shelby gt500 this is a shelby gt500 and it was run in sebring 71 and 72 been a small block since 69 so it actually has some sebring history to it it absolutely does we brought it back 50 years after it was here in 72 nice. thank you so much for bringing it back that's awesome renee tercilla here renee is with griffin motorsports so is john strauss they're running in TA. Jeff Lindstrom just made his first jump from SVRA to Trans Am. But uh, this is a beautiful car. So happy to have Renee here. Then, Tony, I've got to point out this car here, Jim Glass. Unbelievable car. This is like the definition of some of our gold medallion cars here. Jim, such a beautiful car with so much history. Thanks for bringing it. And what's it like to be racing it at Sebring? It's amazing. Really is. I love the track, and being in Florida in February is pretty good too. So, 
Nope. So we came down from New York, so this is a real tree. Nice. So. And this car has some New York, Connecticut racing history, doesn't it? Yes, from the early 70s. It ran in Bridgehampton, Lime Rock, Thompson. Uh, husband and wife team had it, and the wife was faster than the husband with it, so... That's Jim Glass, so if you don't mind, we'll come up uh, near the front. So we'll come to the front of the grid. Now that the cars are coming, we let Ray Zisa there in that Corvette. Beautiful car. So the reason we've got kind of a mixed group like this is they look good on track together, but then they also run about the same lap times. So Kurt Vogt right here, Cobra Automotive and this beautiful blue number 23, Boss 302. Kurt Vogt is actually the president of the Shelby Club and owns Co Cobra Automotive that builds these cars. Then we've got Gary Moore here, this beautiful Wimbledon white Shelby GT350. So we've got two Shelbys, two vintage Shelbys on the grid. And then we're coming here to John DeGainer getting ready to go out but this was originally his dad's car is that correct that's correct we've been working on it improving it and improving the driver and he's doing a phenomenal job i'll give up my seat to him any day nice. yeah doing really well and we're going to see him later in the ta series but just last night was awarded the uh, group six gt champion for the season so that's got to feel really good I, how, how many awards did he come away with last night three but his wife was there. This is Colleen. That's Colleen, what's up? I've, I've met your daughter at Coda. Yeah, nice to meet you. And I met uh, John's sister at Watkins Glen, I believe. So nice. So did, you went to the banquet. You're seeing him come home with all this hardware. Do you have somewhere in your house to put that? Well, I was going to ask him actually where he's planning to put it. I mean, he has lots of choices the garages, Scott's place. Anywhere but your house, it sounds his like. Office. I'm not sure what he's going to choose, but all is good. Nice, but, but you're saying anywhere but the house, is that right? <laughs> nice to meet you. Then we come over here to Phil Lasco, going out in this Group 12 Mustang. Phil, unbelievable start yesterday. And uh, did you just know that you had the grip right away? Well, I was, I was hoping that was the case. I didn't know for sure, but that was the plan. Nice. nice. Thank you so much for bringing that out. That's awesome. You can see the Lasco Ford. Then we'll come over here. We've got some unbelievable cars over here so with concierge motorsports we've got edward oh edward get it <laughs> you're not running away from me hey how you doing buddy so were you out in the uh the silver corvette yesterday yeah and you're not going today obviously correct we're, we've loaded it up okay so who is in this car lewis oh lewis nice so lewis is in this beautiful concierge motorsports Lewis, having uh, Edward with Duntov and Concierge and Alan Savagian, so much Corvette history and experience. Is that helping you out there? I'll tell you, I got, the, I got great uh, mechanics. They're helping me. They designed the car, and then these guys are teaching me as I go. I'm my second year in only, and they're helping me every step of the way. Nice. I love it. Thank you so much, Lewis. Oh, here comes a Cobra. Look at this. We got to get this. Get this in the sunlight. He's coming right to you, Tony. But absolutely beautiful car. And a lot of people would look at this, and a lot of people wrap their car in brushed aluminum, but this is actually brushed aluminum. Hey, wait, one more time. Here we go. My favorite vintage racing journalist. We got to get her on camera here. Come over here, Robin. I'm going to put you on the spot. So, Tony, Robin Handy, this is Dave Handy's wife, huge helper in vintage racing, always takes the best photos and everything and helping us out, but you absolutely still love this, don't you? Absolutely. I've been doing this since the 80s with my dad and my brother, and uh, can't think of anywhere else I'd rather be, and very lucky to have married someone involved in the sport and get to come to about 30 or 40 races a year. I love it. So Robin Handy with Sasco Sports. Jonathan, I'm going to send it back to you. Thanks, Big B. Yep. And hopefully we'll drag him up here and he can join me to enjoy the proceedings. Let's walk through there. 
of our Group 6 and Group 12A entries. And as you can see, quite an eclectic group of different cars from the mid-60s all the way up to, what, uh, what, 2014, 2017, uh, I think is the most modern car, and that's uh, Rene Tassila in that Ford 350. And great to see uh, that Shelby GT 350 Mustang uh, that ran here uh, in Trans Am in 1971 and 72. Well, as I said earlier, it's a beautiful day here. Those big haulers you see there uh, just in front of the main grandstand uh, are NAS, excuse me, are IndyCar, and they will be testing here tomorrow, and Mon uh, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, and uh, they arrived last night, so they are, all of Indy is here, as they get ready for St. Pete, and uh, great to see the names like Roger Penske and Andretti, Ganassi that have all contributed to our form of racing, which of course is Trans Am, SVRA, Formula Regional, F4, International GT, PSSA, you name it, all part of Pirella Holdings. And as you can see, the Marshals just getting a little bit of a, a respite before they head into action. That's the vision at 12. And of course, this is still a live airport in the background as we look up from sunset turn towards the Ullman Strait. And looking high above, likewise, the Cube 3 Turn 7, one of the most action-filled spots at Sebring. That's where you do your braking. That's where you do your overtaking. Generally speaking, there are other places to overtake. And we can also see the exit of Sunset from there, the last corner. Which this weekend is our Mission Foods Sunset Corner. Juan Gonzalez, who runs Mission Foods in action this weekend in IGT. And we'll also have action today if you're tuning in on the live stream and uh, on our Speed Tour YouTube channel. We'll have action from groups 1, 3, 4, 5B. We'll also have action from 5A, 7 and 11. And again, group 10 will be shown on our live stream. And the Pony Wars will be evident again as we show you our action from the first round of the T8 Trans Am Championship. And this is where Trans Am began back in 1966. And it continues today to be the longest road running series there is. So away they go. Great stuff once again by Tony Garcia getting his right up front and close with each and every car, risking life and limb. <laughs> Quite literally, then. <laughs> no question about it. And I did say that Ben might just come on up, having introduced us to everybody. He has done just that. And now you can see them on track. And we are led by the Ginetta. That's our new pace car. Uh, the Ginetta 5.6, I think it is. And uh, the most modern form of the current Ginettas, which go back in history, of course, a little factory from the UK. Um, we're our GT4 champions uh, just a few years ago here in Trans Am as well as part of the sport. Lena Cipriani, I believe. No change to the track here at Sebring. It's as bumpy as ever. That's why Indy actually quite like coming here because they head to the streets of St. Petersburg uh, in a couple of weeks' time. And so this is a good place to actually test the latest cars from Indy uh, because of the bumps. So uh, there's rhyme and reason for them coming here for two reasons. One, it's nice and dry. Two, it's only an hour down the road to St. Pete or so. Uh, and so they can get ensconced and get sorted for themselves. Well, Jonathan, I'm looking for Todd Trefford. Not seeing him, so he might have to start from the back. He just got out of his car with International GT. I was about to say, yeah, Enduro, he's busy, isn't he? Yeah. And a lot of times they force all those cars to the podium. So I right. don't see his car in pit lane. So hopefully he makes it out. He had a really fun time uh, last night at our banquet. And his nephew, Andrew, I think went away with three huge trophies. Wow. So they might have to rent a U-Haul to get those home. Um, but... 
uh, I was sitting with them for most of the night, and uh, I kind of was pretty stern with his sister Dawn for not giving us the thumbs up. Oh, did, how she made she? a comment like, well, you're lucky you didn't get a different finger. Okay. Well, she won so the I'm race. So I'm going to try this day, today. She, yeah, she won the race, though. Yeah, she did win a race. Yeah, she's a really good driver. No, she, she, was like the she was second. She was second. Well, she was second overall, but she won her group. Okay, fair enough. And I did get a uh, answer from her. The reason she's in group 12 is she's running a um, set of tires that she likes ah. that uh, puts her in group 12. And then also, I, I need to apologize to you and everybody leaving comments. Like I said, you know, feel free to yell at the commentators in the comment section. And well, we did. Let's, you let's were right. Let's it's define the, that. It's the Casey Kane number nine car that I said was the Bill Elliott, Ray Everham era the Casey Kane, and you even said it. Um, I talked to the driver, and then I looked at the comments last night, and there was a lot of all caps, Casey Kane, exclamation points, you know, and so that's basically well, the way to yell at us. When you so, said uh, special the other day about and I did say fastback, didn't I? I didn't know. Yeah, it was it's a Shelby, Shelby, though. That's a Shelby. Yeah, so we are running okay. on limited information up here. Yeah, we yeah, basically yeah. have the driver's names and class and um, make and model of the car, but not anything else other than that. So, uh, you have to excuse us, but feel free to, to correct us, too. This is your chance, man. This is fun. So leave us some comments there on YouTube. Who are you rooting for, and where are you watching from? And which cars you like and why. Uh, that's always a big part of historic or, racing. Or if they have history. Like yesterday, um, my friend David Bearden actually texted me a whole 914 Porsche history. Yes. So it's always good to have uh, resident experts. Well, I threw the question out there, didn't I? I was yeah. like, what's the heck? What's the deal? And got the whole Volkswagen thing. Very interesting. So as you can see, the Genetis lights are off. That's our pace car right in the middle and center of your picture. And then uh, Todd Treffert and Edward Savagin, Phil Lasco, uh, John Gaynor, who is also in action in TA. So he's got a busy day today, big man. So uh, he's going to take, he's gonna, what, a, what a juxtaposition. He's going to go from a Devon to a T8 modern yeah. car. I love it. Uh, Edward Savagin, unfortunately, has dropped out, but here comes the green flag, Jonathan. All right, here we go then. And do we know where Todd is? Green flag waves then for our first group race of the day. Group 6 and 12A as they fly towards the first corner here at Sebring, which is a classic. You take a nice wide berth around the outside and then duck dive into the inside. Away we go. Yeah, Phil Lasco didn't quite get the start that he uh, had yesterday, and it looks like Gary Moore popped up to the front in that GT350. Phil Lasco next to John DeGainer, and then Kurt Vogt and John DeGainer going at it. Now, uh, Gary Moore, Kurt Vogt, John DeGainer are all basically in, and actually uh, that Shelby uh, 500 are all in the uh, same, uh, The sorry, Seth Bridget. Are, are all in the same canopy, so we're going to under, under the same tents. So we're going to see what happens here. This they come is fun. to Cube Three, Turn Seven. Phil Lasco has the modern brakes. Yeah, and the modern modern Mustang, as it were. Cobra. Way they go down the Fangio straight, and yes, he used those modern brakes to good use there. Phil Lasco in the Mustang, but not getting away from the older version that quickly, is he? No, no, those GT three fifties. You know the the power hasn't changed that much really yeah. you know uh that hasn't evolved like it did because they're still running about the same displacements just per the rules but uh you know it's in the braking the handling the just overall geometry of these cars there's kurt vogt you said cobra he's the automotive. cobra automotive he runs yeah. that does he he's the yeah he's the owner operator of cobra automotive president of the shelby club looks like we got some fuel venting out of the left there ah, no that's out of the fuel cell that is normal that's just uh uh, they just wanted to make sure they finish this race. We are adding longer races than they're used to, so they're filling them to the top to make sure they can make it. Well, uh, here he is, the, the top end of the circuit before you head down that long Ullman straight, and that's where you really stretch the legs of these muscle cars, both modern and traditional or historic, as we like to say. We've got some comments from Jerry Robinson, who won our Amateur Mechanic of the Year last night. And you remember Jerry, last year when we were here, he lost his rear wing and was kind of crab walking down, oh, that, yeah, 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 down yeah. that shot there. Now there's John DeGainer in that beautiful Devin. Devin. Jerry Robinson, thanks for joining us. We miss you, but uh, hopefully we'll be seeing you soon. That Devin bouncing over the curbs there. It's very, very tough, that last corner. You're going hard right. The car is trying to shift you wide and you're trying to hold on to it and meanwhile there's bumps galore side by side action again here the 
through goes the 80, my favorite in this field. I said yesterday, Ooh. Seth Burgett. Ooh, he's going wide. Whoa, too wide. Hold on to it, Seth. Ah, uh, he's going to hit your mission foods. Whoa, what he did. Oh, nicely. Did he miss it? He missed it. Look at oh, that. Oh, man. You're getting an award, Seth. Nice job. Wow, that was good. Even the Juan Gonzalez, I think, will be happy with that. Missed yeah. your banner. Free like bag it. of chips for Seth. Yeah, absolutely. And also, he kept it out of the wall, which is very hard <laughs> More to importantly, do there. Yeah. So, yeah. He was at speed, that's for sure. I think he'll take that. But he did go the extra effort to miss my uh, sign there. So we appreciate so. that as we look high above. Now, these are two teammates, Rene Tercilla and John Strauss. Rene Tercilla, longtime racer with us with Griffin Motorsports, South Florida, but absolutely beautiful car, very well prepared, very fast driver. Yeah, I hadn't realized how big Griffin kind of is it's been yeah. it's been going a while hasn't it they're racing for six and seventh position ray lizza uh Zizza is in uh eighth position and then james glass ninth and bradley Steele running out the 10 top 10 phil manson saying he loves that golf livery there and that shelby gt yeah, 500 I do too. now my list says it's a gt 500 that would be ap my grid sheet says it is a gt 350, 350 which yeah. would put him in b production well, didn't he said it was a 500? Because it says GT500 on the plate. Yeah. When he was showing us the back of it, it says yeah. GT500. And so it raced here. 71 in, and 72. Yeah, yeah, how cool is that? Now, yeah. there's Ray Zisa in that, uh, you know, I, there's something about yellow Corvettes at Sebring. Just so much history with those CompuWare cars. So yeah, it's really yeah. cool to see them there as they go through Bennett, Bridge Hall, Bishop's Bend. Oh, you got it first yeah. time round. I'm trying. I was tongue-tied and twisted like a certain Pink Floyd lyric. I know. Uh, what song is that? Uh, but uh, let's see here. If our commenters know what song that is. Oh. As John DeGainer, look at that, coming outside of Kurt Vogt. A little bit better handling as that dev. Learning to fly. I think it's comfortably numb. No. But it might be. I don't know. Maybe our commenters know. We'll find. We've got some. We've got a band house some Floyd fans out there. How's this for some Corvette history with Ray Zisa followed by Jim Glass? A couple decades between those two Corvettes. Yeah, no kidding. Few changes. Uh, Voigt's now fourth position. Degainer drops to third. Phil Lasco now leads from Gary Moore. Strauss up to fifth. To, uh, Rene Tassilla is sixth. Ooh. Jim Glass getting on the binders there. Saw what was happening. Nice job from Jim. But that was kind of a f nearly full speed braking there. That gets dangerous in those bumps. This seems to be the battle. Our camera crew is picking this up perfectly. Yeah. That's Bradley Steele in that 1967 Chevrolet Camaro. Followed by Jim Glass. So, unfortunately, Scott Shadle is not out there today, and I, I called him Tom Shadle yesterday, but his name is Scott Shadle. Scott, sorry about that. Oh, okay. oh that was a mistake. Oh. Yeah. You heard the squeal of the tires underneath him. Yeah, that races. seems to be like a little bit too hard on the brakes, and it, you could see it really affected the balance. Seth Berger there in the uh, 500. So Lasco continuing to lead here. This is our Group 6 and Group 12. We'll have several groups in action today, and our feature race coming up straight after this, which is the TA, SGT, XGT, and GT Trans Am. Now, you know how I love my awkward. So I put the mic in his wife's face and said, where in the house? And she said, it can go in the garage. It can go in his office. <laughs> and she named everywhere but the house. I love that. I love it. Yeah, I bet that's a, a contentious moment uh, <laughs> when, when you, you arrive back with your plastic prize. Well, no, these are, when you win a championship, you win a pretty big cup trophy. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, it's, it's a... It's a pretty coveted thing, and he worked really hard to win that six GT championship could you put flowers last in it? year. Could you what? put flowers in it, maybe? You could put flowers in it, yeah. Okay. It would hold a bottle of champagne with ice. There you go. Now, now, now you think. Beautiful shots here. You can really see when they get on the brakes by the car just kind of dipping. Yeah. And, and as you roll in, this is a great shot to see how this sud sud you yeah, see how high up that car is. And yeah. They set it up, and then it dips down like that. Yeah. That's on the brakes because they have to set it up higher here than anywhere else. I was talking to uh, JJ with uh, Tommy Dreese's crew, like the, the shock expert in the paddock, and mm -hmm. he's like, yeah, this is the softest Wait, setup what a we shot. have. How about that with the plane landing just behind? Yeah, look at that shot. Nice work, Mr. Cameraman. Oh, coming behind him. I think that's big Ron. Do Ron Ron. And again, into Sunset they go. The Mission Food Sunset corner. That's the number 38, Bradley Steele. 
And I think I love all these uh, particular, that's the Chevrolet Camaro, but all these sort of historic Trans Am, as I like to call them. And of course, there is an official historic Trans Am group that uh, convenes around America. A very strong group, too. Priceless cars they run. Very privileged to have uh, been part of watching them. And you're absolutely their right, because they're, they're categorized as Group 6 TA. That means yeah. Trans Am. Trans -Am. So they're set up to the specifications of Trans Am from 1966 to 1972. That's the Don Yount and uh, Bradley Steele. Yeah. Well, Don Yount actually was here a couple of weeks ago testing a modern Trans Am car, I think, for Tommy Dreesey. Oh, that's cool. So always nice to, always nice to have him doing and do, going about his paces, as it were. We have the legend John Gore's line looking over our shoulder, John. That's a so scary thought. But you're welcome to come in and watch, John. And he's a <laughs> longtime supporter with the Dyson racing team, yep. Chris Dyson. So, yeah, it's great to have. You know, seat. it's cool to come to Sebring and have these little family reunions like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you want to you wanna grab a headset and talk with us a little bit? No. <laughs> he's taking a back seat. I like the hat. But uh, John races a, uh, a true English mini with us. Mini ah, Cooper. good man. It's a Watkins Glen, so so you know we're good friends. Both like our British sports cars. I love them. Thank you. Oh, we get bits as well. Look at that. That's awesome. That's a, that's a hell of a move. So that's Victor Corda there in that 1966 Ford Mustang Fastback. 66 to 67, I think, is still my favorite era of the Mustang, especially in the Fastback. And then Rick Ortman, who won a championship with us last night his Group 12 championship in that 1992 Chevrolet Corvette. But one time I was editing a video in the, in the hotel lobby at Coda, and he and his wife were staying there, and it showed some historic Trans Am footage. And we were able to find him and his friend uh, in the, like, pit paddock. He raced in the Trans Am series back in the, in the early 70s, I believe. Wow. And now back here with us in a Group 12 car. How cool is that? Yep. Uh, my co-commentator in Superbike, Steve Martin, bought a 1967 Ford Mustang uh, Fastback and rebuilt it. Uh, bought it in the States, then had it uh, sent over to Melbourne, Australia, and he rebuilt it at home. And uh, so he's roaring around Melbourne right now in one of those. That is awesome. Doesn't so, yeah. race it, but he but he does enjoy it. Yeah, Rick Ortman there in the back in that Corvette. But yeah, this this basically looks like Trans Am here back when they started in 1966. Yeah. No kidding. Back when they did the FIA standing starts in Trans Am. That's right. Could you imagine if we did that these days? I think it'd be fun. It might, would be might fun. be a bit of a struggle, but it'd be fun once. <laughs> once. Yeah, like we found out an Indy car in the first Grand Prix at Indy, the uh, the road course at Indy. Then this Cobra, we're showing that Cobra uh, today at the grid because that is Stephen Shoddy or Shoddy. Stephen, I'm sorry, I don't know the proper pronunciation I'd say of your last name, but that's a Group 6 AP 1965. Beautiful. But it's it's that basically brushed Brush aluminum. aluminum. Yeah. If he polished the aluminum, it'd be a competitive advantage because it would blind the other drivers. Completely. And, and, and he'd be able to do his head. And then Lewis there in that Group 6 B production, 1968 Chevrolet Corvette with Edward Savagian and the Concierge Motorsports folks helping him out. Absolutely vintage racing Corvette experts. Yeah, I was about to say, is, the Savagians uh, are yeah. the, the doyens, if you like, in, in the Dallas, certainly in the uh, Texas yeah. uh, for the Corvette, right? Yeah, and they're, with, uh, they're, they're in Dallas. They'll be with us here in a few weeks at Eagles Canyon with Concierge Motorsports. So uh, look for Lewis to really move up as he, as he progresses through this. But I love the headlights on these cars, that 68, yeah. 69 Very body. Distinctive, isn't it? it looks like he's, he's wheeling pretty well. And we have the classic Cobra versus Corvette battle happening yep. right here. Nice work. Yeah. So he, Lasco, that is, Phil Lasco has increased that lead now to, what, six and a half seconds over Gary Moore uh, in the Mustang. Uh, so it's Mustang versus Shelby at the front. Again, is still uh, going strong in the Devlin in third position. And then Voigt in fourth. Strauss to Silverberg. Uh, Zizas dropped down to eight. Steel and Glass rounding out the top ten. Yeah, this is a nice little battle here. Ooh, we've got Eric Cartman joining us again. Eric, we missed you last season. We didn't see you very much. But he says, will you guys be at Laguna Seca May 3rd through the 5th? Yes, the... 
Mission Foods Laguna Seca Speed Tour. Notice that it's through uh, May 3rd through the 5th, which means we're going to be celebrating Cinco de Mayo out ah. there at the Mission Foods Laguna Seca, WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca Speed Tour. So uh, expect some special festivities happening out there. Love going to WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. Always some great competition, especially in the historic Trans Am and B Sedan classes in SVRA. The B Sedan class has just blown up with uh, Troy Ormish and the Toyo Tires 2-5 Challenge. Well, that Corvette is trying desperately to get past the number five, but can't do it. And this has been a nice little battle as they dive into Mission Food Sunset. Time running out. Just a few more laps to go. And he's got him now, side by side. Come on, Lewis. He's, he's, taking, the lot, he's taking the inside route now, the outside route. But it's going to be a drag race. Here we go. He's covering him off. Yeah, that's a, that is a, a, a bigger engine in that Cobra because that's an a, a production but then the handling and the weight should come to that Corvette. So this should end up to be a pretty good battle there. There's our leader, Phil Lasco. And there's Gary Moore just behind him, but you can see the gap by uh, some six seconds, but the straight makes it look as though they're much closer together. But Lasco, Leo, and uh, diving through. Nicely done. He's had a good run. It looked like he's maybe playing it safe now. Now, he is leading Group 12. The next car, Gary Moore, in a real Wimbledon white Shelby GT350. I think he's is, catching. Is leading in group six. Yeah, I feel like Phil Lasco is something is slowing down. Yeah, he just uh, did his fastest lap to Gary Moore. So he's some three seconds quicker than Lasco at this point. So as we close this one out, uh, there's every chance of him catching him. Now, some vintage drivers are like, no, I'm winning my class. I'm fine. Not Gary Moore. No. If there is a car in front of him, he wants he's going to try to overtake. And then Gainer just flying through there. He's going to be in the next race. He's going to be taking his time, I think, in third place. Still a long one-hour race coming up. Peter Tremulus says, awesome cars and coverage. Thank you, Peter. Thanks for joining us. And then uh, Down Forest is saying Dyson was the best. Well, Dyson is the best. But yep. Rob Dyson, we see him a lot in the paddock, the father of Chris Dyson, and now the new uh, purveyor of the Indianapolis Motor Museum there. And uh, Chris Dyson, three-time championship, trying to start his four time in a row run here today at Sebring. Yeah, that's right. And of course, he's up against the only other four time consecutive Trans Am champion. That, of course, Ernie Francis Jr., who is on the pole today. But man, this, there's something about this Blue Boss 302 I just absolutely love. Kurt Vogt drove it for years with us. Then John Cloud kind of adopted yeah, yeah. it. Now it's made its way back into Kurt Vogt's hands. Uh, because John Cloud is busy being the crew chief for Wally Dallenbach Jr. and yeah, Adam yeah. Andretti. Yeah, it's great. And then there's John Strauss there. Really nice, friendly guy. Uh, he had to get pushed off of the grid yesterday as a push start. And uh, just uh, he, he was the guy, I remember, last year that lent his car to another competitor so that other competitor could go out and qualify. We just heard some yeah, big squeal. tire squealing there. Not Somebody sure where that light. was. Maybe another uh, turn eight uh, squeal, I wonder. Missed the breaking point, but not to worry. Here come your leaders again. Now, let's check out how close Gary Moore has got to him. He's definitely closer than he was a lap before. And what, I've got roughly, let's have a look. I'm just looking out the corner of the commentary booth to see if the white flag's coming out. I've got officially some five yeah, minutes to go. Like he's it. got time. Yeah, yep. so we do get the white flag here, but let's take a look at the lap times here because he's caught right up with him. And there's every chance that we could get a humdinger here on the final lap. And we sure actually enough, had a question from Jerry Robinson, of course, always the competitor. What is the leader's best lap time? Best lap time is 218.755. Yeah. Uh, but that could be a lips by Gary Moore, who, who keeps dropping it uh, time and time again. Last time out, Lasco did a 221, so he's knocked it off some three seconds. Uh, and that's why, as you can see, uh, Gary Moore catching. But from above the drone, you see the gap between the leaders, um, and it's, it's fairly safe. I think maybe what happened is he looked in his mirror coming down Sunset and saw Gary Moore way back, and then it looked like he kind of woed up going through 17. Right. And then saw that Gary was was coming again and now he's maybe turned it back on or maybe he had some electrical problems not sure they're back to John DeGainer in that beautiful Devon that actually has the uh, the frame from an MGA basically right. from the driver back it was based on an MGA frame good idea Devon uh, one of those 
specialists making specials. We had three Devons here this weekend. David Zvetsky in his maroon one, and then we had a Porsche Devon, factory Porsche Devon, that was racing and had a 35 Porsche 356 air-cooled engine in a beautiful car, but unfortunately he had some uh, mechanicals and, and went back home. But here comes Phil to take the last few turns. Yep, as you can see from above, there's the gap. It's not going to be changed, I don't think, and he's going to have the grunt down the main back Ullman straight anyway as they approach the finish. And Lasco leading by two seconds in the end. He headed up to five at one point, uh, but more reeled him in bit by bit, and Tegain is going to take the third, I think. Here he comes, down the Ullman straight for the last time. Beautiful day here. I'm glad the wind's gone. Boy, that was a factor yesterday. I love these long shots like that. So now a, uh, a Cobra and a Shelby GT350 are going to go side by side into 17. But here comes our leader. Nice and smooth, bounces over the bumps at sunset, and there sees the second run at uh, Group 6 and 12A. And you can see Gary Moore there in the blue and white classic colors for the GT350, or are we calling it a GT500? Uh, We're not sure yet, but even, even so, uh, across the line comes the 111 of John DeGainer in the Devon Evolution to take third. But first in his class, first in six GT. Yep. But you know, for me personally, when the whole family's here, I just, I, I, I you know, we want to see our drivers finish the race, pull it in under their own power. So uh, Jonathan's going to be able to go into the TA race and his Ron Fellows Trans Am car running his first pro race ever today with some confidence you know yes he's feeling pretty good and he better get back quick because that's coming up we're going to take a short break here but coming up is that feature ta race and but before we head out we'll just celebrate with the man who won this race phil lasco and take a look at some of the highlights from what was a cracking six and 12 group race So we got underway, everybody diving into turn one, including the number 80 of Seth Bergen in the uh, Shelby. Linus Stern at first, and here was the first major overtake for the lead, and it was the 14 of Phil Lasco. And how about this? Too wide there, somebody had to give, and thankfully it was the number 11 of James Glass thinking of it in the roadster. Some good close tight racing. Classic Trans Am cars also going about their paces. And we've got some nice shots of the beautiful number five, Steve Shoddy, Silver Cobra. But at the end, it was Lasco from Moore and again. We'll take a short break. We'll be back and start getting ready for our big feature race for Trans Am here at Sebring, the home of Trans Am. An important decision is afoot. This man is about to buy tires on TireRack.com. TireRack is the leading online retailer of tires in North America and a repository of advice and expert reviews. And it's done! All that's left is to arrange for safe, easy installation at one of our independent recommended installers. Well, I guess he did that too. TireRack.com, the way tire buying should be.
you've got a business to run, big and heavy products to ship, and customers who need them now. When you've got the right driver and the right equipment, you can bet on a spectacular result. Bennett understands complex logistics and puts the best team, the most time, and the latest technology into every customer relationship. So you can sit back, relax, and enjoy the race. Let us handle the rest. Together. Together, we can move anything. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Sebring Speed Tour. Welcome to our MAV-TV viewers. So excited to be starting the 2024 season where it all began for the Trans Am Series here back in 1966. We always start every Trans Am season here at Sebring International Raceway. Lots of drama with that because there's lots of bumps here. But check this out. We have Paul Menard running with the Master Force Tools. Beautiful GT GT3, number three, Rocket Sports. Unbelievable car, this beautiful Ford. He's back with us in Ford, racing with the Paul Genalozzi team, three GT. Paul Menard, you qualified second. I know you've wanted Sebring for the last two or three seasons. So uh, you're, you're there, right there with Ernie Francis Jr. What's your plan to start on the outside? Uh, I've never really raced against Ernie, but he's a seven time champion. So uh, he knows what he's doing. Um, I've never had a clean race at Sebring. We've, we've always had issues, but th today's the day to uh, clean that up, uh, get a clean start. At our, uh, our Master Force Tools uh, Ford Mustang uh, definitely has pace in it, so we'll just be smart and uh, race hard. The front two rows are tight on time, so it's going to be a hell of a race. Master Force Tools, for those that don't know, that is the Menards brand tool brand. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah it's Menard, we, power tools, hand tools. Uh, it's good stuff. Go check it out. Nice, so there's Paul Menard starting in second. Haven't yet seen Ernie Francis Jr., so there might be some drama because if he doesn't make it to grid on time, he'll be starting from the back in that ECC Motorsports Dodge. Then we come here to our three-time champion. The drama here is that three-time champion, he's trying to go to tie Ernie's record of four times consecutively, but now Ernie Francis Jr. here could play spoilers to Chris Dyson's plan of winning four in a row. And we can see right now Ernie Francis Jr. coming down the uh, grid. So it's not going to happen that way right now. But we're here with Chris Dyson. His family is here. We're starting the season. And I talked to Stevie, and it seems like the Dyson team is more confident than I've ever seen them. Well, Ben, we, we worked hard this winter, uh, really uh, tested a lot. I think we got the car in a, in a much better operating window. Um, I'm, I'm confident that we've got a car that's good for all conditions, and I think it's going to be a good test out there today. I'm looking forward to getting back to battle and uh, going after our fourth. Nice. So we're going to see you at the Jim Weeds Winter Circle? Well, that's always the plan. Nice. I love it. So we can see here the, uh, the shout-out to Greg Pickett there in the Pickett colors. Just so much history with this team, with Greg Pickett being involved. Rob Dyson as your dad. We were reading the comments earlier during the SVRA races that so many Dyson fans out there. Anything you want to say to them? Well, it's great to be back in Sebring, and uh, we've had a great time down here over the years. We're just hoping to add one more to the memory banks for everybody. Nice. I love it. Well, let's try to come over here and see if we can talk to Ernie Francis Jr. Back in the series, it's so cool to see him after two years. I'm not sure the driver's here yet, so we're going to talk to AJ because AJ at the banquet last year you got up on stage and said ecc motorsports is bringing it we are going to kick some blank and here you are with uh, the four-time only four-time champion nta consecutively so it looks like you're living up to that promise yeah absolutely um you know our original plan for this weekend was obviously you know you guys have heard was with with, uh, with brent cruz but you know his uh he was pretty ill so he couldn't do the ta2 race or this race with us um, he'll be making his debut with us at uh, another event. Not sure which one yet, but um, couldn't have uh, put a better guy in the seat. You know, I mean, he, he won a TA2 uh, North Championship with us in 2018 when I had hand injuries and he filled in for me. 
Um, just a great kid. I mean, I think he's even better now than he's ever been, honestly, with everything he's been doing, with the, the whole SRX thing that he did. He's just a he's just unbelievable talent, and um, looking looking to forward uh, looking forward to showcasing that talent. Now, get get a little shot of him. He's got his game face on. Ernie Francis Jr. Since we last saw him in the Trans Am series, he has been working out quite a bit. You know, I was even surprised when you were on the Dale Earnhardt Jr. show. I was like, man, he's been hitting the gym. Is it cool to be back here? See, I mean, this is a Trans Am family. Everybody was so excited to have you, your dad, and Monica back in the paddock. Yeah, you know, it's always cool to be back here. Uh, you know, cut my teeth in this series. Uh, seven championships, four in the TA class. Uh, you know, I was sad to go when I had to go over to the, do the uh, open wheel racing. But, you know, happy to be back. Ended the, uh, my career here on a, with a pole position at Coda. So to get another pole here is pretty awesome. Hopefully we can uh, take it home and get another win. And uh, you had almost no experience in this car. Yeah, about 10 laps of experience in it uh, on our pole lap uh, in qualifying. So, you know, I think we're just getting faster and faster every time we go out on the track. So uh, if that's the case, then I think we'll be pretty good out here. Well, Ernie, the Trans Am family loves you, and we can't wait to see what, how your career goes. So welcome back. So let's come up here. We've got a lot of GT cars, and I'm hoping to make it to them, if we don't mind. Here is our new COO, Michael Printup, a huge Trans Am fan walk from the Watkins Glen area, but now he's the COO of this whole Speed Tour brand. So I see you down here. You love these cars, don't you? Are you kidding me? I'm just ready to talk to Adam, talk to Tommy, talk to Amy. This is great out here, man. These are people that have been racing that are just so good at this sport. It's hard to root for one person. Yeah, exactly, exactly, because they're all our friends, too. You know, exactly. So we've got Adam Andretti here with the, the beautiful Burton Racing. And check out his helmet, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that with the ultimate headers, the top liner, beautiful car. Claudio Burton, I know that you can't be here, but we love you. We miss you. And I think you've got a, a pretty hot shoe in the car today with Adam Andretti. Then Keith Grant with Showtime Motorsports, really doing well. Always a great driver. I've always kind of known him as an open wheel guy, and he's been having a lot of fun the last two or three seasons competing with his dad, Richard Grant, in that Chevrolet Corvette, both in the same class. The Tommy Dreesey, still with Lucas, but this year with the Showtime Dreesey Motorsports Franklin Road Apparel, Chevrolet Camaro. And the great thing is, is we have Ken Twaits joining Jonathan in the booth who is uh, helping Tommy Dreesey with Showtime Motorsports with this car, but a resident expert in TA. Two-time champion right here, Amy Ruin. Always really good in that McNichols Steel Metal Service Center Chevrolet Corvette. But I got to get to Wally Dallenbach Jr., Trans Am champion. Long history here in the Trans Am series. Running the ultimate headers, Riley Ave, Ford Mustang with John Cloud and his team. Look for Wally Dallenbach Jr. to really go up because I think he is doing the whole season. Then, then we've got Bennett Bridgehall, Danny Lowry here. He's going to be going through Bennett Bridgehall Bishop's Bend this weekend. It's kind of a mouthful. And he is the first GT car to qualify, XGT, here with us in this beautiful AMG Mercedes. You can see his whole team there. And then i got to give a shout-out. First time start in Trans Am, John DeGainer in this Ron Fellows winning car. And I was talking to Wally Dallenbach. I'm like, when you look in the mirror, it's gonna be like going through a time machine, but welcome to the series. Thank you, I'm really pleased to be here. It's a great opportunity to learn from, uh, learn from the best and uh, race with them and see if I can get better. So it's really a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. You've got your SVRA red hat on, which means he's a winner in SVRA. Now we're gonna see where he goes with Trans Am in this beautiful car. John, thanks for joining us. And then uh, Tony, I'm gonna come over here. We got to talk about this. This is watch that splitter. We've got this uh, Viper of Lee Saunders, Richard Forsyth. We've got Chris Coffey right there. Jeff Lindstrom is making his first start. So we've got all kinds of drivers. The GT class is growing pretty quickly. So look for them to go up. Colin Cohen is here with us for the first time. Two of the fifth, two of the five Maseratis like this are racing with us today. Two, there's only five of these in North America, and two of them are on the track with us today. And Kaylee Bryson, the, the Oki from Muskogee, is back there in that beautiful yellow Corvette, 22 years old, doing really well. We've got a Toyota Supra out here today. It is such a cool grid. This is Jeff Lindstrom getting some prayer from Marvin Gray there before he goes out in his first professional start right here with Griffin Motorsports. So excited for Jeff. 
We've been good friends for about four years in the SVRA series. So unbelievable. So, Jonathan, we've got a great grid here. Walk us through it. Back to you. Thank you, Ben. Yeah, I'm here alongside uh, Ken Twaits, the perfect guy, really, to have here. He's been a TA champion uh, in his own time. Well, he's been a, an XGT, T, the first yeah. ever XGT <laughs> champion, uh, and he's been, a of late, a TA man. Uh, but he's also now got a effectively a, 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 some skin in the game here because you're helping Tommy Dreesy, but there's a new setup for Dreesy Motorsport. Why don't we start with that? Um, how, how is it all working for Tommy and you? Okay, well, Tommy uh, purchased Showtime Motorsports, so he, all our assets are his now. He's the owner of the team, but I'm the team principal, team manager. Um, he wants us to... Uh, to kind of help him. He's in Hollywood. That's a long ways away. Yeah, no kidding. And so we just help run the team for him and keep everything going real smooth. That's, you know, and I actually think from a driving point of view for Tommy, that's going to be really, really valuable because you have driven these cars. You can give the input. You can give him reassurance. You can give him uh, words over the radio. And so that's going to help Tommy immensely. Yeah, I'm a little bit of everything. Driver coach, uh, psychiatrist, <laughs> uh, you know, team manager, Keep make sure everybody's got hotel rooms all you know, all encompassing. So, yeah. well, it's going to be interesting because obviously uh, Chris Dyson on a roll at the moment. You've been with wheel with him over these last few years that he's won three titles in a row. He's going for a fourth. It's kind of interesting that we've got uh, uh, almost by default uh, we've got Ernie Francis Jr. and we should explain why Ernie's back here this weekend. He was actually here to do some of the SVRA. Uh, races in Group 10, which he is doing uh, in his old breathless uh, number 98. But then Brent Cruz, who was going to do double duty in both TA2 and TA, uh, got ill and unfortunately couldn't make it this weekend. And so Ernie said, well, shoot, yeah, I'll, I'll get in there. And so uh, four-time consecutive champion. Yeah, right. I mean, if you look at the, the entry list, it's the who's who of Trans Am. Yeah, right? really There's is. several champions all lined up in a row. So it's going to be a really good race. Okay, here's the grid then for our Trans Am series for the first round. Ernie Francis Jr. and Paul Menard on the front row. Bags of experience between them and Ernie Francis Jr. doing the fastest lap he's ever done around here. Dyson, our champion, Adam Andretti in a brand new top line of car. We'll talk about that. Keith Grant and Tommy Dreesy, like you say, it's a who's who. Former champion Amy Ruman and Wally Dollenbach, likewise another champion on row four. Danny Lowry lines up for the Bennett Bridge Hall team. And John DeGain is stepping out of SVRA, and he is taking on Trans Am. And as we saw there, Kaylee Bryson, the youngster, uh, just 22 years of age, and uh, she will be taking part. Uh, she actually got a podium here last year, but uh, she's doing two series this year. Uh, and great to have her on board, and she is part of our scholarship PMH scholarship and diversity program. Colin Cohen, Todd Marapparals, he didn't see those. Richard Grant and Billy Griffin and Joshua Carlson coming in, another youngster, uh, alongside one of our more experienced drivers in Joey De Silva of Ave Motorsports. Yeah, it's really cool. Billy Griffin's running TA. He's past GT champion, right? Yeah. So he's moving up the GT4 ranks. GT4 champion, yeah, that's he, great. So he's uh, he's taking his uh, taste of TA cars. Well, let me ask you, what is, as an XGT champion, what's the transition like? Because these are monsters, aren't they? Yeah, they're completely different. You know, I, I came from XGT. We had paddle shifts, ABS, traction control. That was the Audi R8, right? Yeah, so now you've got twice the horsepower, no ABS, um, just gobs of, of uh, it's a monster. How long before you really felt like you could rag uh, a car in TA? Because, you know, you did a couple of seasons and, and you had some great results. But, um, you know, when did you really feel comfortable? I felt really comfortable, uh, you know, about halfway through the first season. Then we went to the 18-inch wheel and tire yeah, package, and fine. it really transformed the car. All right, well, let's head down to Ben Sissel. We're about to get underway for our TA race. Well, thank you, Jonathan. I am here with CJ Oliveris. You were with us at Coda. It seems like you try to show up at a few of these with Mav TV, kind of a new sponsor with Trans Am. And, and we were trying out some things last year, having a lot of fun, growing the fan base. But really, I think you saw some things working, and, and it seems like you're adding more Trans Am to Mav TV. Absolutely. You know, we we were showing highlights all last season, experimented a little bit with live, and uh, talked to to Tony and the team uh, coming into the 2024 season and thought, let's go live for all the racing. So uh, we'll be live all, all year. What I love about the MAV-TV 
crew and staff is you guys are all motorsports enthusiasts and you have the same problem that I do. Is that correct? Absolutely. We, we, we live and breathe racing. So we're, we got picks in, in every race and, and we're always watching. Nice. Well, give us, take the mic and give us the most famous words in motorsports. Racers, start your engines. On board with Chris Dyson, we'll be on board with him throughout this race. Should be a very interesting one, defending his title. And interestingly enough, Chris Dyson didn't get off to the start he wanted last year. He got into his stride later uh, in the season, but uh, that just kind of brought things to uh, a little bit more interesting. We had Justin Marks, who came and did as many races as he could. In fact, he's leading the championship. But how about this? The Burton prepared car. Uh, Burton Racing and this brand new Burton chassis that uh, Adam Andretti in. And this is probably the most modern car for Trans Am that uh, Adam's been in. Yeah. And he is loving every minute. Oh, Claudio Burton's really built a masterpiece there. That thing is absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Very well designed. Got some interesting uh, features of it. The, what, the... what interests you about it? Because for, for the outside eye, it's not that different. But when you get up close, there's a lot of little nuances. If you look at the steel, the steel's from Germany. And it's uh, it's very bendable. It doesn't It's not brittle at all. Uh -huh. So it's a very safe car, very strong car. Um, the suspension design is really cool. Same bodywork that we run, but he's done some uh, little little tweaks here and there that you notice, and they're really smart guys over there. So I'm not surprised that Adam has got it in the 158s around here. Yeah, Keith Grant always looking for a result. And then Tommy Dreesey, we just spoke about him. Uh, Tommy needs, I feel, and you talked about sort of helping him as much as you can, but uh, Tommy's the kind of guy that if he gets a good result today, could just you know spark that i mean he's a former champion he's never been slow he's never slow uh, he's always competitive he's had a few gremlins when it comes to mechanicals um but tommy on his day is as fast as anybody and he just needs a good result I think. yeah i mean this is a war and this is the first battle of that war and, and he keeps that in perspective the, the purpose here is to have a good result um bag as many points as possible if the podium's there let's go get it Amy Ruman, of course, another former champion, uh, two-time champion, in fact, and uh, she's looking for another good result in that. McNichols, number 23, sticks with the brand that is Corvette, but she looked very competitive yesterday, and uh, let's see what uh, she can pull off. The family here, again, this is a family affair, as is so much of Trans Am. Yeah, Amy's uh, crew and dad is, uh, especially have really got her back up on form. They've made some mods to the bodywork and, and air intake and that type of thing. The Corvette body is the slickest body out there, yeah. so it's really fast down the straightaway. So it's, it's really cool. She's back in the hunt, man, and it's a lookout. Yeah, definitely, and she's never lost any motivation. She's had a few fallow years, um, but she's always been there or thereabouts, and her and Dreesey have definitely had some great <laughs> competition in the past. Mm -hmm. Here's our previous winners, Matt Brabham. I saw him here this weekend. Uh, he was last year's winner. Chris Dyson, of course, has got a fantastic record here, as has Ernie Francis Jr., but Ernie, of course, has been out of Trans Am, seven-time champion of Trans Am, one of the youngest ever, uh, but won this race in TA in 2020, and, of course, has been racing in single-seaters. He got a, a diverse scholarship to go and race at Indy Next and we may see him back in Indy Next at some point um, but uh, right now he is sort of uh, doing some more sports car racing uh, Super Trofeo is what I believe he's going to be doing mainly this year but he's come back this weekend of course he's a local from Florida came back to do some SVR race uh, SVRA races and then found himself uh, on the grid of TA simply by the fact that uh, Cruz was not going yeah. to uh, I mean, Ernie, part. it's like Ernie never left, right? He's sitting on pole up here. He's super quick. Um, he's been run, running single-seaters. Yeah, just to hold you there, let's, while we get a chance to take a look at it, we'll talk some more about that. But let's take a look at the circuit guide for, uh, for the Trans Am race here at Seabrook. Hey everybody, this is Ken Twaits commenting on the 2023 race last year at Sebring. You can see everybody funneling into turn one here. This is a big passing zone, and they gained some places at the start of the race. You head down to turn two, three, four, and then the back straight. In the turn seven, another key passing place. It's a first gear hairpin corner. This is a place to make your move. Then you exit turn seven to turn 10 and then into the tower turn, which is very important because it leads on to a very fast part of the circuit. 
You accelerate out of turn 13 all the way to turn 16 and onto the back straight into turn 17, which is another critical passing zone. And you can see Tommy Dreesey trying to make a move on me last year, but I hold him off at bay and headed towards start finish. That is a lap around Sebring. Let's hope 2024 is as fast as well. And now you know we have the right guy sat next to us here <laughs> in the commentary booth. Uh, Tommy Dreesey, we'll be on board with him. Always exciting. And I don't know if you've got the swear box uh, connected uh, or for, for his uh, car, but we need it because he gets, he, gets, he gets excited, does Tommy? Yeah, I don't know if we can uh, hear him talk too much on the radio. There'll be a lot of bleeps in there. I had a lovely moment where he conked out at uh, Road Atlanta and his, his whole thing. And I love this from Danny Larry. He's got the old uh, Hawaiian <laughs> thing. And he knows where his breaking point is. It's a great way of actually judging the G-Force. And when she turns to the left, that's the G-Force. <laughs> she so needs some see that from time to time. Yeah, she needs seatbelts. <laughs> but she's playing that ukulele. And uh, he and his teammate have had this for the last couple of years. It's a nice touch. But, yeah, we'll, uh, I, I got some great uh, on board from Tommy when his engine blew out uh, at uh, Road Atlanta a couple of years ago. And he goes, I'm on fire, I'm on fire. It's like it was the, <laughs> out of Days of Thunder. It's really good stuff. And there is Danny Larry in that beautiful Mercedes. I know you've driven Audis. I don't know if you've had a chance behind the wheel of one of those, but yeah. they're gorgeous. Yeah, those are great cars. We need more XGT cars in here. Great to have Paul Menard here. Uh, uh, as Paul Menard, uh, of course, here. Uh, a huge history in Xfinity Cup car racing um, for many, many years. And, of course, the Menard's name oh, yeah. in NASCAR is synonymous and Paul's, still is. Paul's a really good friend of mine. Uh, he actually drove for us two years ago at Charlotte, won the TA race there. Um, really great guy, really great driver. It's just He's going to run the whole season with Paul Genelosi. And uh, they've really got a formidable package. They build their own engines. And so look for him to be really strong. He's, he's, a, he's a winner. Yeah, and, you know, like you said, uh, 2011 Brickyard 400 winner, 471 races over 16 years in NASCAR, the top uh, echelon. And he said to me just a moment ago that he's trying to do the whole season this year. So Dyson's not going to have one-way traffic this year for sure with Dreesey, Menard, and several others all biting at his heels. Uh, and so it's going to be an interesting season as we go back on board with Tommy Dreesey before the start. The Janetta uh, that leads the pack has got the lights gone off, which means we are going racing for round one of the 2024 season. Live here on MAV TV, Ken Twaits and Jonathan Green bringing the action as they come out of the Mission Foods final turn, which is sunset here at Sebring. And then they should look for the green flag, which waves and away we go. Ernie Francis Jr. in the Challenger, his first ever chance of racing this car. And Paul Menard in the all-green Mustang on the outside at this point, but it's going to be Ernie Francis Jr. slotting into third, the 16th Jim Weed car. And we're on board with... Oh, oh, no! The worst possible position for Dyson, and I'm not quite sure who caused that. Dyson was getting aggressive up the inside, but a little too aggressive, and he's taken Ernie Francis out oh, in that out. beautiful challenger. Oh, it looked like he was sliding up the inside there. Ernie saw him and went to block, but there wasn't any room. They touched, and the rest is history. Oh, boy. I don't want to apportion blame at this time. We'll take a look at some replays, and I'll, I'll, I'll sort of let you kind of adjudicate as a driver. Dreesey uh, is still going strong as they dive into the Q3, turn 7, Epin for the first time. He's behind Keith Grant. Uh, Andretti's got away well. That's going to help his cause. He's now in second place. And what a drama indeed as oh, we yeah. go back on board with Tommy Dreesey. Yeah, and we're under caution. Yep. They're going to have to clean up that mess and line it back up. Wow. Now, we're going to get a replay here, Ken. And I just want you to sort of see what you see. Yeah, it looks pretty smooth here. Paul takes the outside, which is Norm. Uh, the thing is, you want to slide in and block that inside. Uh, Dyson has plugged oh. it. Oh, he got loose. He hit, he hit a bump, didn't he? Got he got loose. He got loose and hit a bump, and that was, yep. I hate to say it, but that was Dyson's fault because yeah. he, was, he, was got, he got a good turn, and yep. he got, you know, got alongside. We'll see it here. It Look, he goes the to the inside, and, and, and he just spun it yep, right into him. That's it. Could do nothing about it. He was basically out of control. Yeah. Oh, what a shame. Well, for all those chasing Chris Dyson and looking for a chick in the armor, they got one. He didn't have the best of starts, and we'll see it here from Chris Dyson. Ken? Yeah, Paul takes the, the normal outside. 
You know, it's a little sketchy there, but he... but he gets along Menard and then it gets loose yeah, and, and it, really just, yeah. I, he, the rear I mean, end it pitched left, he, yep. sent him into Ernie. The rest is history. Yeah, what a shame. And uh, Chris will be uh, kicking himself, really. Um, and, and maybe, and obviously not a line you usually take through turn one, a little bit more on the inside. And he may have just been uh, surprised, perhaps, by the way the car moved yeah. underneath him. I mean, he had a really good run coming up to the inside going into two, and that's where you want to be because then you take away the corner from Ernie, right? But yep. but unfortunately, the rear end didn't stay underneath him and you know, pitched him right in. Ernie took them both out. What a shame. Well, we're going to be seeing lots of great onboard shots uh, of uh, the Franklin Road Map TV, Dreesy Lucas, number eight. There's Tommy, and there is Amy. Yeah, Amy's got a better start, and yep. uh, she's ahead of him. So uh, they've had some history uh, fighting each other through the years. And, <laughs> yes, uh, they have. But they enjoy it, but uh, he goes, she said to me one year, what is it about red cars he doesn't like? <laughs> <laughs> you know, thing about Amy, she is a heck of a driver. Yeah, yeah. And she drives the whitest car in the TA series, so she's really tough to get get by. And she, But she drives very fair, um, and she's very quick. So then, we are under caution here. And uh, Amy looking for a good result from this, as we all are. Tommy Dreesy, though, Tommy Dreesy, though, looking really impressive. So... As you can see, they are clearing up the mess uh, that was caused effectively by Chris Dyson and Ernie Francis Jr. I feel for Ernie because he's come in at last minute and he was really enjoying. He got oh. his fastest <laughs> ever lap round Sebring in a 158.4, oh, uh, and that was really pretty, pretty darn impressive. Yeah. I don't think he's ever been as quick as that. Uh, I was looking at the times, actually. Uh, Paul Menard, uh, second on the grid here last year, did a 159.097. And this year did a 158.4. So just shows you how much quicker the Paul Menard, who is leading this race now, um, is one from year to year. Justin Marks was pole here uh, with a 158.9 last year. And this year's pole, Ernie Francis, a 158.2. Yeah. So seven tenths quicker. It's really quick. Very quick. You know, that Dodge-powered machine, uh, you know, it's a Weaver chassis yeah. fielded by ECC, and those guys have a lot of fast parts on that car. Uh, big brakes all the way around. That, that, it's just a shame because Ernie did nothing wrong. He was just in, in position leading the race for about, oh, I don't know, five seconds. So we're under caution, and we're expecting to get going again. We'll keep an eye on the Janetta, but it's going to be a really interesting restart to this one. A chance for Andretti to get a win, a chance for Keith Grant to get on the board, and a chance for Paul Menard to open up his campaign. Uh, Tommy Dreesy will be looking to get podium. And now with uh, Dyson out, they're all going to be thinking uh, of the numbers, really, uh, and taking advantage of Chris Dyson, because there's one thing you can guarantee over a TA season, and the man next to me, I'm sure, will agree, is that if you give Chris Dyson a chance to get back behind, the wheel uh, he's gonna score points if nothing goes wrong unfortunately today it has gone wrong but we are about to get underway well we welcome back our viewers on map tv as well as we join the speed tour live across the world Wherever you're tuning in from, we welcome you, but especially here in the United States on MAV TV. You had a show on MAV uh, last year, and I mean, you know, there's no question that they've, they, they've really voted with their feet at MAV TV, you know, with the highlights, with a special documentary series. It really does give an insight into what this sport is all about. Yeah, we did Road to Glory last year. We're going to do a second season this Great. year with MAV TV. It kind of gives you a behind the curtain. Uh, feel of what goes on in a real race team, you know, it, it's the warts and everything. You, you see the goods and the bad, so. And, and then also it's on that sort of what I call Trans Am Thursday, right? So you've yes. got the double header of the two highlights uh, at 8, 8 p.m. And then uh, you've got uh, your show, and this is the Chris Dyson on board, obviously, sat there waiting. Well, there's the hook. Yeah. You don't, that's not the, the thing you want to see at the beginning of a race. No, it's not at all. Well, let's take another look at uh, what happened because we're under caution because of this incident at turn one on the first lap. Here we go. So 
So Ernie Francis dives in in the all-silver 79. Menard on the outside on his line. But then a very tight line from Dyson. And you see the back end just gets loose. And he really was. He had nowhere to go. And he couldn't really react in time and turn the wheel in time uh, before the front end just tapped the back on Ernie and yeah. sent him shuttling off. Yeah, that, uh, that bump on the inside of one there is really harsh. And it, it got him. And, you know. The rest is history. Yeah. You know who's licking their chops right now is Paul Menard. Oh yeah. You know uh, they those three cars were all within you know tenths of each other. Now they're gone and he's sitting out front. So yeah, I mean to be honest, had he got out of three, you'd have pretty much put a bet on uh, Ernie taking taking this race uh, by storm, uh, really enjoying his time in the car and also being back in Trans Am after two years away. And he hasn't had a lot of glory in Indy Next. He's had some good results, but uh, he much prefers to be at the front end. Uh, what a show. <laughs> oh, boy. Hate to see that. Yeah. Boy, Adam just squeezed through yeah. there. Yeah. i got to say, that's, I, I'm just noticing that myself. That was a, a lucky moment for Adam Andretti. He got unlucky yesterday in the TA2 race. Yes. Him and Annunciata came together on the exit of the hairpin. So, a bit of bad luck today, maybe a bit of good luck today for the Burton prepared it, top liner. It looked like Chris Chris might be starting his car and driving it off. I don't know. The hook yeah. didn't hook it up, so I don't know what's... I mean, I don't think he got too much damage because he carried on. I think um, that front fender's rubbing, but, yeah. um, you know, front end damage, but might be drivable back to the pits. Who knows? You, we might see him back in the race, maybe. And also There's watch Wally Gollum back, Gollum back. don't count him out ever. Yeah. Well, they have a new Meissen chassis, yep. um, brand new car. So they're building up the speed in that car. And, you know, Wally, he kind of takes his time in practice. But during the race, he's an animal. So be watching yeah, for him. We have, me and Ben had a quick chat with Wally on the pre-grid. And we were asking about uh, how the car was. And they were struggling with setup. And uh, they really haven't found a, a real solution. So he feels like this is going to be... Not a test session, that's unfair, but but not he, he's not dialed in as much as he'd like. And, of course, with his history of championships oh, underneath him yeah. and his huge history of racing. He's um, great. Yeah, he's the kind of guy that will drive over those problems or drive around those problems. Uh, but if the car's not set up, it's really hard to do no. anything special, isn't it? Wally and I had a great race here last year. We were nose to tail for, you know, 50 miles uh, and traded places back and forth. He's a very fair driver. Of course, he's a... He's a great driver, great history. I'm glad he's in the field. Another man we're looking for, Lee Saunders. Probably the best record ever than anybody here in Trans Am. He's won six times here in SGT. And he is our current SGT champion. Um, but, of course, um, he's been doing a little bit of TA2, so he's stepping up. Yeah. I race with Lee, Lee quite a bit. He's yep. a great driver, very fair driver. Um, if the wind is there, guy, he gets he? it. Yeah, he's awesome. Man. That Viper is very, very quick. Yeah, he loves He's a big Dodge Viper man. Loves the big horsepower of that uh, Dodge Viper. So I think once we get out of the Almond straight here, and you see it now from this camera angle, yeah, the Janetta's lights are off, and that means we are going racing. So this is the key, and you've done this a, a, a bunch of times. What's the key to a restart for Paul Menard here from the front? Well, um, he controls the start, so the the pace car will pull off, and he once there's a start box back here that's marked with some tape, and once he gets inside that box, he can go anytime he wants. So the leader has the advantage. Now let's see what Tommy Dreesy can do. He's a good restart of the Ginetta. Pulls to the right, and it's sunset. And Menard just jinked there for a minute. We thought he was going to go, but no, he's holding on for a second. The number three, bags of experience from both NASCAR Cup. Racing and of course Xfinity. Uh oh, Andretti's out. Oh no! And there I am predicting that this was going to be a huge race for Andretti because he had bad luck yesterday and he's out. Pushing Keith go. Grant up to second place and third place now with Amy Ruman. And look at on the inside the number eight. Here comes Tommy Dreesey and he's already passed Amy Ruman. Wally Dollenbach is also passed Amy Ruman and Dreesey goes up to third behind Grant. And Menard starting to head off into the distance early on after this big caution has now 
been cleared up and we are four laps into this 27 but away goes Menard. oh man these tires are cold they got to get some heat in them before they can really press on here yeah this is a lap you've got to be careful you yep. want to push on but you've got to be careful and she's playing hard on that ukulele <laughs> danny lowry oh she's getting frustrated i think <laughs> you'll see you'll see just how much g-force there is under braking though there's wally and amy and wally yeah, got by good. amy yeah wally did a good job on that restart see what i mean he's an animal in these races oh yeah Right on Tommy. Wally Donald back. Wally Donald back. QD Mike has got to work here as well. And uh, it's a synonymous name on Trans Am Racing. you got to remember, Race. these cars are full of fuel, so they tend to, to push, to have understeer until that fuel burns off. So it's a little touchy yeah, to drive in the beginning. how does that take? Uh, it takes about, oh, about eight laps for it to start coming to you. So you got to kind of hang in there, let the car burn it off, Oh, this is fun. Oh, look at Two this. Two of the greats. Wally's having a go at Tommy Dreesey, and he's going left, he's going right. He's trying to put huge pressure on Tommy Dreesey, and Dreesey right now not giving an inch. It's good stuff. Now down the back straight, Wally takes a nice tight line on Dreesey. Oh, he took the shortcut. Oh, so did Amy. So did Amy. Yeah. And now getting, getting good drive down the back straight, and you see it from the drone. You see Dolan back. Getting ever closer to Dreesey. We're looking out front of Dreesey's car, but on the inside, will we see? We have ECR Chevy power versus Ford Not Mustang quite. power. Yeah, this is good stuff. There's Lee Saunders in ninth position. He's got a little bit of uh, air. Very wide by Dollenbach, using all the road and more as they cross the line. He's Five laps to, gone. He's trying to get a toe off Tommy, going yep. into one. Amy waiting to pick up the pieces if they get, these two get it wrong. We've already lost Chris Dyson, the big story of the day. And Ernie Francis Jr., more importantly, taken out. Degena in his first ever TA race uh -huh. in sixth place, ahead of Saunders. Good for him. No, no, good for him. He's got bags of experience, but he's just been... <laughs> what a juxtaposition. He was in a Devon half an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> he's on the podium in a Devon. Tommy's got his mirrors full of uh, Dolan back. Yeah, no kidding. Down to the Q3 turn seven. This is a good overtaking place. Amy staying with these two. Yeah, she's waiting just for waiting chance. for a mistake. Yeah. One little mistake, and I'll guarantee you she'll plug that hole and be gone. Um, top end power of the Corvette. Has she got, has she got sort of a parity with those other two cars? Yeah, one? she's running ECR as well. Same okay. engine as the, the Chevrolet Camaros. and uh, But she's a little slicker body. So seeing yeah. about 177 miles an hour at the end of the back straight. Okay. A little bit more nimble as well, yeah. So we should say some great action between these three. Fourth, fifth, third place battling it out at the moment. Bernard increasing his lead. He's got two seconds over Keith Grant. Keith Grant, no fool either. And, of course, the Grant dynasty of drivers, the whole family, have been involved in different forms of American motorsport, but mainly Trans Am. Yeah, his father's Richard's in this race. Yeah, exactly. He's back there somewhere. Yep, absolutely. And then we get uh, the other Grants occasionally. Milton, of course. Yep. Carrie. Carrie Grant, of course. Keith, David, they all race. Oh, yeah. Either in a Porsche, a Trans Am car. Out of the Mission Foods sunset corner for another lap. Dreesey holding on here against Dollenbach. This is the battle for third oh, place. Yeah. Amy Ruman just behind. Menard has increased that lead now to three seconds. So Menard uh, putting in some excellent laps. He lasted a 2.01. That was his fastest lap. Everybody now on their fastest lap. And I think uh, now tires up to temperature. We're starting to see yep. just what they can do. Yep, brakes are hot, tires are hot, the cars are starting to, to work well again. You know, we just got to burn a little gas off. And then what do you think they're doing here to the Burton? Looks like a, an electrical problem of some sort. It just quit. Well, it's nice to be taking a close look at this brand new car. Yeah. This new car, Gremlins, they'll work through it. So, out of the Q3 Turn 7 they go. Sadly, Andretti in the pit. Sadly, we've lost Dyson and Ernie Francis Jr. So, three men who are all capable of winning this race has opened this up at the first round of Trans Am, presented by Pirelli, round one at Sebring. And it's Paul Menard leading the way at the moment. We've got an almighty battle going on here. 
as Wally Dollenbach is all over the back of the Hollywood, Mr. Hollywood, as I call him, Tommy Treacy. <laughs> yeah, you know, Wally, he's, he's like a pit bull. He's not going to let go of that until, you know, and, unless Tommy can uh, gap him here. And this is the back of the circuit here before 16, just before going through 15A. And then that drive off 16 down that Ullman straight, all important to get that drive easily be caught on the inside and you've got to kind of block that but then that puts you offline a little bit yeah. i'd only just noticed that blue dot ben was telling me about it on the top of the bridge there and that's what you kind of head for isn't it right yeah he's taking a look at wally how close he is i think we have a little advantage here in turn 17 Dreesy does and so he gets a good runoff 17 going to one yeah. so wally catches him back up in the back section of the track yeah it looks that way did not it so let's take a look at the lap times between these two. Last time out, uh, a 2.022 by Wally Dollenbach and a 2.035 from uh, Amy Ruman. So she's dropping off at a 2.021. So Dreesy just slightly quicker than Wally Dollenbach. But as you point out, I think it is in the midfield part of the circuit where Wally has that advantage, especially coming into the hairpin. Seem to be handling a little bit better in the twisty stuff. Yep. That's pretty good for a, a brand new race car. Yeah, Always no doing kidding. A good job. Now let's see how close he gets here. Under braking, very close indeed. Won't make the move this time though. And this is an almighty battle for third place between Dreesy and Dollenbach. Two past two of the champions. Greats. Yeah, two past champions exactly. Chevy Camaro out. versus Ford Mustang. As Classic. it should be and always will be. We hope. Sadly, we've lost the Dodge Challenger. We had a 1-2-3 of Mustang, Challenger, and Camaro for the start of the race, but sadly, that dissipated quickly. If you've just joined us, we've lost Chris Dyson, our champion, in an incident with Ernie Francis Jr., who was leading the race at the time, going into turn one. Now, Dolan back, though, Ooh. looking every which way. Where would you make your move? Well, he's got to pass him where he's strong, and unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of areas. Maybe turn 10, maybe oh. turn 7. He looks so close here. This is as close yeah. as he's been. We'll see and if he can draft him down the back straight. Yeah. Maybe this is the move. Yep, and look how he's going through see, 16 here, and he's right there. Now. Yeah, he's got about a car and a half length, and let's see overall top speed. Uh, does he get the draft? You see it nicely from the drone, and looking above, you can see how quickly both cars are moving. Uh, a little bit of defensive driving from Tommy. That's nice work from Tommy Dreesy in the Lucas number eight. Greasy Motorsport, Lucas number eight. Yep. Well, he looks a little closer than he has been in the past, yep. so something, some fireworks could happen here pretty quick. Yeah, and again, looking at the times, that was a better lap this time from Wally Dollenbach. He goes to the 2020s. Uh, in fact, uh, Tommy doing a 2024. So that's why that gap has come right down. It was a much better lap by Wally Dollenbach, especially in the last part of the circuit. And now he's literally driving in the mirrors, as Tommy. This is big pressure driving. Through this tight section, while he's a little bit better, so he could be making a move going into turn seven here. Yeah. The cube three, turn seven. And that's the cleanest place, right? I mean, that's where yes. this is a, a somebody knows you're coming, yep. and B, you know, there's room if the guy he's gives looking. you. He's looking. Uh, he's not close enough, I don't not think. Not quite close enough. Getting a good drive off the corners. So, out of the cube three, turn seven, they come down the Fangio straight, up towards Collier. Turn 10 and 11, Tower, famous names, famous corners, mainly because of that uh, 12 hours at Sebring. But, of course, Trans Am got its start here. Jochen Rint winning the first ever race back in 1966. Wow. Amazing. Pass Formula One champion. Yep. Yeah, they're having a good battle. And it looks as though car number 39, that's Todd Naparowski, uh, has also retired. That's one of our GT entries. So we've got the other classes, and that is true to the 1966 version. Remember, Trans Am, a sedan series at heart uh, at the start. Now a tube frame and very, uh, you know, sort of prototype type of cars. But uh, back in the day, and therefore we've kept that tradition going. We have the TA class, which is unlimited uh, trestle frame cars. But then we also have the production class. And I've got a former champion from XGT alongside me. We've got SGT, Super GT, as it were, and then GT. And Todd Naparowski was uh, in the GT championship, but he looks as though he's pulled out with an electrical problem. Yeah. Yeah, the TA car of today is the fastest sedan in the world. Yeah. 
you know. Way of and that it, was yeah. the goal of Trans Am. Uh, plenty of power, aerodynamic, downforce, but no band-aids. And I like the, the sort of cross-section of uh, who it attracts to from the youngsters who are learning their, learning their trade to the guys that have seen it all before and, and maybe coming back to it. You, you took 10 years out of racing before you came back to Trans Am. Yeah, right. I always wanted to end up in a, a Trans Am car, and I got what I wished for. <laughs> there you go. Danny Lowry in the XGT leading the way here, and he's getting that poor old girl dizzy at the moment. Uh, she is absolutely going from side to side. Those knees are going to hurt by the end of this. <laughs> hope she's got some uh, some stuff to put on those, some uh, bolter yep. in or something. He's just running his race. That's a great car, great XGT yeah. car, past champion car. Yeah, Danny has just gone from strength to strength. He's been running this car now for the last couple of years. And uh, like you say, current champion of this uh, particular category. You are a former champion of. You did it in the Audi R8. Yeah. The XGT really was built for um, older uh, GT3 cars. So R8s, uh, Super Trofeos, these, these AMG, Mercedes, uh, those type of cars. So they need to come here and race this series. Yeah. And then we go back to the GTs. And, of course, uh, we're looking closely at Kaylee Bryson, one of our... Uh, Scholarship drivers, just 22 years of age. Yeah, she's getting a, a lot of good seat time in that Corvette. Uh, Aaron Pierce runs that team, and we know Aaron from uh, SGT in the past. I ran against him when I was in SGT. And she, uh, I think she finished inside the top 10 at the Chili Bowl this year in, uh, in Midgets. There you go. So she's got some experience. She, she actually got to the podium here uh, last year in this particular car, so uh, or at least in this particular uh, category. Uh, and then she went off and did some more different racing. And as you say, she's uh, she's good on the dirt too. But I think this is a great environment for a, a youngster, especially, uh, you know, uh, the diversity groups that are coming in here that don't perhaps, you know, relate to motor racing, perhaps as closely as some of those that have been around it for long. This is a great environment to learn. The, the older folk will give the information. The guys have been around in engineering cars for many years. It's just a good environment to learn and a, a safe environment. Yeah. You know, I, I took the path of SVRA racing coming up through that yep. and then getting into Trans Am and SGT, then XGT. Yeah, to be honest, you're our the, poster boy. Yeah, yeah I mean, then in terms of made the final through, move yeah, to exactly, TA. So. Yeah. But you never felt under pressure to, no. to overperform, right? No. Or risk things that you weren't capable of doing at the time. I remember talking to you. Yeah. No, it's you just do what the car can do. Here's your SGT leader, and of course, that is Lee Saunders looking for his seventh win here at Sebring. What a, what a record that is. And I haven't seen uh, Ethan Barkey yet, but we'll keep an eye out for him. Uh, that was uh, He was uh, in TA2 yesterday. Paul Menard doing a great job so far. And extending that lead, the gap at the moment, five seconds to Keith Grant in second place. And they're starting to get into traffic as well. Like yeah, that'll be interesting. BMW. Yeah, it will. You know, he's got a five-second lead, and, you know, the... the Let's see if it shrinks or gaps as these guys weave their way through traffic. And we just got a chance to see the number 97, that of Chris Coffey in uh, the GTs, the man from Texas in the Norwood Auto Italia traffic graphics car. And yeah, those graphics ping. <laughs> hmm. So Saunders overall in seventh place, but leading... SGT at the moment. Danny Lowry just ahead in that Mercedes leading XGT. Amy Ruiman, the last now. Just five of the TA runners uh, at large, as it were, on track after that incident earlier, right at the start of this one. Yeah, it looks like Tommy's got just about a half a second lead on Wally. Um, so Wally's kind of laying back a little bit, saving his stuff. Let's How do the tires, you talk run. about the fuel going down. How do the tires last under a TA? You've got so much power, more power perhaps than sometimes the tires really want. But uh, how long do they last and, and how do you manage them? Well, you know, it's pretty warm out today. So, yeah. you know, the last 10 laps can be a challenge. Maybe even the last five laps, you know, you're, you should be out of everything. Out of brakes, out of tires, everything, <laughs> if you plan it right. Out of breath probably as well. Yeah, that too. Out of drink bottle. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, high above, out through Bennett's Bridge Hall, Bishop's Bend, and into 15 and 15A, then down to 16. It's a little complex, and took it to Evan Sledy. He said that's his favourite part of the track here. And here we go with Lee Saunders again, down the Almond Strait and down towards the Mission Foods. Turn 17. Yeah, you're not catching that Viper down nah, the straightaway. No way. Great character, Lee Saunders. Richard Forsyth behind him in that uh, all-green G-Speed Chevrolet. Yeah, Richard and I raced together in Ultimate Streetcar. And there's your GT leader, Chris Coffey. Uh, in the graphic, uh, the traffic graphics, got to get it right. And we welcome our viewers back on Mav TV. This BMW has been trying every which way to get past. And can he get him? This is Billy, this is uh, Joey De Silva on Chris Coffey. De Silva battling with Coffey for GT Honors. So this is a real battle for position. Not giving an inch, though, at the moment. Out of three, they come and under the bridge. As we've said before, the obvious place for an overtake is coming up at seven. But you've got to tuck yourself in close enough. Yeah, if you, you get under that mobile bridge, you've got to be less... You've got to be closer than that, haven't you? Here we go. Ooh, oh, he's thinking about it, though. BMW. Looks like he's got him. What am I saying? It's a Supra that we're looking at, oh, isn't it's a it? Supra. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, I thought it was a BMW for a second, but now it's the it's the old new Supra. I like it. So through he goes, and Joe De Silva in the Ave Motorsports Toyota Supra does take the lead in GT. My apologies for not spotting that. I'm sure our internet will light up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it is job. a BMW, no difference. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Yes, okay. Well, we've got some wits out there. Oh, I used to love the original Supra. That was a great car. Pretty brave bringing it out. One Maserati out there, Chris Coffey. And uh, ever been tempted to take the Maserati out or have a Maserati go? Sure, I'll drive anything. <laughs> <laughs> you listen Come to out of retirement. Yeah, why it. not? Kent Waits, of course, alongside me, not racing today. He's uh, working with Drusy Motorsport this year. Sold the show, so the Showtime team to Tommy, uh, but didn't sell himself. He decided to help them out and uh, work with the team. And I think it's been a big move for them as we do take a look at the Texas 97. Yeah, it was great. You know, we were a pretty uh, pretty good team last year. Yeah. We, won, we won four races. Yes, so, you did. Uh, all that's been kept intact, and we kept uh, two to three cars on the grid all year. So that was the goal. That's that's why I did what I did. Really cool. And taking a bit of pressure, you were doing everything last yeah. year. I mean, boy, I don't know how you did it. Incredible. <laughs> Just to remind you, Paul Menard, you're missing nothing. Leading this race at the moment in TA by six seconds. In XGT, Danny Lowry firing off in sixth position overall and leading in XGT. SGT led by Lee Saunders. He's oh. in a battle with Richard Forsyth as we go back on board with Tommy Dreesey. Tommy Dreesey's caught his teammate. Yeah. Nah. Where's that Richard Grant? That's Richard Grant. Ah. Father and son have the, the same uh, paint scheme. Yes, they do. Well, I may be wrong, but it could be, it could be, <laughs> yeah. Might not be Richard. We'll find out. I think, it, yeah, is it Keith or Richard? He hasn't caught Keith yet, has he? I don't think so. No, I, you know what? That is Keith in front of him. It's only half a second between them. So this oh, wow. is getting a bit more interesting now. Oh, yeah. Dolan back still Teammates. fourth. Amy Ruman fifth. Yes, that's right. Danny Lowry sixth. And overall, Lee Saunders leading SGT, but over seventh overall. There's the 04. That's uh, John DeGaina, who we mentioned earlier, just coming from SVRA. And that's superly prepared. Uh, number 04, the Speed Dreaming Racing Ford Mustang. And a shout out to Josh Carlson in the 36, uh, another one of the Ford Mustangs uh, in the Enceva prepared car. He's one of the youngsters, just 17 years of age. Uh, and he's what I was talking about earlier, how this uh, sort of mix of youth and uh, experience, great to see. Yeah, 17, and, and this series is kind of old. 
<laughs> TA2 champions are 15. Well, I can confirm that sadly Adam Andretti has uh, retired with that electrical problem. Now Menard getting into traffic, and he's got to be careful here. Oh, Dreesy's right there. Yeah. And if he gets. Dollenbach's right there. Yeah, Dollenbach's still going on. Here comes the leader, and he's going through. He's weaving some his way the through other traffic. Series. Not as quick. And that Supra is in its own battle with the car in front. The Maserati of coffee. Maynard so, makes it through. Second, third, and fourth are pretty close here. Yeah, this is good. And we got this traffic coming up, so who knows what can happen. Yeah, exactly. And uh, certainly Dreesy will be thinking about using that traffic for sure to try and get away a little bit more from uh, Wally Dollenbach. He's got, to, he's got to be wily as a fox, hasn't he? <laughs> It's only lap 14. We're not even halfway yet. I know, yeah. Long oh, way to go. We're halfway. Yet. Long way to go yet. And it is hot out there. You mentioned that. But this is the battle. Look at this. Oh Second, third, and fourth place with traffic in front. Now, who's going to play this traffic as they head down the Fangio straight? What would you be thinking if you were on board with Tommy now about how you would try to dice through this and take it to your advantage? Yeah, you got to be patient. I mean, this traffic's going to block you big time. He's got to worry about Wally, too. So, yep. got a little room there, a little help. Grant making good work there. You got these other guys ahead of you and a uh, very fast part of the circuit. And if you got to get out of the throttle. And at this point, are you working out where you're going to meet them? In other words, okay, I, I can sort of see the difference in speed here. Yeah. I'm going to meet them at 16 and I got to make it work. Yeah. I mean, Bishops is really quick and these slower cars are really slow through here. So you got to be careful. Yeah, ultimately, you want to get through here and use the Almond straight where everybody's in a straight oh, line. Oh, man. Ooh. Keith got blocked big time there. Big Look time. out. This is a chance now for Tommy. He's going to tuck himself up right behind Keith Grant here as they come onto the Almond Straight. This is what I was talking about. They can use the speed now and the power of the TA cars to absolutely blitz past the GT cars, the production cars, and that's what they're doing. But Tommy right there now, and he's got a chance at sunset here. Oh, Coffee's now in front of him. Dollenbach still waiting. Wow, this is great. This is excellent. Into Mission Food Sunset they come. Cars everywhere, all different categories. And everybody's oh racing for position. Going in turn one. Tommy's making a move up the inside. He's looking. I don't think he's going to quite do this. And there's another full course caution now. So the complexion of the race changes again. I'm not sure yet. Oh, look, oh safety see. truck right there. Yeah. Be careful. Yeah, they've got to slow down quick. They do like to get on track quick, don't they? They're, these guys are risk takers, these guys who uh, manage the track here. Uh, when it comes to recovery. They don't mind being on board with uh, the rest of the racing cars. But, oh, there's a car in the... Uh, oh, in the fence right the fence there. there. On the exit of three, I think he's probably touched the the mud and dirt yep. on the outside, maybe getting too much wheel spin. And, oh, it's Danny oh, Lowry. Oh, no. It's Danny. Uh, yeah, you have a tendency to, to dump some wheels off in the dirt, and then it hooks and sends you right on the in, into that inside wall. She's going to get some... She's going to get some she's mud in that, rest dirt screw, in that dirt screw. In that uh, grass skirt there, what a shame. Let's have a look at what happened here on the exit of three. We're on board with Danny Lowry, and again, I'll, I'll turn to you, Ken. You'll see it better than I will. Yeah, you go down. Okay. Down to the apex. Oh, it just got loose on Oh, it. okay. So, so no, it wasn't around. on three, Bam. it was four. No, he didn't dump bridge. any wheels off. It just lost the rear end. Yep. Simple, simple turnaround, and unfortunately, he's in a position where we had to pull out the caution. What a shame for Danny. And, oh, boy, uh, look at this shootout. This is going to be fun. And what do we got left? What would you be, okay, so what would you be thinking now? You're over the halfway point. Uh, we've got about 35 minutes on the clock. Uh, we've, uh, this is 14 laps gone. You know, the, the effectively, the... Uh, Fuel load is coming down yep. bit by bit, but tires were in good shape now because we've yeah. had a couple of cautions. This is the time of the race where you're going to set your best laps. The fuel load right. is burned off. The tires are still fresh. Um, these are going to be the quickest laps of the race that's coming up right now. They're going to pack up against Paul, so you're going to have uh, some pretty fast four front cars coming up, and even Ruman will be there too. So, 
Yeah, and also, the, the guy, I guess the guy to lose the most is Paul Menard because the other three behind him were battling for themselves, but against themselves, but they were, what, six seconds behind yeah. Paul, and now he's got to do it all again. Yeah, he's been on cruise, cruise control the yeah. whole race, and, uh, you know, that's he's such a cool customer. He's, uh, you know, he's doing what he's supposed to do. Now they'll pack up again, and who knows? Who knows what will happen? You never know on a caution. Yeah, and I bet it's hot when it gets cautioned because, you know, these cars are designed to be going at over 150 miles an hour. And now there's just hot air going in, right? Yeah, you got your cool suits going. You got uh, your drink your drink bottle. is. This is the time to really take a, a good long drink of everything, you know, relax your grip. Well, let's head down to Ben Sissel in the pit lane. Well, thank you so much, gentlemen. I'm here with Osney Rodriguez with Griffin Motorsports. We've known each other for a long time because he runs in Trans Am and they run in SVRA. Jeff Lindstrom is in Billy Griffin's car. Billy Griffin, our two-time GT champion, has moved up to TA. He's in a beast, brand new car to him. What are your drivers saying? I know you had to bring Billy in. Uh, we've been having some issues with the car the whole week. Uh, the brakes were getting a little bit too hot, so he couldn't go around the cars. He couldn't stop in time, so he he brought the car in to check the brakes. Uh, they're running a little bit too hot. Yeah. And Jeff Lindstrom is he doing okay? Jeff Lindstrom is doing great. He's a pretty good driver, so he's doing pretty good right now. Nice. All right. Well, thank you so much, Osne. Gentlemen, back up to you in the booth. Thanks, Ben. Good work, and we're under caution here at. Sebring, this is the first race of the season, and this is where it all began for Trans Am back in 1966. So we always come here, and it's a traditional way to start the season. And right now, Paul Menard is leading this race, the former NASCAR superstar. And Keith Grant in second place, being chased by Tommy Dreese, Wally Dollenbach in fourth. That's Wally Dollenbach Jr. So a host of great drivers at the front of this one, and don't count out Amy Rumi either. We'll take a short break. We'll be back with more action from Sebring after this. So when this caution restarts, and Ken, I'll turn to you again. Uh, we talked about it in the last one. He got away well, um, but it's a different situation, this, isn't it? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, Paul's just cruising here. And again, you've got to make it to that start box um, before the green, before he can go. Uh, the caveat here is you've got some slower traffic right in between first and second place. So. Yeah. That lap traffic has got to either get out of the way or get on the throttle or both. <laughs> so we are clicking down. Of course, we, we still click down the, the laps as we go through this. Well, the Internet is liking the deep blue 90s Mustang Cobra. And Danny, Lower, uh, Danny Lowry is up and running go. Yeah, that's a pretty stout race car. And we welcome our fans live on MAV TV across the USA, wherever you're watching and wherever you're tuning in. And we also welcome you around the world on the YouTube channel that is Speed Tour. Welcome to the Sebring Speed Tour with Trans Am and SVRA. We've had some great action over the weekend and some great guests. Great to have our Grand Marshal here as well. He came in the booth with us uh, yesterday. And uh, right now, the action on track is under caution with Paul Menard leading the way. We're interested to see just what in the Dreesy Motorsports brand new setup with Showtime boss. Ken yeah, Wentz. it's uh, 
looks like we're going to go another lap here. Yeah, I think so. To clean things up. They got to repair that wall back over there by turn. Yeah, three. they got down and going, but they didn't necessarily get the wall. Yeah, sorted. they got to repair the fence. But this is a long, long caution if you're in the hot and the heat, but yeah. halfway through your race. See, there's an actual start box with a fluorescent tape on the side of the wall. That's where. That's where Paul can accelerate. Once he, he can't do that until he gets to that box. Then it's up to him to go. All right, well, while we're under caution, let's head down and find out what the latest is with Wally Dolan back. We've got his crew treat with Ben. Hey, thank you so much. I'm here with the crew chief of Wally Dollenback Jr. and this Ultimate Headers team. Steve Boucher, what is Wally saying to you on the radio? How is the car set up? I knew he was struggling earlier, but it seems like he's doing pretty well now. Yeah, uh, we struggled earlier in the weekend with the setup, and uh, I think we got it pretty good now because he said he's he feels like the car's the best it's been all weekend, and he thinks he's better than the guys ahead of him. We're having a little problem with the, uh, when you close in tight and dumping the air off the front of the car. Our arrow's not quite right, but the car feels really good. So he's looking for a long straightaway to make that pass, basically. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So he's, he's holding on to it, try to have something for the end of the race. And if anybody has some experience in Trans Am, it's Wally Dollenbach. So, Steve Boucher, thank you so much for your input. Gentlemen, back to you. Thank you, Ben. Yes, we just heard from Race Control that uh, we're going to go green straight after this. But interesting what uh, Wally Dollenbach has changed his tune. We spoke to him, uh, me and Ben, on the pre-grid, and he said, no, nah, the car's not set up as I want it. I couldn't get it sorted in practice. Don't think it's going to work. This is going to be a testing session. And now his engineer yeah. says he's loving it. He, he says faster. that all the time, too. He's a, he's a per per perfectionist, right? Whenever it comes to the race, you know, he does all his homework. He doesn't win practices, that kind of thing. But yeah. during a race, he is a wily fox. I can imagine. Well, we've had a big attrition rate here, and we're about to go racing again. Danny Lowry's back out there, and he was the only S uh, XGT competitor, and now he's in the pits, as you can see, and they're going to see if they can, uh, well, just see if there's any problems that stops him from going back out, but it's uh, all quiet on the rest in front at the moment. Danny just waiting for the signal, and it doesn't look as though they're working too hard. So will they get him back out, or will they say, you know what, let's just uh, put this one down to experience. It's going to be an almighty restart here. Keith Grant with Dreesy behind him, Dolomac behind him. Then the battle for GTs uh, is also raging between the Maserati and the Supra, the Toyota Supra, ninth and 10th overall, but they're in their own GT battle, so we'll keep an eye on that. In fact, Coffey, De Silva and Lindstrom all in that battle. Richard Grant is in 12th. He's also in TA, but he's not in this battle. And then we drop down to the SGT battle. That's 13th place overall for J Josh Carlson, but he's got a lot of work to do to catch Lee Saunders, who is currently leading an SGT in sixth position. Yeah, now De Gainer, you know, the lap traffic between Paul Menard and Keith Grant yeah. is Wally's teammate. Ah, right. Now, yeah. surely there won't be team orders here, you think? Nah. <laughs> No, not when it comes to the maestro that is Dollenbach, I don't think. <laughs> never know. No, you don't. That's true. I would never do anything like that. No. Now, as you can see, the Ginetta's lights are off. So, in a moment, Paul Menard will be in control of this race. And basically, it's not too smart to go too early either because you're on a curve. No. And you can only accelerate so hard, and everybody else can accelerate at exactly the same speed. So you get a stop and go if you go too early. So uh, right. Don't want to do that. No, and you kind of want to get a, a, enough around sunset where you can put the hammer down and really take it to them down the front straight. That's the idea, anyway. And let's see how he does it. So then we're going to be racing again here in TA. Watch for the green flag to the top right. There they go. And away they go. Good start from Grant on the 40. Oh, look the at Wally. Black, but Wally Dollenbach. And here comes Amy Ruman and Dollenbach. Got them both. Got them both. Nicely done. Wally Dollenbach showing that he's lost none of his speed. Dreesy looking for a way past Grant, but can't do it just yet. They dive into turn three. Great start. Wow. Restart. But well done to Paul Menard, but well done to Wally Dollarback Jr. And we said he's comfortable, his crew chief did, and boy is he. And he's now sending a possibility of a win, and he hasn't had one uh, even in the Masters class in a while. So now the ultimate header's car heading down into Q3, turn seven. 
tight as can be. Dreesy right there with Grant. Amy Ruman right off there in fifth place. Nothing between them here on lap 18 of 27. Here comes Dreesy. Through Collier. Looking for an inside move at to a tower, perhaps. He yeah, has a quick look. Heading now towards Bennett's Bridge Hall, Bishop's Bend. The man next to me. Getting a little nervous, <laughs> but enjoying it. Amy's right there as well, just waiting to pounce for any mistake. Yeah, exactly. Such an important race with Dyson out. They really want to get some points on the board and keep it going. By Lime Rock this time last year, Dyson recaught the points, having trouble in this first race and uh, didn't really get to winning ways until his home of Lime Rock. Lakes in the background on this beautiful still day here at Sebring as they head down the Almond Strait again. Menard, Menard pulling away at the front. Menard's got it covered for now, but boy, the, the next four places there is pretty tight. Yeah, Menard never in doubt, is it? He's uh, Look at the gap he's already done in the one lap. Here comes the Lucas number eight. Dreesy Motorsport. Coming out of sunset. Dolenbach trying to get away. Grant. And Dreesy not letting him. Dreesy, though, desperate to try and get on level turns with Wallaback. Here, go. here he comes up here the inside. Go. This is Tommy Dreesy on that inside line that Dyson took. It ended in tears bump. for Dyson, but he's got past. He's got it. Nicely done. Oh, Amy and got so by, too. Amy. So poor old Keith Grant got duffed up heavily there. Two cars going past him in the same class. And now Dreesy goes in pursuit of Dolenbach. Meanwhile, Menard is up the road by three seconds as they come under the Mission Bridge and down towards Q3. Turn seven, yet again. Dreesy not close enough this time to make a move on Dolenbach. Now take he'll settle time. in. Yeah, take your time, exactly. That's what the maestro says. <laughs> if you were on the radio, that's exactly what you'd be saying, right? Or what would you be saying? I'd be talking him off the ledge right now. <laughs> This is what Tommy loves. Yeah. He loves this kind of uh, frenetic action where he's in the middle of it, in the thick of it. He's really good, you know, at the end of the race. He puts his head down and concentrates and starts clicking them off. So mm -hmm. this ain't over. No, by any means. And we've seen in the past, Bernard, I think this time last year, had a problem. And, uh, yeah, didn't get the finish he wanted. Keith Grant, though, bags of experience from IMSA and prototypes and formula racing. Of course, he does Formula Atlantic as well, or has done over the years. I'm kind of curious about Keith Grant. You know, he had second place, you know, in hand there, but he, he backed up to Tommy. So I'm wondering if he's having an issue with yeah, his Yeah, he could well be. Yeah. So 19 gone. Here's your leader in the all green and black. Paul Menard's going to do the full season this year. So Dyson will not be enjoying the fact that he is having it one-way traffic with both Ernie Francis Jr. and Dyson out of this race. Menard trying to build on that possibility of leading the championship going into Road Atlanta. Crosses oh, the line now. It's pretty close there. Very close. Dreesy stuck to the rear end of the ultimate headers Ford Mustang of Dollarback. Now he takes to the inside. Can't quite do it. Dollarback takes the wider line but holds off. Greasy for now. Another opportunity at three. Yep, Dollenbach's good through this tight stuff. Yeah, as we were saying earlier, Dollenbach seemingly just a little bit quicker than Dreesy in the second half of the uh, Sebring track. But Dreesy making the time up, especially down the Almond Strait and into that Sunset Complex. Uh, and uh, usually get gaps him a little bit going into turn one. See how we exit Q3, turn seven. Hairpin. Yep. Nice and smooth by this gaggle of four. Grant not losing too much time to Ruman at the moment. If anything, Dolenbach just pulling away. The gap between him and Maynard is yeah. uh, five seconds at the moment. This car is really see. good in that tight stuff, real slow yeah. corners. Amazingly, that's where you want the setup, isn't it? Yep. Seven laps to go, and always the possibility of more cautions. Saunders is still leading, leading in SGT in six overall. Uh, now second place in SGT is Richard Forsythe. Uh, and third at the moment is a long way further down, though. Uh, I think. I'm not quite sure who the third man in SGT is. 
But Danny Lowry is circulating in SGT. It's Josh Carlson, yeah, the youngster in 12th overall. So well, off the race line. Emergency vehicles out there. And they're guiding a car back by the looks of things, sort of, sort of shadowing him or towing him. And I think that, you know who I think that is? That could be Grant, you know, the other guy. Grant. Oh, yeah. Richard Grant. See the white flags waving. That's just information only. Yeah. Racing still continues. Passing can continue, continue and all that. Well, they do a good job of safe, safe recapture, as it were. How about this? Look at four no. TA cars, nose to tail, really good. towards the end of the race. Really good. Only one lap's gone of the 27. Six to go. Yep. Plenty of time yet. Let's see. Bounce over the curves. That rear shot. My man, man, Lake, doing a good job there, showing us those bumps. We were talking about this last night. Just how bumpy it is through there. Under the bridge they come. That's where Lowry went off. Just went a little too hot. Ended up in the tire wall. Glad the car is a okay. Into cube three again. Down Fangio. Hard to see where Dreesy is going to make up the time, isn't it? He's good under braking. Look, here's a good example into tower. Catches right up there. Yeah, he's in touch. Yeah, yeah. Just not close enough. Amy's in touch, just not close enough. Yes. Same goes for Story, Keith. Yeah. All four of them. Oh, really, really good drivers right there. Yep. Well, you've got a host of uh, vastly experienced drivers with 30 years, each of them under their belts. Three champions out of the four. Yep, amazing. And Menard doing a good job. He's, what, seven seconds now ahead of this group. Here he is, down the Ullman straight, leading the way. Started on the front row, managed to avoid the drama. He went wide at the start, and uh, that was kind of what encouraged Dyson to take that inside line. Um, he hit that big bump, and I think it took him by surprise. Yeah. And the car just rocketed into Ernie Francis Jr., and that allowed Bernard to come through. That is just a beautiful car. Isn't it? They really make a nice race car. He's still in the 203s, 2036. Uh, ironically, uh, Wally Dollenbach in second place was quicker that last time out. Uh, a 2030 by him, so three tenths quicker. There's the SGT leader. That's uh, Lee Saunders in the old Dodge Viper. The Florida man. And there's that Maserati again. Who battled with the Supra. But now down, it's uh, Colin Cohen down in 14th position. Well, that's a good battle right there. Yeah, very good battle. And the Super again Supra goes for the it inside. on coffee. This is the GT battle. Oh boy, it's a little skinny there. <laughs> very skinny indeed. And these two have been at it for the entire race. Very different cars, but really fast in their own nicely. way. In yeah, exactly. Parts. Joey De Silva in the Toyota Supra, Supra in GT. And then in ninth place, Chris Coffey in the Maserati. Can we see? A straight line speed difference from above, I wonder. Yeah, the Supra is definitely closing in as they head towards the hairpin. It definitely looks lighter and smaller. Yeah. Can't quite do it then at Q3. This is going to continue, I think, till the end of the race. Yeah, the Supra is a Tony Ave prepared yes, car. Yes, it is. And they're experts at those Toyotas nowadays. Well, of course, we've got the GR champion, Toyota 86 champion here yesterday, and Tyler Gonzalez getting a podium and beating his teammate Rafa Matos. Great start to his year. Toyota driver. There really is nothing between these two, is there? No. It's a good battle. 
You're right, the Supra just looks a little bit more nimble, doesn't it? I mean, I know it's smaller physically, but uh, it just looks as though it's a little bit more nimble. Through goes uh, Lee Saunders. Forsyth. Forsyth going through in the 58 in the Corvette, the All Green. Then John Degena in eighth. And then we see Chris Coffey and Joey De Silva in the GT battle. Nothing between those two. Jeff Lindstrom behind them in the Mustang. Into sunset. Laps running out. Four to go. Uh, Super made a move or tried to make a move up the inside. He's got the headlights on and typical motor racing technology, uh, psychology. Saying, hey, I'm coming past. I think it's a waste of electricity. Certainly using all the track and more. No change at the front. The gap has come down, though. Menard has knocked it off a little bit. I don't know whether that's traffic or not, but the gap now down to just 4.9 seconds. Either Dolenbach, Dreesi and Ruman have got the hurry up on in the last few seconds, or Paul Menard has just drifted off a little bit and uh, maybe, maybe nursing it home a little bit, which is a smart move. Here comes the Super now down, though. And he's taking the outside line, coming into Cube 3. And that's a hard place to overtake, and sure enough, Coffee makes it nice and wide and makes it impossible for the Super. It gets out of shape on the exit. It's a good battle right there. It really is. Chris doing a really good job of defending here. The Super is seemingly just a little bit quicker, but finding it hard to get a place to overtake. There's the outside. Into tower now. And again, Coffee defense. Heading towards Bennett's Bridge Hall, Bishop's Bend. <laughs> He's under pressure, that's for sure. Driving in his mirrors. Do you ignore your mirrors at this point and just drive like hell? <laughs> no, you may have to block. Yeah. <laughs> you have to true. know where he's at. You have to. There's nothing between them. Now, let's see if the Supra can get close enough uh, as they exit 16. Here we go. And this is good. This is looking good. Chris Coffey's going to have to get wide, but unfortunately, look at, look at this. The Supra's coming fast. And he's already alongside here on the Long Almond Straight. Surely this is the pass. This is it. Coffey can do no, no more than he can at the moment. And through goes the Supra and takes the position and leads GT. Nicely done. I think that Supra is better through 17 yeah. as well. So he should gap him here. Ooh, maybe Coffey not. Now trying to take a different line. Now he'll have the inside line. The Supra should just hold on into... The first corner, and this has been a great battle. De Silva has the advantage, ninth overall, and leading now in GT. Oh, boy. <laughs> he's trying to make it stick. He knows how much pressure he's had to put on Coffee, and he knows the same will be true if he doesn't get away from him quickly. He's trying every which way to get away from Chris Coffee, but actually, while trying to push on, he's actually giving it back to Coffee, who's catching him through the twisty bits. Okay, there's Paul Menard. Yep, Menard comes there's through. Dolan there's Dolan back. back. Let's have a look at the gap between them this time. Yeah. Might have come down a bit because Dolan back's managed to get away from Dreesy and Ruman quite considerably. Dolan back's running the quickest laps yeah. of the race right now. He's outrunning Paul Menard. Paul Menard's on cruise control, but he's not going to let Dreesy catch him. Well, the gap is officially four and a half seconds between the pair, uh, and with 25 of the 27 gone, there's a little time for Dolan back to catch up. As you quite rightly point out, um, yeah, he was just a little bit quicker, but Grant and uh, Ruman are still in their battle. McNich McNichols 23, doing a good job, looking for a good result, Amy Ruman. Fourth at the moment. Grant up to second at one point, dropped down now to fifth place, Keith Grant. Yeah, they're having a good battle. As I said, Amy drives the whitest car in the world. <laughs> she's very difficult to pass, but she's also very fair. But she does what she has to do to keep you behind her. Yeah, Keith's of the grants. Keith is the one we've seen the least of in Trans Am anyway. Um, Milton and uh, Richard and Carrie are off, um, well, almost every weekend at Trans Am. Um, but Keith uh, does his own sort of formula racing, and prototype yeah. racing. and then. But when he comes, he's always competitive, always. He, he's very well prepared. He, uh, he loves data, and he can see where he can improve, and then he goes and does it out on the track. So he's very good, uh, very smooth. And, you know, 
he, he was in second place for a long time in the first. He might have an issue. I'm not sure. Well, if, if whatever issue it was, it, it seems to be rectified it because yeah. he's on the pace with Amy. He hasn't had a problem all uh, all race long, which is often the case with uh, that uh, 23 McNichols car. Sadly, I've had many an interview with poor old Amy, saying, "Oh, this happened this time, and this happened." She had a lot of bad luck last year. I talked to her right at the end of the season, and she said, "You know, it could, it, on paper it was a decent season, but just things just kept going wrong." A lap car coming up between yep. Bernard and Wally. Treacy still third, and he's a safe third, too. Out of sunset they come. Nose to tail. Some great battles here. The gap has come down to exactly four seconds now, with two laps to go. And if anything, Grant looks as though he might be trying to make a move here on Amy Ruman in the closing stages. Ooh, see that bump? Boy, yep. that's, you can see how harsh that is, and that's what happened to Dyson. Yeah, you start. can see why, yeah. And it's that inside line, which isn't yep. the obvious line, is it? Yep. No. It's not the fastest line through the corner, but he was looking for track position. Ruman and Grant were on identical times, 2 or 3 one last time out. And uh, so even though we're getting to the closing stages of this, they are absolutely firing on all cylinders, no question. And now using the traffic if they can, or certainly Amy will be looking to use the traffic if she can. It's pretty Marshall's tight there. Doing, yeah, very tight. And they've got another car, as we see from above, in front of them. No change at the front, still four seconds the gap between Menard and Dollenbach, but Dollenbach definitely just a little bit quicker in these closing yep. stages. While he's cooking off 201s, everybody else is 203, so we're not going to catch him. Yeah, no kidding. Here's Richard Grant, Keith's dad right there. Yep. Go on, son, sort it out. <laughs> Don't take your son out, Richard. <laughs> As you say, uh, they... Uh, they have a very similar painted car. It's easy to see where the grants are on track. On board with Dreesy again. Good start to the season for the all-new look. Dreesy Motorsports having bought the Showtime setup. And look in a moment, Wally. he's not that far he's behind. He's not at all far behind. We're going to get the white flag this time, and Menard is either in control or under pressure. I'm not sure which yet. Here we go, white flag waves, and Dollenbach is definitely there. Dollenbach does a 202.9 last time out, and that's a 204.5 from Menard. So either the tires are going off for yeah. Menard. Is he in trouble? He is in trouble, I think, because here comes Wally Dollenbach. Got a lap car there. Get out of the way. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> Let's go. He's still got a lot of work to do, though, has yeah. Wally. It's going to be interesting. It just uh, depends on just what uh, Bernard's got underneath him, or there's, maybe he was just letting off for a bit. Meanwhile, Ruman. Amy Ruman gets through. Is that Tommy? Has she got past Tommy Dreesy? She has, you know. Oh, no. So Tommy's got some sort of problem as well. Or he's made a mistake. I'm not sure which. But either way, he's pull, uh, she is pulling well away from Tommy Dreesy, and that's not normal. And if anything, Keith Grant is now looking for a way past, and he's going to try and make it at Q3. Dreesy defends. Do you think it was a mistake? I don't know. It's a weird one. Wow. Because he's still, I mean, it's not like he's not under power. He's holding off Grant at the moment. Right, let's have a look. There's a replay coming up now. And again, see what you see here. Ken, what happens here, Tommy? Turn one it is. Well, I'm not sure what that tells us yet. Ah, oh, she just this is the move. She just got the him. inside and made the move. Uh, Fair and square. Just wonder, a great overtake. I hmm, wonder what happened. Wow, fantastic stuff. Well done. Caught him out a little bit. There you go. We see it from above. Yeah, she just got better drive on the exit of one and used it. That is classic stuff by the former champion on another former champion. Final lap then. Here comes Paul Menard. And Dolenbach did his toughest race of a long time and the ultimate head is number four kept him honest the gap down to what two Here seconds in the Good end for paul menard well nice done paul job. menard wins race one of the Good season job, wally wally dollar awesome. takes second place
And with Dyson out, and Ernie Francis just making an appearance. And Amy. And Amy, Amy Ruman takes the podium. Wow. What a race. Tommy Dreesy takes fourth. And as you see, Keith Grant wow. in fifth. You never know what's going to happen in Trans Am. Last lap and all. Well, that was fun. <laughs> There's the youngster. Larson coming through. Well done. A lot of exciting stuff today. Yeah, really good stuff. And uh, Paul Menard, that's a great way to start his campaign. And he said to me before the race that, uh, you know, the plan is to do the full season. And that's given him a jump start on Chris Dyson. So that's good for all of us who are following the sport. Uh, because that means as we head to Atlanta, as we head to Nola and a few others, uh, you know, uh, we, we've got a championship on our hands. Yeah. And, uh, there's always going to be the likes of a Brabham, perhaps, or, you know, some extra ringers coming into TA. You never know. We might coax a yourself back out there before we got a spare car you never yeah, know who we'll yeah, put go. in that one or a ta car that's right oh yeah of course you do yeah wow. have the o'reilly sitting right there ah good point well, there you go so just contact franklin apparel pick yourself up some nice <laughs> nice nice clothes and uh you can win that raffle they win that seat all ah, right <laughs> just kidding <laughs> <laughs> well, we gave a buzz bike away earlier in the week lee and Lee Saunders takes another victory. There I think that's go. number seven here at Sebring. So he uh, continues to rewrite the record books. He's going to have to build another room in his house for all his <laughs> yeah. trophies. Across the line comes Richard Forsyth in eighth overall in that bright green Chevrolet Corvette. But here is that battle in GT. And in the end, Coffey got it back. Well done. He's going to be ninth oh, wow. overall over Joey De Silva in the Supra. So those two went for a race-long battle, but in the end, it is Chris Coffey who's going to take the checkered flag. I don't know what happened. I yeah. thought the Subaru was in control when he got that pass done. But as it is, it's going to be Joey De Silva rounding out the top 10. 11th will be Joshua Carlson. I'll guarantee you, Tommy Dreesy right there has got his finger on the radio button. Yeah. They'll be chatting away to you. Who's his engineer today? Uh, I think um, J.J. Ferrillo. Okay. He's the Tommy Whisperer. Yeah. Interesting to hear what Paul Menard has to say. Oh, so happy for Paul Menard. That's awesome. And yep. General Ozzy's motorsports. Great you. you know, he's still only 43 years of age, and uh, he's got plenty of racing left, especially in Trans Am. And I think this is a great place for an ex NASCAR guy to come and enjoy his racing Absolutely. cars that, uh, you know, that, that are challenging. Um, but not the sort of rough and tumble of an Ascar or Xfinity. No, yeah, or the, you know, the tough schedule. Yeah, yeah. And all that. And uh, most everything is on the East Coast. Yep. He's, he lives in Charlotte. So I was amazed at Justin Marks, just how many races he managed to do yesterday, yeah. uh, last year. You never know. Um, you know, we do have his car in our shop ready to go whenever he's ready. So you, you never know when he'll show up. Yeah. And into wow, blaster force tools. Hey, I gotta run down to yep, the podium. Go for it. No, you, no, you <laughs> Thanks, head. everybody. Yeah, go celebrate. See you next time. Go, go, go see Tommy. Thank you so much. That's Ken Twaits. We were listening to Ken, of course, now uh, working with Dreesy Motorsports this season, and hopefully we can coax him back into the booth uh, and get his wisdom. Former XGT champion and TA racer. Well done, though, Paul Menard. In that beautifully prepared number three. Menard's Ford Mustang, the Menard family, of course, brought so much to motor racing here in the States in sponsorship. And in a moment, he'll pop out the car, and I'm sure Ben will have a word. Yep. <laughs> it's a few high fives. So why don't we join Ben Sissel, who, after the congratulations, will be the first to talk to Paul Menard, our winner of TA today. Well, thank you so much, and welcome to the Jim Weed Winter Circle. And I tell you what, these 
Master Force Tools did a really good job of building you a new race car. Paul Menard back on the top step in TA at Sebring. I know that's extra special to you. It is. Uh, this is only my third time here, and uh, the first two times we've we've been really fast. We've had mechanical problems, but uh, Paul Genelosi's team uh, put to, together an awesome Ford Mustang and uh, great power, flawless weekend. We had one little hiccup the first time on track, but after that, the um, thing was fast every session. And uh, how about Wally? He was he was coming at the end. He's he's making me push a little harder than I wanted to. Uh, I almost spun out turn seven, just just uh, you know trying to get a little bit more. But uh, it was hot and slick, and uh, the Pirellis held up. Uh, man, it was a fun series. Oh, so much. It's it's such an honor to have you in the series, and then to have you and Wally Dollenbach Jr., who might have commentated some of your races back in the day. I know your whole family is here. And then just to Paul Genelosi, the whole three GT racing team, Rocket Sports, unbelievable effort through the off season. Yeah, I mean they're so good. They've they've been around this sport, and uh, you know between Trans Am and IndyCar and IMSA, they're they're professionals. They know what it takes to uh, put together uh, solid and uh, fast pieces. And uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, to uh, Road Atlanta and, and moving on from there. Nice. So what is your plan? I know I'm going to put you on the spot right here, but are are you running for a championship or select? What you doing? Yeah, no, we're, we're planning to run for the championship. So uh, uh, that's, our, that's our plan right now. And, uh, um, you know, Paul and, and, and I and Tony and the boys, uh, that's, what we're, that's what we're shooting for. Uh, give Dyson a run for his money. Nice. I love it. Well, there you go. Paul Genelosi, Paul Menard, 3GT Racing. What a great start at the Sebring Speed Tour with TA. And Jonathan, back up to you in the booth. And that's music to our ears to hear that Paul Menard is planning on racing for the championship and giving Chris Dyson a run for his money. Lovely. Just what we wanted to hear. So then, Paul Menard takes victory number one at Sebring and said it's only his third time here. But a check on the results. Paul Menard then, victory for him in the Ford Mustang. Wally Dolan back in second place, pushed him all the way. Amy Ruman on the podium, great start to her season for the 23 McNichols team. Uh, Tommy Dreesey in fourth, Keith Grant fifth. Lee Saunders wins in SGT, uh, second in SGT, Richard Forsyth. Uh, then it's John DeGainer in his first TA race, well done to him, eighth overall. GT won by Chris Coffey in a great battle uh, with Joey De Silva. They finish ninth and tenth overall, but Coffey takes victory in GT. Then it's Carlson, the youngster, Richard Grant, Colin Cohen, Jeff Lindstrom, Danny Lowry had that spin but managed to get going again in the Mercedes. Billy Griffin moving to TA. Good to see him there. Kaylee Bryson, uh, Kaylee Bryson excuse me, in 17th position uh, as she returns to Trans Am. And then Adam Andretti, Naparowski and Ernie Francis Jr. all retiring from the race as did Chris Dyson. So, without further ado, let's take a look at back some of the action from our TA race. Trans Am presented by Pirelli, and off we went. Only Francis Jr. got a good start. Menard likewise on the outside, but watch the pink and white 16. And sadly, they came together, and that caused the first caution. Meanwhile, Danny Lowry was firing on all cylinders in XGT. And the Hula Girl was doing her bit. And Lowry siding through the field. And this battle was the best of the lot. Coffee versus Joey De Silva. The Supra versus the Maserati. And that battle went all the way to the finish, but it was won by Coffey in the end. He takes the GT honors out front. Menard was extending that lead. You could see how tough it was out there. Danny Lowry spinning round. And not even the Hawaiian hula girl could help him out there. Closing stages, the Supra made some really audacious moves. Got ahead of Coffey, but that was short-lived because as the race finished, Coffey got past again. But there was no stopping the man at the moment. SGT going to Lee Saunders, and the win overall going to Paul Menard. So, talking of which, let's take a look at the highlights of TA. And as we got underway, here is that incident with Chris Dyson. And Dyson just hitting a bump, and then really just the car was out of control, and he could do nothing about it. And sadly, for Ernie Francis and Chris Dyson, both out of the race at the first corner. That caused the first caution. We got underway again, and Dreesey got a great restart. Look at him on the inside of the 23 of Corvette of 
Amy Ruman, sadly for Andretti in the new Burton car, had electrical difficulties. They retired early on. Meanwhile, the battle raged on. Dolan back, Keith Grant, Tommy Dreesey, Dolan back round the outside beautifully there. And then he went in pursuit of Keith Grant. Makes the move, as does Dreesey. And Amy Ruman also in the thick of it and would take third place. And this audacious manoeuvre on Dreesey, lovely. But the winner, no question, Paul Menard led from start to finish. Dollenbach reeled him in, but it's Menard's win. Let's head down once again to Ben Sissel. Thank you so much. All right, get loud, Sebring. Come on, we are now live on TV. Come on, Sebring. You can get louder than that. Unbelievable. The Trans Am Series presented by Pirelli here at the Sebring Speed Tour to kick off the 2024 season. Here at the Jim Weed Winter Circle, we are going to start in the GT class. Ladies and gentlemen, listen closely. This is his first Trans Am start in that beautiful Maserati. Two of the five Maseratis like this in North America race today. And Colin Cohen, so proud of the outcome. Let's hear it. Colin Cohen, Norwood Auto Italia out of Dallas, Texas. First time in Trans Am. I didn't even put it together. We were talking before the driver's meeting. I thought you were there for IGT. You were there for Trans Am. That's amazing. In my opinion, the race of the field was between these two gentlemen right here. That beautiful white Toyota Supra and that beautiful traffic graphics Maserati in second place. But it could have gone either way. Let's hear it. Joey De Silva in that beautiful white Toyota Supra. Man, you guys got some coverage today, Joey. That was unbelievable. And then we're about to hear the nature boy again when he comes up here with his patented Yelp. But let's hear it. Ladies and gentlemen, first place, the traffic graphics Maserati Chris Coffey. <laughs> nice. There it is. The Ric Flair nature boy scream. And I have to give credit also, Jeff Lindstrom, first time from SVRA to Trans Am, finished the race, great start. But Colin Cohen, man, unbelievable. I know you've been watching because Chris Coffey kind of dabbled in Trans Am the last couple seasons. And you're like, I got to give it a try now. Was it fun out there? Yeah, it was fun out there. This is a really good race group, very good drivers, and a fantastic facility and track and support organization. So thank you, everybody. Nice. I love it. Now, listen, was Joe Walsh correct? Does your Maserati do 185? No. <laughs> I love it. Colin Cohen, ladies and gentlemen. Come on, get louder. Da Silva, you were with us at Coda last year, had a great race on the podium. Here you are starting the season back in that beautiful white Supra. It seemed like you were good in places that, that his car wasn't and vice versa. So what a great run. Thank you, man. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate being here with you guys at Trans Am. And just want to thank my team, my parents, my wife at home, my kids. You know, appreciate all you guys coming out to watch us. Thank you. Nice. I love it. And then coffee. Great start to the season. How's it feel? Oh, it feels amazing. The first thing I have to do is thank this gentleman here, Colin Cohen. I absolutely couldn't be here without him. Uh, he signed me up to run a full season this year, so I'm looking forward to the next race already. And I want to thank my wife and my crew, Alex and Xavier. Uh, this is the first time I've had an actual crew with me, so this is absolutely amazing. And this guy, super clean racing. I, I've never had to drive that. Supra clean racing. <laughs> yeah, supra clean racing. I mean, this guy, he pushed me from the green flag. I mean, we changed positions, and Mustang got out in front of both of us. And, I mean, it was an absolute battle at the end. And you guys put on an absolute clinic on how to – drive really hard against each other but sportsmanlike and just put on a clinic on how to do clean racing so we appreciate you guys appreciate that i like it nice all right let's hear it one more time colin cohen joey da silva joey da silva and chris coffee come on now get a little bit louder hold those up there we go and now if, if you guys want to keep your sunoco hats you can but you can also throw them out to the crowd anybody want a sunoco hat 
people mildly do, I think. You guys got to get louder than that for some hats. There we go. Colin, so awesome to see you up here, man. Let's hear it one more time. Colin Cohen, Joey De Silva, Chris Coffey. Colin Cohen is always on our International GT podium. Jason Hart. Jason Hart's out there. Jason Hart with Norwood Auto Tire. Congratulations, guys. All right. They're all of age, so go for it, gentlemen. Get loud, Sebring. <laughs> Careful on those steps, coffee. <laughs> That's got to taste good. Hey, hey, De Silva, that was so good. The good, clean racing, unbelievable. Thank you so much. You guys put on a heck of a show. Thanks a lot. Coffee, see you at the next one, man. Nice job. Yeah, yeah, it burns. It does burn. Super GT, ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready for Super GT? Come on, don't sleep on me yet. In third place in that beautiful number 36, let's hear it, Joshua Carlson. In second place, we met him last season at Worldwide Technology Center in that beautiful Corvette. Let's hear it, Richard Forsyth. And then it seems like uh, we start the year every year with this man on the podium in that beautiful Dodge Viper Super GT. Let's hear it. Lee Saunders. So, Josh, tell us about your outing out there. Good start to the season. Yeah, we were struggling to find pace earlier in the weekend, and we just kind of made some major changes for qualifying and found some pace. It was a lot of fun racing with these guys. It was really clean, and uh, I just want to thank my team for getting the car down here and making it fast, and then I uh, want to thank my sponsors and SEBA for supporting me throughout the season. Crew. Crew. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Let's hear it. Josh Carlson. <laughs> Forsyth, you've been with us, what, now four races? Something like and that. always on the podium, is that right? Nice. Well, let's hear it, man. Richard Forsyth. It's a pretty good winning record there. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. And what a great crowd. And what a beautiful facility and, and the amazing fans, all these great people and these amazing rides everywhere. It just blows me away. I'm a huge gearhead like all the rest of you. But uh, Josh here was a real clean racer and Supra Racing was amazing. Everybody raced clean and I appreciate them. And most importantly, my amazing G-Speed team, my sponsors, uh, Sambuca Restaurant and uh, the new Rayleigh Restaurant we opened. And uh, I hope you guys will come out sometime and I'll buy you a drink. But I uh, really appreciate y'all. Well, well, then where is this new restaurant? It's in Las Colinas. It's the Rayleigh Underground. It's right behind Toyota M uh, Music Complex. Nice. We'll hold them to that, right, ladies and gentlemen? All you got to do is say you were at Sebring Speed Tour. Lee Saunders, man, nice job. And I saw your crew here. They were a little shorter than I was used to seeing your crew. Yeah, the, they are. They are. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What a, uh, what a wonderful day, a beautiful day. And uh, thanks to this wonderful country we live in that allows us to do this. Uh, uh, thanks for the crowd for coming out. Uh, absolutely fantastic seeing this many people here. And uh, uh, everybody that turned around with us, Josh, we got Richard, uh, super clean race. He was really keeping me worried. Uh, if he hadn't had transmission problems, we might have switched here. So, uh, but uh, uh, a big, big thanks to my uh, my wife and my family who came out. But. Uh, a special thanks to uh, to tell you how big of a family Trans Am is. My crew, my normal crew, wasn't able to make it this weekend, so uh, I had competitors fill fill in. Unfortunately, Ricky Ricky Sanders, uh, no relation, no you, um, had a problem, so he got to be my crew chief. <laughs> and then we had uh, Ken from uh, uh, Todd Naparowski's team uh, fill in too. So that's uh, just an awesome. It, this is such a great group of people. It you can't get any better than this. I love it. Actually, in just two, a couple hours ago, I saw Todd Naparowski, your competitor, bringing you new fluids. So that's the kind of family we have here, ladies and gentlemen. Come on, let's give it up for these guys. Hold up those trophies, gentlemen. Josh Carlson, Richard Forsyth, Lee Saunders, Super GT at the Sebring Speed Tour, Sebring International Raceway. Hey, and Wayne, I got to say, every year kicking off our season here, thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a round of applause for Wayne, the president of Sebring International Raceway. Are you guys having a good time here? Always a fantastic time, and always we love, we love working with your staff and the crew here. Fantastic track. Thank you very much. But get loud one more time. Come on now. Josh Carlson, Richard Forsyth, and Lee Saunders.
Josh, are you of age? Okay. So Josh does not get champagne, so sorry. You're barely going to be able to spray that. But come on now. Get loud, Sebring. Let's see what they got here. Oh, they're going after you. That's going to be sticky, guys. Nice job. Nice job. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Blame it on the winner, right? Good job, guys. Thank you. Congratulations. All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is quite an honor for me because we are about to bring up some absolute legends in motorsports, starting with a two-time TA champion, starting off her season really good in that McNichols Steel Red Corvette making a pass for the podium on the last lap. Let's hear it. Amy Ruman. He's been kind of dabbling in Trans Am the last couple seasons, been pretty active in SVRA. He did the V-Rock races, kind of got re-addicted to racing because of John Cloud. John Cloud, raise your hand because of that man right there. Sponsoring two Trans Am cars this weekend with ultimate headers. But one of my commentary heroes back out racing is so cool to see. Let's hear it. Wally Dallenbach Jr. <laughs> Wally did that thing too at the grid. I was asking about his car. He's like, yeah, I'm not quite sure about the setup. You know, I'm just going to go out there and run my race and hope to finish because the car didn't feel good. Somewhere in that race, it started feeling good because you were gone. In first place, ladies and gentlemen, he's come and raced with us a few times over the years, and he's been on the top step. Racing legend, racing with Master Force Tools and Menards. Let's hear it. Paul Menard, 3GT Racing, and he's got his whole family up here. Come on up, guys. Remy? And what's your name? Remy and Bo, stand right here. We're going to put your dad on the top step. So, Remy, did you enjoy that? Was that so cool to see your dad doing that? Yes. Yes, I love it. I love it. Just like Paul, they're kind of with few words. Amy Ruman making a pass on the last lap for the podium. But be honest, look me in the eyes. Was it extra special that it was Tommy Dreesey? You guys love to keep that alive, but of course it was extra special. Yeah, um, it was special just to pass anybody right now. So, I mean, I'm glad that we got this done. I want to dedicate this one to my dad's birthday is Tuesday, and, and my engine build, builder, Fish, is his birthday is on Tuesday. So happy birthday to them. And I couldn't do it without McNichols and OMP and all my sponsors and, most importantly, my team and the guys. Uh, you know, we faded a little at the in the middle of the race, but uh, thank God for cautions and uh, sticking with it. You got to be there at the end. It doesn't matter until the last lap. So, I love it. Amy Ruman, ladies and gentlemen. Bob Ruman, raise your hand. All right, everybody, just say happy birthday to Bob Ruman right here. There we go. I love it. Wally Dollenbach, man. Were you, were you just playing tricks on me, or did, or did they get the setup right? But, man, nice job. So cool to have you back on the podium here at Sebring. Thank you. No, it's really the first time I even sat in this car was on Thursday, and the, and the guys have worked really, really hard. We were definitely out to launch yesterday, and um, but we threw a bunch of stuff at it today, and we did. We just kind of took our time, and the car felt pretty good as we went along, so we decided to, to go for it. But it was fun. It was a blast. The car worked great. Thank you for John ultimate headers i mean john and deb decided to get a new car at this race last year and this is this debut so we're looking forward to doing some more nice. i love it now wally uh, be honest with me i'm sure that you've commentated some races with paul menard even maybe raced with him so when you saw him on the list you had to be like oh no i don't think we we haven't really actually raced that many times together um you know yeah, a couple of those, but, um, you know, I know how good he is in a Trans Am car, and for sure I knew he was going to be tough this weekend when I found out he was coming. I love it. Wally Dollenbach Jr., ladies and gentlemen, a Trans Am champ back in Trans Am. And then Paul, unbelievable, man. It's so I mean, you've been in a... You've been in all the cars. You've been in, I remember you in a Dodge, a Ford, and a, a Chevy. And it's cool to have you in a Ford with three GT for the first time, and you're on the top step. Doesn't get any better than that. It's pretty awesome. It um, it came together fairly quickly uh, too with with Paul Genalozzi and, and 3GT. We uh, 
uh, we started talking over the winter, and uh, we, let's, let's, let's go racing. I mean, he wanted to do it. I wanted to do it. And uh, we got some support from Menards and Master Force Tools, and, um, and here we are. Uh, the car the, is great to be back in a Ford Mustang. I've had a great relationship with them through the years, and uh, the motor is, is so smooth. It's a smooth engine. It was built for road racing. Uh, the car was just fast all weekend. We uh, hardly put a, a tire wrong in it. And um, Wally, man, he, he was coming at the end. I, I had to push it a lot harder than I wanted to, but uh, he, w- he was fast. And congratulations to, uh, to these two up here. And uh, we're, we're hoping to, uh, to do uh, you know, the whole season and, and give Dyson a run for his money. Nice. I love it. You might have to get past Wally Dolan back and Amy Ruman also. Let's hear it. Two-time champion Amy Ruman. Trans Am champion Wally Dollenbach Jr. And then our winner, Paul Menard, with 3GT. Paul Genalozzi is back. You guys can let uh, let uh, Remy and Bo throw out some hats, too. Anybody want a hat from Remy and Bo? We got one over here. There you go. Here you go. Here you go, right here. All right, Sebring. Even you, Marvin Gray. I need you guys to get really loud. Come on now, one more time. Amy Ruin, Wally Dollenbach Jr., and Paul Menard, Sebring Speed Tour, Sebring International Raceway at the Jim Weed Winter Circle. Oh, sorry. Man, I love this crowd. I, we love coming to Sebring. You just can't ask for better staff, better track, beautiful weather. Are you guys enjoying your weekend so far? Who's coming back next year? Hey, that guy didn't raise it. Are you coming back next year? All right, all right. I'm going to put you on the spot. There we go. Come on now. Amy Ruman, Pominard, Wally Dollenbach Jr. Dude, that is awesome. Hey, seriously, it's an honor just to be up here with you guys. Nice job. Unbelievable race. Hopefully you guys had some fun. Come on up here for some gym weed, ladies and gentlemen. It'll keep you up tonight, though. Just be aware of that. So... Yeah, hey, Paul, nice job. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah you don't want to give your kids that, Paul. So that does it here for the Trans Am Series presented by Pirelli. A fantastic weekend. Make sure you all go to the fan walk starting right now on Pit Lane with our groups 1, 3, 4, 5B. That does it here for a Trans Am at the Sebring Speed Tour. Jonathan, back up to you. Thank you, Ben. Great stuff, as always, as we look high above the Sebring track. I hope you've enjoyed our coverage of Trans Am. The season is off and running, and with a definite vow to give Dyson a run for his money. That's our three-time in a row champion and unfortunately not finishing the race today. So they've got a points advantage, certainly Menard has. And don't forget, you can see all the highlights of both the TA2, that's the Cube 3 Architecture TA2 series, starting on Thursday. This Thursday, the 29th, at 8 p.m. Eastern. That'll be followed by the highlights of the race you just saw, uh, and we'll bring you everything. All on MAV TV this season. Thursdays is your night for Trans Am. All right. We'll uh, say goodbye from Sebring, but uh, more of the speed tour to come on the internet, so stay with us there. But until next time, at Atlanta. Bye bye for now. all my fans it brings the audience into the car with me speed turn 140 mile an hour entry speed the quickest and most efficient way for me to get information to my drivers is from using the v-box ht2 system
Han, the WeatherTech's here. WeatherTech is the ultimate protection for your vehicle. Laser measured floor liners, no drill mud flaps, cargo liner, bump step, seat protector, and cup phone. What about my car? WeatherTech. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Sebring Speed Tour. Get loud, Sebring. Come on. Oh, I love it. This person gets really loud. I'm loving it, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are at the Sebring Speed Tour, coming right through John Nash's mirror. This is so exciting. This is my favorite group here in the uh, Sebring Speed Tour. I love the little small bore British sports cars. We've got Group 1 cars. Uh, we've got Group 3 cars, we've got a Group 4 car, we've got a Group 5B car, so this is going to be so much fun. We've got Chris Domenico and his mustache here, ladies and gentlemen, another SVRA Driver of the Year. So we've got all kinds of parties going on, but Bill Knox from Road Race Ministries, and you know, just like everybody here, you wear a couple hats, just out here in the crew with Trans Am, about to lead us in an invocation for this race. Everybody give it up for Bill Knox. Please remove your hats. If you'll join me in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we give you all the praise and the glory for this wonderful day that you have provided for us to do what we truly love. Father, we ask for your hand of protection to be upon the drivers, the crews, and the officials for this race. Father, keep everyone safe. Bring them home safe. Father, we ask for your hand also to be upon the first responders, our police, and our armed services, no matter where they be, Father. Keep them safe. Bring them home. In your son's most precious name we pray. Amen. Bill Knox, thank you so much. And just, uh, where's Marvin Gray, too? I just want to thank you guys. It's so great to have you in the paddock. You, you know that I can be a bit much, and you guys help keep me grounded. So thank you so much. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you are in for an absolute treat. Rebecca Mills, Wills here, sorry. I might have written the M upside down, you know, or vice versa. She was saying an unbelievable national anthem. You've got a lot of pressure on you now because unbelievable, so beautiful. Rebecca, please take it away. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave oh my gosh rebecca wills we need to take you on tour with us that was unbelievable. How about a little bit more? Come on now. Rebecca, Will, thank you so much. And then Tony Mercado. Let's, let's try to get with that customer's bank in the background there. How far away are we here? All right, so we get to talk. So you are the art director at Customer's Bank, and I've always kind of really loved that logo. There, is there a name for the logo? Uh, well, we just call it our bug, but yeah. 
Nice. And how long have you been with Customers Bank? And could you explain to everybody your approach? Because you kind of have a different approach to banking. Yeah, sure. So we're we're basically we're more of a commercial bank, but but it's very tech forward, but still keeping the personal touch. So we have personal bankers, people that are going to walk you through everything. This is this is our basic premise on everything we do. And are you uh, nationally located? Yeah, yeah. Actually, we we're kind of everywhere across the country at the moment. We're we're pretty light on branches, but but we have teams uh, across the nation. Nice. That's unbelievable. So you've been with us a couple of times at a couple of different events. Seems like you love these motorsports events. Is there is there a certain type of cars that you really like in our paddocks? Uh, you know what? I'm I'm I like the Trans Am series. That's that's really the where I go when I want that. But I'm learning. I know nothing about half of these cars. I thought I was knowledgeable till I got here. There's so many stories on this paddock. It's fantastic. Well, you know, as a car person, I'm going to redirect you over here though. So look, come over here. But um, you know, I've been a car person. I've worked for SVRA for about 12 years. But we come to events that I have no idea what kind of car it is, and that's kind of the neat thing about this. There were this era of cars, there were so many specials, so many one-offs, it's really cool to see. I mean, here we are in the presence of a Lotus 23B and a Lotus Super 7. It's just so cool. So um, we are going to, I am going to give you the microphones to deliver the most famous words in motorsports. So Tony Mercado, please take both mics from me and take it away. All right. It looks like everybody's ready. Yes. Gentlemen, start your engines. And with that, we are underway again. And this is the latest SVRA action from Group 1, 3, 4, and 5B. And we saw these guys in action yesterday. If you weren't with us, this Corvette was doing the rounds. It's an early 60s Corvette, so we were debating over the drum brakes versus disc brakes and we were convinced that obviously uh, given its era which was early 60s because we were informed uh, that uh, the disc brakes didn't come into Corvettes till 65, 66 so it's definitely got drum brakes because it was an early 60s iteration it was a good battle too between them and John Nash was out there and he we're just desperate to get those thumbs up nice little MGB in the O2 next. Can I uh, give that to you? That is Anthony Hess at the wheel of that MGB. That's a 1973. And Dennis D'Antonio in that 1961 Ginetta G4. Well, that'll be interesting. We've got a Ginetta from the early 60s, and then we've got a brand new one as our pace car. So we'll try to juxtapose those two with each other. 13 is John Daniels Jr know his brother Jack very well, certainly late at night. Uh, Austin Healy Sprite, he's in, 1959. <clears throat> and that number three is... Hmm, just looking. I'll get back to you on that one. Well, the 02, that's Anthony Hess, we know that. That's 61. That's D'Antonio. Got uh, one BMW, a 700S out there. But this is pretty much a smorgasbord of international European cars with the odd American and the odd Japanese car thrown in. We've got a Chevrolet Corvette from 1960, the one that we saw, that black one. That I was talking about the disc brakes and the drum brakes of Bill Trefford. Then we've got the Mazda MX-5 Miata from 1999. So actually is a classic now, believe it or not. And uh, then the rest are pretty much European cars. Masters, two Masters. We've got the Miata from 99 and then an MX-5 Miata from 99. So not that different at all. And then uh, Alphas, Ginettas, Fiat's, Triumphs, Lotuses. Plenty of different great marks from Europe as well in these groups. Group 1, 3, 4 and 5B. So away they go, out of pit lane. One of the Miatas. And there is that modern Ginetta I was talking about. So this is the latest Ginetta, and we've got a 1960s Ginetta right behind it. In fact, it's a 1961 Ginetta. The 
G4, so we can compare them nicely. Well, Jonathan, this is going to be a fun one here. We saw yesterday yeah, and I yeah. talked to him how John Nash, you know, spun lap one, turn three. What, and, did, what uh, did he say? We're going to, he said he just wanted to make a show of it. <laughs> I think he was covering up. I think that was a, a genuine mistake, don't you? But yeah, uh, just to give you up to uh, keep you up to date, uh, as we're looking down on turn three, that's where on the first lap, John Nash, in his little Lotus, spun round while vying for second place, and then had to work himself all the way from the back, which he did, and got all the way up back to the front, and was uh, having a great battle with the 60s, 61 Corvette towards the end there, and. Uh, well, the Corvette could hardly see him behind because he's so tiny, certainly off the ground. But yeah, I've been at some vintage races, like uh, when Formula V's race with the, the little Formula V's, yep. not the B's, race with production cars. They, they do have bicycle flags on them just for that visibility, <laughs> for yeah. that very reason. Yep. It's a, it's a, it's a battle of the, the mini sports cars, this, isn't it? Or the little sports cars, I should say, mini sports cars. And that, thing as that mini. Uh, dark British racing green car that was envisioned just a little bit ago, that's the Sebring front nose of the Austin Healey Sprites. They did that when they brought those cars to Sebring just because of the long straights to give them a little bit of an aero advantage. Interesting. And, and that was Denny Hightower and that Mazda Miata. And his race suit matches his car. I thought that was a pretty good little touch. Keeping an eye on the internet as well and uh, YouTube, your comments. Boy from New York says, Happy Janetta. We were wondering yesterday with Bill Warner, we yep. were not quite sure, but that is a 1960 Chevrolet Corvette. And I do want to apologize to everybody who was here, might have joined. The comment section lit up, which I love, because it's really difficult for Jonathan and I to know all the cars, all the makes, all the drivers. So please no, yell not, at us in the comments impossible. if we get it wrong. Yeah. And I got yesterday's uh, Casey Kane call wrong. But we did have some friends like David Bearden reach out. Um, Aaron Creed reached out to me to explain the Ford Thunderbird that's coming up later. So we, we appreciate it. So please, if you have the knowledge, let us know on Speed Tour TV on YouTube. But uh, so excited to be here. As always, this is my favorite group, the small board British cars. I oh, love it. I wish we had a bigger group of them. But, um, you know, it's really cool to have the cars that are here. Brian McEachern is, is the mechanic over that one there in the, uh, the, the Sebring version of the Austin Healey Sprite. Mm -hmm. And I hear lights are out. So we're about to go racing. That Janetta will pull off. And as you can see, they're starting to accelerate and get up to speed. Testing those brakes. There you see the lights are off on the Janetta, which shows us that uh, we will be racing after this. And that all-important first corner. What will John Nash do? He starts ahead of the Corvette. Uh, and yesterday they got an almighty battle. But that was due to the fact that Nash had to come from the back. That's, uh, I mean, if he gets a better start this time, he'll be off, he'll be off and running, won't he? And uh, he's on the yellow and gray silver inside there goes into this race knowing he, he doesn't have it for Travis Engen. That, that car is a yeah. 5B. He's, he's out there racing the other production cars. So Travis Engen on the right, John Nash on the left. This is the speed tour. Away we go then for our latest group coverage of 1, 3, 4 and 5B. And we are straight into action. The Corvette jinking to the inside now. John Nash jinks behind him. Now looks to the inside. And uh, sure enough, it is Travis Engin who takes the lead and the whole shot. And Nash drops into second place, trying to avoid the bumps that uh, are so prevalent there. Well, Denny Hightower from the back to fourth or fifth place, depending on how he does with Tom Brown in that Triumph Spitfire. That was pretty impressive for a start, wasn't it? Yeah, really good. His, uh, his wife, who's also his sponsor, is going to be pretty happy about that. How do you have a wife and as, as a sponsor? I think she owns a business. Ah. And... Uh, I give him some TV coverage so she's happy. She gets the ROI on her uh, advertising. Ah, like every woman, she wears the pants in the house. Yeah. So that's good. So to there's see. that shot right there. Thank you, camera operators. As he comes into Cube 3, turn 7, there is Denny Hightower really showing us what this Miata has. Yep, diving into Cube 3. And there's the sponsorship. See right there. Yeah, I see it. Uh, diving into Cube 3, turn 7, and up the Fangio straight. They're starting to spread out. Beautiful day here. The wind has dropped dramatically since yesterday. It was very, 
very heavy uh, winds yesterday. Just a nice slight breeze today. Look at that Corvette pull in. Whoa, oh, no, please don't hit anything. He's managed to avoid everything, but almost scared the marshal after death. That beautiful 1961 Corvette going around there. What do you reckon happened? Do you think he hit the brakes and it kind of just I don't up? know. It looked like a mechanical failure yeah. to me, uh, and that's not like Bill Trefford. So I'm, I'm guessing maybe um, sometimes a, a brake locks up wrong or the bias is a little bit wrong but that's Were that's you? very unlike him i don't think he hit the wall there but no, he's, he didn't he's gonna have he's gonna be pretty deep in sand yeah and you said <clears throat> that uh, perhaps given that their drum brakes on that things uh that, you know that maybe they you know they do pull to the right a little bit under right. heavy brake i don't think he has drums though i was talking to him oh, okay. at dinner last night i think he's got uh disc brakes on it just because drums on that car would just would almost be unsafe yeah i agree well, here they come out of the heat haze, and it is that beautiful all-red Lotus 23B of Travis Engen leading the way from John Nash in second. We've disposed of one of the Corvettes, sadly. You can just tell, like, you know, we, we commentate on these two cars quite a bit. They are both sitting up higher than we've ever seen them. Yeah. And that's just kind of the Sebring setup. Just because it is so bumpy, they try to give a lot of travel to those shots. Yeah, I'll bet. Yeah, because naturally they do lo run low, don't they? Mm -hmm. But man, high towers. Yeah. High towers coming for the leaders there in that Miata, and then Tom Brown in that beautiful Triumph Spitfire, and then Alan Schammer. He wanted his award last night. He won his group last year, last year's group championship in the Mazda Heritage Cup. But Tom Brown looking on the inside. Go. Tom Brown makes it through in the 18. Nicely done. Spitfire on fire. I got to give you a comment here though while we're waiting. Uh, just for to get more action, but we were talking about wives and sponsors. And we've had uh, boy from New York said, "My wife, mine left me when I went back racing." <laughs> so I no, have a question no from boy there. from New York. Go Is on, that then. from the uh, Simon and Garfunkel lyrics, or how did you get your name? To me, that always reminds me of the uh, Simon and Garfunkel song. Okay. I think it's the only living boy in New York. Is that what it is? Yeah. So Engin leading by 1.4 seconds over Nash. Hightower with that brilliant start taking third. Brown, though, has just overtaken him for third. Uh, as we take a look at one of the other Miatas, that's uh, Alan Schoma in the MX-5. I like the color scheme. Yeah, Erwin Green is saying the Lotus 23 was that fast that it got banned. And that, <laughs> that happened a lot in Colin Chapman's career. You know, he'd come up with some ingenuity, and then they would try to figure out a way to to ban it. Yeah, I mean, you know, we talk about Adrian Newey uh, in Formula One all the time and how brilliant he is, but Chapman in his time was the, 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 the Newey of the time, uh, if, if you will. He was the innovator, the inventor, the guy that would push the rules to the very limit, make lightweight cars that nobody else had thought of how to make them as lightweight as he did. Sometimes push the limits of just how lightweight they should be, perhaps. Um, but uh, that was Colin Chapman for you. So this is Captain Groovy. <laughs> here in the 0-2, Anthony Hess calls himself Captain Groovy in that 1973 would-be chrome bumper, MGB. Good, that's, that's a good moniker, Captain Groovy. I like yeah, it. Yeah, me too. That's what it says on the side of his car. Well, Bill Trefford is down in ninth position. He may have got going again, you know. Because he didn't hit anything, he just yeah. turned it around, and I think he just locked up under braking. That's what it looked like, anyway. Let's hope the car's yeah. okay. Yeah, he may have. You can see the Ave car pulling out. The Trans Am race is over. We had a fantastic Trans Am race yeah. today. Yeah, good one. There's Alan Schammer. Took away some some trophies last night. Yeah, it was the banquet. How was it last night? Really good. Yeah, had a lot of fun. Uh, Bill Warner gave like a TED talk on <laughs> how to do collector cars the wrong way. Ah. And uh, somehow, you know, it's like he basically Good. all the mistakes he made in collector cars. And there is Bill Trefford yeah. going he's, at he's it. Look at running. that. Look at his right tire, though. Right front yeah. tire looks a little wobbly. Well, let's see if he pulls in at this point, because uh, if he's not happy with the, the feel of the car, he may just uh, retire it. But it looks to me he's always online. So uh, I think he's going to continue. Yep, he's, he's still running. Some debris blowing there, but we were together with Bill about six, seven years ago um, at Road America, and he had so much torque 
his right front may be going a little bit flat, but he broke his wheels from the hubs, like the where you put the lug nuts in and where the wheel goes out to the rim of the wheel basically broke. Unbelievable. There's that Sebring, Austin Healy, and then uh, the Janetta. So Explain. that's the front end they made for the aero advantage here. So tell me what the difference is between the normal front end and what they did for Sebring. Well, the normal one looks like the bug eye, you know, with the big smile uh, yeah, yeah, and the yeah, headlights. Yeah, yeah. So they narrowed so, it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They kind of, uh, not as much drag, I guess, a I low you. drag front end yep. special. I get you. Let's go Corvette. That's what some people are asking anyway. TA race, you missed it. But you can watch it any time. It's on, it's on the Speed Tour website, right? I'm sorry, what's that? Somebody's asking when the TA race is. Oh, uh, the TA race has happened already. I know, but, yeah. but they can watch it on. on yeah, yeah, YouTube. you can go back uh, and rewind. I think this video you're watching right now and uh, watch the TA race. We're much better in hindsight, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, I wish we could correct my mistakes. In hindsight. Yeah, that's, that's the beauty. There is that Janetta, that number 61 of Dennis D'Antonio. Are there any touches you can see in the all modern uh, pace car we have that uh, relate back to all the early 60s Janettas? I don't know, but you can see the evolution yeah, by can. looking at them. It's Definitely. still a light, nimble car, yep. but uh, people don't make little cars like they used to. No. You know, it's, it, you look at the modern Mini, you would consider the, the, the new modern Mini Cooper, oh. the BMW Cooper, to be nah. a small car. But next to a Mini, it looks like oh, a giant. giant. It looks like a huge SUV. I, I hate to say it, but I think BMW ruined the, that, that a little bit, in my opinion. And they keep getting bigger. Every new yeah. generation of the new Mini Cooper is not the point bigger. of the Mini. Yeah, exactly. The but mini. I think us big fat Americans want big cars. What can I tell you? Us fat British blokes do too. Engin, Nash, and Brown. That's your top three. Hightower drops to fourth after being high as. Uh, that's my well, favorite in this third group. Again. Oh, that's lovely. I can't. It? I hate to say it because it's not a British car, but to bring out a, a BMW, BMW 700S, 700S, that's just. That's so just you were cool. saying it's it's literally got a, a BMW motorcycle engine in it yeah yeah and and it's in the rear end it's air cooled you could hear it when it went by and uh, just such a cool car and i have to give him uh credit that's jerry j david he did go off yesterday with the mechanical right where you're seeing there between the two tracks and uh, we didn't have to go full course yellow because he went off at the mm -hmm. right place that alex talked about in driver's meeting keeping the whole group running uh without a full course caution. So we really do appreciate that when drivers are heads up like that. So I'm guessing that it'll be a pretty lightweight engine. Yes, yeah, very lightweight car. You look at it, there's there's not much to it. As we look at Travis Angan, speaking of lightweight, we, I was talking to him at the grid, and you know the old Colin Chapman of adding lightness, mm. which they just meticulously went through those cars, and anywhere there was extra weight that wasn't strength or rigidity, they would try to take out. Yep, that's the idea, and that's what makes you go faster. I thought what you were saying yesterday was true uh, about the uh, 23B and how, where, where do you put the engine? I mean, there's a room for an engine in that, surely. But it's got one. Yeah. Just right behind the driver. Yeah. But even that, I mean, that little tray back there just looks like, if you look at a Lotus Europa, yeah. you can see that there's room for a rear engine. But that is so small, you just can't imagine it. And look at how high up he's got that thing riding. Yeah, it's, you can tell, can't you? But you need it. Watch him coming into sunset here. Watch him when he starts turning in now. Start watching the bumps now. And as he gets, starts to wave through, you see he needs that high lap. Oh, yeah. Now watch. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, that's about a two, three-inch travel yeah. in those shots. We don't see that often. And when it's lent over like that. Uh, There's really a de that debris is now switched to the other side of the track. Ho hope that doesn't get into somebody's radiator. Nah, it's only a bag. He'll be all right. Look at how smooth his hands are. Yeah, you can tell he's really in control of that car. There's no movement, extra movement by the hands. He's avoiding the bumps where he can, taking a nice wide line through one and driving up to three. And he's got a good advantage now, which allows him to stay in that zone. He's not under panic or being under pressure by John Nash. He's still in second place. Hightower still third. Brown fourth. Shoma in fifth place. Then Hess Trefford up to seventh now. It's a good recovery. Uh, by the Corvette. Yeah, that is pretty good. And his family, uh, so his grandson Andrew came away with three of those big 
Cup trophies yesterday. Really? So that was good. And look at this. D'Antonia has gotten around him. Yeah, well, this is one of the closer battles going on during the race. And it's between the number 61 of Dennis D'Antonio and Bill, Tr uh, excuse me, and John Daniels Jr. Yeah. Now, when your name is John Daniels, do you think his nickname is Jack? Well, I was saying that uh, I've, I've tasted his brother's before now. Yeah, it's only about an hour south of me in Lynchburg, Tennessee. That's right. So looking long down the Ullman Strait, just waiting for them to pop out, and they will do very soon. That is a cool shot when Isn't the it? little heat mist comes yeah. up and rises. What Here do you call that again? Heat haze. Heat haze. Yeah. Not to be confused with purple haze. No, that's a different haze. So let's see if this Sebring Sprite can come and get him. Just shows you how long this straight is. It's yeah. oh, enormous, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, in those cars, you can check your text or grab a snack. Yep. Now he finally turns in. Now look at the right height. Look at the one. lines of that car. Beautiful. That is just sexy. Yep. It's a beautiful car, that you know, the G4. 1961. Well, let's ask the crowd. If you're on the comments section, he says Frog Eye in UK. That is correct, because we usually call him Kermit the Frog Eye Sprite. Yeah. But uh, leave a comment. Which one of these cars is your favorite out there in this group? Yeah, let's, let's hear from you. My favorite is that BMW 700S, which I never thought I would say in a group of British cars. Yeah, I know. That's pretty impressive. Well, you know it's reliable. It's a BMW. Maybe. We're going to have the white flag next time by for yep. the leader. Coming out of turn three. Uh-oh, the vultures are circling. I you know. can see their shadows <laughs> there. That might be ominous. There's Bill Trefford. They're a bit early for Bill. 1960 Chevrolet Corvette. He, no, they're only in flight because they, they saw him go off and they thought Maybe. they had a chance. Yeah. And, that, and now they're just wondering where he's going. Well, we know where he is. He's back out on track. And he's up to, what, seventh place? Yeah, Captain Groovy. There's Here we our go. leader. He is flying. Travis Engen just... Poodling along, smooth as you like. Right hand down, another corner down. And bye. And he waved like, hey, thanks, <laughs> thanks for me. seeing me. Yep. That's uh, the gentleman driver that Travis Ingen is. He um, just an unbelievable person, really fun to talk to. He just, just doing that little live grid walk thing that we did taught me some cool things about the car. So the rear end of that car has six lugs. The front end had four. They took it to the 24 Hours of Le Mans, and the FIA had a ruling of the spare tire had to fit both front and rear, and Colin Chapman never went back to the 24 Hours of Le Mans. Because of that? Yep. Wow. Interesting. Good, good little factoid, though. The Antonio still in that little battle with Daniels. Daniels, though, losing a little bit of ground in the 13. It's long gone. Look at it's already gapping from uh... You always hear stories that back in the day in the uh, 50s and 60s, they basically just put peach bales, you know, those little like corn husk bales around to mark the track. And uh -huh. at night, with dim headlights, you could just get lost out there. And there'd be people that were just on a whole other part of the airport and have to turn around and go find their way back to the track. <laughs> and even still, you can kind of see how that would happen. Yeah, it's complex. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of very similar looking asphalt out there. So white flag waves for our leader, Travis Engen, as he comes out of sunset, takes the white flag. And this is the final lap. This is group one, three, four, and five B. Small field of 10 cars, but uh, entertainment all the way. That's smooth as you like him to turn on again. He just always looks like he's in control, and the car just goes where he wants it. And uh, he and JR and the whole staff at GMT, you know, they work together and, and get the cars working right. And uh, I don't know if I've ever seen Travis's cars come in on the hook. Well, high tire back up to third, have a drop to fourth. He and Brown in a good battle for the final podium spot. 
Fastest lap from Danny, uh, Denny Hightower of 238.4. So pleased with that. Engen, on the other hand, is uh, circulating in the mid 34s at the moment. This, though, is last lap. Beautiful sand. To Tower Corner, down towards Bennett's Bridge Hall, Bishop's Bend. <laughs> Look at his hands. Look at that. Kind of one corner, one turn, not scrubbing the tires, just super smooth. I love the juxtaposition between the old vintage car and the big modern Red Bull helmet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it fits in that Audi R8 that he's also driving. Yes, that's right. But yeah. So then final lap, Travis Engen putting on the... Yeah, what a difference. I forgot. Yeah, he drives that amazing R8, doesn't he? Yeah. Now, Doc Bundy races a 23B with us with Rogogo Racing, and his pedals from left to right is clutch. Uh, wait, hold on. Let me think about this. It's gas brake. Yeah, it's well, maybe not. Maybe I don't have it. It's, he has four pedals, and I've lost my train of thought. So you guys are going to have to tell me why he's got four pedals as Travis comes through here. Has he got two brakes? I think he does have two brakes. And he also has a little so thing. So he can left that, foot brake and right foot brake because the yes, left foot brake yes. would be done on the Audi. And yes. he has a little mister that can miss the brakes, too. There you go. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I've missed the brakes now and again. <laughs> Here we go. Finish, though. We're not going to miss that. That's Travis Engen with the win. And a well done to him in the Lotus 23B. And John Nash will follow him home in second place, but uh, quite some distance behind. Still, really good performance by Travis, as always. It's a good idea having the two brakes just so you can have the yeah. choice of how you want to brake. And then, you know, if you forget how you were driving the other car, you can go back to the old way. Plus, you can steer with the brakes, as we quite rightly point out. We'll take a short break here from Sebring. More action from SVRA here at the Speed Tour and Sebring. Join us after this. Hungry for SVRA action? Well, the best way to enjoy classic auto racing is with a delicious classic from Mission Foods. Green flag your race-watching snacks with Mission's mouth-watering race day recipes. Try some of our tasty tacos, piled high nachos, fresh chips with guac, and more. So gear up your ride and fuel up those stomachs with delicious Mission Foods. Now that's too fast, too tasty.
Hungry for SVRA action? Well, the best way to enjoy classic auto racing is with a delicious classic from Mission Foods. Green flag your race watching snacks with Mission's mouth watering race day recipes. Try some of our tasty tacos, piled high nachos, fresh chips with guac, and more. So gear up your ride and fuel up those stomachs with delicious Mission Foods. Now that's too fast, too tasty. The Road Atlanta Speed Tour returns to Michelin Raceway, Road Atlanta, March 22nd through the 24th. Featuring the Trans Am Series presented by Pirelli, the Sports Car Vintage Racing Association, International GT, Prototype Sprint Series Association, and the Formula Regional Promotion. Saturday, you can take part in the Haggerty Cars and Caffeine Car Show. You do not want to miss the Road Atlanta Speed Tour. Children 12 and under are free. For tickets, simply go to Speed Tour. Welcome back to the Speed Tour. Jonathan Green and Ben Sissel bringing the action and Tony Garcia getting amongst it, underneath it, over it, inside it, you name it. Did I hear Phil Collins in the background when that came live? Yeah. Somebody's playing that. Yeah, it is. Bit of a nice. Cadillac. Now, do not adjust your TV screen, ladies and gentlemen. This is not the 2019 12 Hours of Sebring. That's Yasek Muka racing in our Group 11 SVRA in that beautiful Mustang sampling from... The 2019 12 Hours of Sebring. Yeah, but he uses that umbrella just to slow him down. That's a parachute. That thing's fast. Uh oh, we're missing Tom Gladys so far. He should be in second position there. Travis and Hankins then, is in a complete doubt for something completely different. How about that? Yeah, Monty Python. Yeah, but there, the Red Bull helmet looks normal, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. A bit different than the... Uh, so, uh, Tony, if you, if you can hear me, get some shots at the side of the car. Right, right there. See all those names? Down, down below, Tony. Go if you can come. Bring the camera down to the ground. Oh, they're going out. Never mind. There we go. Yeah, Tony, don't get hit by a car. You Sorry gonna, about that. Gonna, look, he's just come back. He doesn't. I mean, it's bad enough. Give him a, give him a break. There go the Myers out there. So this is Group Five, Seven, and Eleven at the Sebring Speed Tour. Andrea Robertson pulling out there, and uh, just some really cool eclectic mix of cars, some prototypes. Some of these cars actually did race at the 12 Hours of Sebring just a few years ago yep. in this century. And uh, so I'll go through yep. the uh, grid here real quick. We've got Yasek Muka in that 2019 Mustang sampling Cadillac DPI. Tom Gladys, who isn't out there. Travis Engen. Yeah, it is. I hear One More Night by Phil Collins. You hear that? Is that on the speakers out there? No, it's in your head. Hopefully, it may Do be. the grid. Do the grid. Travis, keep me focused. My, <laughs> med, my meds are wearing out. You are. Travis Engen, 2005 Audi R8 LMP. Aaron Weiss in a Praga R1T. Ralph Lamacchia, one of our fastest drivers, in a Mazda Elan DP02. Louis Schreiber in a Radical SR10. Benjamin Myers, our Group 5, first Group 5, an AS2 and a Carbeer CS2. And his brother, Andrew Myers, went away with three huge cups of trophies last night. 1996 Carbeer Sports 2000. Gary Gray in a Radical SR8. Gulp. I'm not hearing. I'm not imagining that. That's Phil Collins. Gobel Newsom. Gobel Newsom in a Sebaco MP01 Evo. Andrea Robertson in that Ford Doran GT. Beautiful car. Thank you, Andrea, for bringing that back out with us. Dave Kunzelman in a Radical SR3. Michael Schmitz. One more night. Norma M30. And then Don Yount in an Orica Challenge car. Jonathan, we're going to have a good race here. I don't know what a Ford Doran GT is compared to a Ford GT40. I think just Doran was like the, the, the team that built the car. Like, um, like a Shelby Mustang instead of a, you know, a Ford Mustang. Okay. I believe. But I could be wrong. And I'm sure our comment section knows exactly or at least can Google it for us. So you're not the only one. RDC Autosports is also doing Phil Holt Collins in his head. So. Okay. I hear a sax solo right now. You hear it? That's the Barely, sax solo. Barely. I think you've got the unity on as well. So I just don't worry. He's playing all his hits. He's here. Constantly. Now, it wouldn't be odd to see uh, the lead singer of ACDC, Brian Johnson, out racing. No. Nope. Or uh, the Nick Mason from Pink Floyd. Or even um, Mr. B. Yeah. Alice Cooper. Yeah, he races. Uh, what's his name? The podcast. Uh, 
Adam Carolla. Adam Carolla. Yeah. We're talking about a car that he owns now at uh, Phillies. Yeah. So what's your favorite Phil Collins or Genesis song? We're just going to put out all the hits today. Okay. Uh, well, you know, you can't beat in the air tonight. You know, that's yeah. drum solo. You've got to love it. Um, I'm not a Susu Studio fan. Nah, nah. Fantastic in concert, though. Did you know, here's a bit of trivia, did you know that Phil Collins owns, owns most of the items in the Alamo? I think he's since sold them off. Huh. But uh, if you go to the Alamo and you go and see some of the famous swords and some of the memorabilia they have there, um, he is a long-time aficionado of wow. all things Alamo and has put a lot of his money into them. That's, I know. You, which How part, random is that? I like, totally random. Yeah. I mean, a guy from England, um, you know, investing in a place in San Antonio. A famous place, mind you. Ginetta, talking of a famous place in England. Uh, Ginetta, the lights are off on the pace car, which means the Cadillac and the Audi Ooh, will go head look to Look at this head. front row. What a front this row. This is amazing. Like, seriously, don't adjust your TV screens, because you would think this might be the 12 hours of Sebring. Yeah, with, with sunshine. Here we go. These two are going to go, Who do you, who's your money on in this one? Yeah, Travis, though. No, Yasek's the aggressive one. Okay. Travis will wait for his tires to warm up and make good decisions, and uh, Yasek goes for it. Here we go, then. Let's see if you're right. Green flag waves. Away they go. Yasek Muka on the right-hand side. Travis Engin does slot into second place, as you guessed it would be the case. Engin will wait to get his tires up to speed. That's a beautiful-looking Cadillac. You said Ford Cadillac or something. Mustang sampling. I see. Yeah, that was the sponsor back then. I think that is that a Wayne Taylor? I, no, Cadillac? that's not Wayne Taylor. Who is who was the who was the team with that? Well, Max Angelelli was the guy that developed the Cadillac originally for IMSA. But uh, but you're right. Wait, I mean, so many of them. But 219. No, that's a long okay. time. Okay. Yeah, now look at this radical. Long, long now look at look at the legs on that Audi just pulling away, coming right down to Yasek Muka. It does take about a lap for that Audi's tires to come to temperature, I believe. Third place is Aaron Weiss in the Praga R11. Cool looking car. Like yeah. the lines of that car are just beautiful. But basically, the first three cars in this group are reverse airplanes. They're basically made to keep these cars on the ground. Yeah, and in fact, the Audi in the middle, the all gray and uh, with touches of ray, uh, red, is the most successful Audi racing car of all time. Isn't that cool that it's here with us? And will be with us probably four or five t more times this season. So it's so cool to see that car. And especially sometimes in the paddock, you can go to GMT and they've got all the clothes off of the car. And you can see yeah. the engineering inside it. And it, is, it is unbelievable to see the insides of that car. And they've made it easier and easier to settle with. Uh, they used to be have literally technicians from Audi to be able to get started and work it and all the rest of it. But they've made it a lot easier now. But this top four, look at them really close together as they come out of 16 and down the Almond straight. Line okay. of stern, here comes the Audi. Yeah, but yeah, the Audi and the uh, Cadillac are pretty equally yoked at this point. Maybe Travis is turning it on. Look at that. Ah, uh, we've got some aficionados. Oh, man. All right, so give us your um, your historic Sebring 12 hours announcing voice. Remember those from those films of the 50s and 60s? And here they are, the American classic here at Sebring. And it's good to see Bill McLaren and Bruce McLaren together on track. Ryan Redmond is also in this one. He's in a Ferrari. That's amazing. I wish I had that talent. <laughs> it's Travis Engin in the Mission Foods Turn 1. But there it is, that number 72. Such a cool Aaron Weiss, a Praga R1T. Beautiful lines on that car, but that Radical went up ahead of him. Yeah, we just had Erwin Grevin saying Thomas Eng was one of the uh, drivers in that car. Now, I think that does. Um, Beloff was another one. Bela. Uh, we're talking about the Audi. Travis went wide. Uh, sorry, the Cadillac you were talking about. And I was talking about who drove the Audi as well. But there's nothing between the top three. Really impressive so far. Jim Booth at the wheel of that Radical. It's good to see the Nat Radical, uh, the nimble Radical just keeping up. I mean, he's got plenty of grunt anyway, but so nimble in the quick corners. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a short wheelbase, uh, narrow car. Lots of fun to see. We have this PSSA group that races Radicals and Revolutions. And until you see those two cars side by side, they look pretty similar. Mm. But uh, the Revolutions are quite a bit wider, yeah. have, a, have a, a little bit wider track. But uh, really fun to see those cars on track. And we'll have our first PSSA race next weekend at Thunder Hill. That's right.
There's the 30 of Michael Schmitz and a Norma M30. Group 11 car. I have not heard of the Norma. My mother's name is Norma. She doesn't know she's a racing really? car. Yeah. She drives like a racing driver, but she didn't know she's named after a racing car. All right. Now somebody's playing smooth hits in there. Do you hear that? No. You're imagining things. I might be. There's, there's people it's in really house. sad, though, because I feel like it, I could imagine better than Kenny G. There you go. There's that Mustang sampling. I'm going to snap back to it. Yasek Muka over Travis Engen. But Travis Engen really giving him the grunt here going into 17. And here comes Michael Schmitz might be up there with these two in that Norma M30. So he started at the back, but really moving his way up to the front. Still haven't got a glimpse of Andrea Robertson on track yet. She's in 10th position in that uh, Ford Doran GT. Here come the leaders. Another lap completed. The clock ticking down. The seven of Ralph Lamacia and that Master Alam DPO2. Yeah. So Wolf Motorsports and Ralph, they hang out a lot. And actually, I got to go to so just outside of Road America, uh, Wolf built these uh, like basically condos with big garages that you can build out. You can make like a clubhouse or a bedroom. So when you come to uh, Road America, and Tom Limkuhl, our uh, former grid chief, took me over there. And he's just got a really neat place with a lot of really cool, like, Ferrari memorabilia. And uh, he and Tom would, would pair up and uh, do a lot of co-driving together. So Ralph Lamacchia here. James French is his, uh, his coach and co-driver. So it's cool to see those two uh, come all the way up from Wisconsin down here to race with us at Sebring. Yeah, trying to get away from the cold and get some sunshine in you. So Myers and Myers, 7th and 8th. They had a good battle yesterday, too. So Steve Keyline, this is a great comment. Love seeing the racing cars from the days when the drivers were fat and the tires were skinny. <laughs> yeah. It's the opposite these days. Can be. Yeah, Yasek Muka did a 203-4, and he's got a, well, he's got a good gap over Travis Engin, but it's still a good battle. Now we go back uh -oh. to this battle here. This, this is the Maya battle. The the battle of brotherly love. Yeah, Benjamin and Andrew. So Benjamin last night might have gotten a little bit green with envy, seeing his uh, brother collecting all those cup trophies. So he's just ahead of him as they go through Bennett Bridge Hall Bishop's Bend. So that would be Benjamin going through Bennett's Bishop, Bishop's yeah, Bend. exactly. Wait till we have Benny Bish out there. Benny Bish. That's right. He's up next. Group 10. Look at that, though. Andrew's getting behind him now. The slipstream, the drag can be a big coefficient here. Look at that. Is he closing the gap? I can't tell. It looks like they are dead even. Yeah, it looks dead like even. Like they have a, the a stick between them, and they're just connected. Good racing, though, and I think they're enjoying the fact that they've got plenty of room to race each other, but Ooh. they're very similarly the Yokes, as you quite rightly. There's the Andrea Robertson with the lights blazing on that uh, Ford Doran GT. Beautiful. I went and had a closer look at that. It is absolutely gorgeous. Have we gotten an answer? Here we go. Oh. Now Travis has got his uh, glue together and stuck one ahead of Luca and takes the lead. So Engen, for the first time, leads this race. In the Audi R8. Uh-oh. Ladies and gentlemen, strap in. We're going to have to stay with the leaders. I think we've gone through the whole grid because we're going to have to stay with the leaders. Something amazing is about to happen. Travis Engen in his 2005 Audi R8 LMP versus Yasek Muka in a 2019 Cadillac DPI. This is about to get good at Sebring. Two cars with huge history here at the 12 Hours of Sebring. Who do, you, who do you have the advantage to? Who do you give the advantage to, Jonathan? Well, just the, what you said was so interesting. 2005 versus 2019, that should not be a match, but it just shows you uh, the quality of that Audi and also yeah. Travis Engen's uh, ability at the wheel. But uh, Muka should have the advantage, and he's right there behind him as they come through 15A and head towards 16. But you never know, like what kind of restrictions were put on cars Correct. in that 14-year difference. But, yeah, uh, Travis, a little bit less drag than, yep. you know, with that open cockpit car over that Mustang sampling. But you can see Yasek kind of looking around. He's like, doesn't have the draft yet. Yasek and Travis have raced together many times, so they know each other really well. But let's see what happens here. All right. Look bump. at those bumps. Yeah, out of the Mission Foods. Sunset corner. And there's going to be another lap before the white flag for at least, and that means that Yasek 
Luca, as they dive into one, has still got a very good chance of winning this race. Yeah. He's taking the wide line, short apex corner. Travis taking the defensive line. Both on the brakes at the same time, but Jacek was just a little bit behind Travis. So Travis later on the brakes there. And they come out of oh, very smooth indeed. Th three, four, five now down under the bridge. Look at the look at that gap now that Travis is getting. Yeah, he's getting some good, think, uh, uh, using the grunt of the Audi there for sure. Jacek's going to have to be a little bit later on the race, but man, he used all the track there. He almost came out, tracked out wide right. Just seems like the Cadillac under braking, the more modern car just really dives closer and closer under heavy braking, especially at the Q3 hairpin there, turn yeah. seven. Gary Gray, and then number 34, 2013 Radical SR8. I wish I knew and I should know. I'll know by next weekend what the difference between an SR10 and an SR8 is, but hopefully our comment section does. It does seem like yesterday that those Audis were new, and I have a few slot cars of those Audis, but look at this. Andrea Robertson, another car that uh, raced the 24 hours, that very car raced the 24 hours of Le Mans. She podiumed that, didn't she? Yes, yeah. She and her husband. What a cool story that yeah. is. Love the new bridge that Sebring's put in the last five or six years there, that Corvette bridge going into Green Park. Just every year we come back here, there's new improvements that the staff is making to the track. You don't want to mess with it too much. Yeah, they're not really changing that. They're changing like the infrastructure and the things for the spectators, but the track is staying the same. Yeah, if they, if they came here and repaved and smoothed out the track, I think the whole motorsports, uh, anybody in motorsports would revolt against it. Mm. I believe this is Dave Kunzelman with that SR3. That was radical. Momo Ferrari livery on it. Love that. Yeah, you gotta love that. Kind of on his own though at the back. Now yeah. The place. But we've gone through. Let's let's try to. If you guys don't mind, you guys want to see the leaders. Let's try to go back to those leaders with Travis Engen and Yasik Muka because I think it might come down go. to there we go. I love it. Look at that. As I come through Cube 3, Turn 7, what are you seeing, Jonathan? Well, I'm seeing, like I said, the Cadillac go very close there. That's about the closest he comes. And then he stays with him down the Fangio. But watch this. Well, next time we get a drone shot, you'll watch. Yeah. The Audi will start to just pull away slightly, see? And then by the time they come into Tower... Well, yeah, uh, six out breaking break, him. Yeah, he's out breaking him every time. Tower again, very close. So it, what he needs to do, if he wants to make the approach and make the, get over the slipstream, he needs to... Uh, tuck himself up at 16, get through uh, Venice Bridge Hall, uh, Bishop's Bend, and then 15, 15A, 16, then tuck himself right there at 16 under braking. Now, at this point here, if we get it, watch this angle. See how close he gets in this right-hander and exiting from that. And if he is close enough, then he might have a chance down the almond straight. Here we go. That's what I'm talking about. Look, close as he's been, right? Yep. But watch the Audi now. Now, if, if Yasa can tuck in on Travis, Travis will give him the corner. But he's got to be right there. And this is where the Audi has the advantage in a straight line. See, he's just not close enough to make a move. But he is taking a faster line through there. Let's see what he can do see here. if he can go under at the exit. Well, Almost. Nice Look and at close. That. He's nice and close. It it's is. Still time. And I don't see a white flag. Not yet. Ooh, this could shape up to be pretty good. So if you're in the comments, who's who's taking this thing, the Cadillac or the Audi? Well, he's got time. We've got a few laps left, actually. So uh, he's just going to bide his time. He just needs to get closer and closer, take increments each and every uh, corner and lap. Uh, so MAK450 is like he's still salty over Pike's Peak being completely paved, to be honest. Yeah, it's not fair because now how do you compare yourself to the times Bobby Unser did in the dirt and hanging out like crazy can't. to the asphalt, no, you know? You can't. Changed it dramatically. Look at this. This is where he gets very close indeed, but he needs to be closer uh, because that's the obvious place to overtake. I think it'll be hard for Travis to come back at him if he does get past him. Man, that Cadillac rotates quickly. I've never seen that. Okay, let's see where he goes through here. Through Collier. And now under braking. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's kind of holding off a bit. 
he's gone deeper than that. In previous I wonder if the arrow wash getting right behind one of those cars is yeah. a problem. Well, I don't know. Might be. We haven't really seen anybody, uh, you know, going up against Travis in a while. No, they're both coming up on some lap Kutuzman. traffic. Yeah, that's uh, Kutuzman again in 11th. They're both past him. Oh, no, one uh -oh. of them is. Ah, he might yeah. get held a up little a little bit. A little bit of a pick here. Yeah, Travis is going to get gain a lot here. Yeah. Look at this. Ooh, this is advantage, Travis. That is so 12 hours of Sebring. What yeah. we just saw there. That's just what all the prototypes are. He's still up front not, he's still not past to. him fully. Yeah. Oh, that's a huge advantage. Remember last time we saw this shot, he was tucked in right behind him. And now Travis has got about four or five car lengths on him now. And I think that's all he's going to need in the closing stages of this one. Nicely done by Travis. That's good, skillful, clever driving. I don't see the start tower like scrambling to find their white flag. So we're going again. I think they're, I think they're having a big discussion. Maybe they forgot this isn't the 12 hour. Maybe. So the gap has increased dramatically now. It's over three and a half seconds. So all the good work that uh, Luca had done has come to naught because Travis Eddington, as you can see, is gone. He's already through three. And now Muka breaking, just coming into the entry of three. So he's broken the back of this, has uh, Engen. Isn't it interesting to see all the different racing surfaces here? So now he's on that patch. Then he comes out. So just th those little bit of changes, you know, in the right weather can kind of mess you up oh, yeah. because it's just different grip levels, different adhesion. Then now he comes into a concrete part of the Cube 3 Turn 7 hairpin. This is third place. This is the 63 of Jim Booth. Been a quiet race for him, but uh, he's pedaling away nicely. Out of... Cube three and down the Fangio straight. If I don't, if I'm not mistaken, I thought Jim Booth used to drive a white uh, radical with us last year. Maybe he's got maybe a new he's, car well, for Well, the him. Uh, the SR10 is probably one of the most modern radicals, so maybe yeah. he's upgraded to a more modern radical. Uh, yeah. There's La Bamba Racing down there. I see the La Bamba Racing machine. Happy to have them here. Thanks for joining us. And there's Jim Booth. You can see that halo. See their kind of interpretation of the yeah. halo there. That's a that's a smart idea. Yeah, it is. Works well. As we saw with Grosjean a few years ago. Oh, yeah. See, they've added asphalt right there coming into, what is that, 15, mm -hmm. 14, 15, 16. Yeah, so that's turn 14. That wasn't there, I think, last year. Well, it's going to be a safe first place, uh, third place, excuse me, for Booth. The battle rages on between Engin and Muka, but Muka's kind of lost out. The gap now, three and a half, if not more, at the end of this lap. Winding down. This is our group 5A, 7, 11, and their second race of the weekend. I want to see this Praga, the black car behind this red car. I want to see the, the lines of that. It's just a really cool looking car. Look at that. It looks like Spacey, 20 isn't it? years in the future. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? It's actually fourth place at the moment. That's the 72 of Aaron or Vice uh, on the Praga. Man, that looks that. rough. I do like that. Good looking car. Low Res to the ground. Respect the bumps. That's yeah, Sebring's okay. tagline. Yeah. Well, he's having fun, that's for sure. Fourth place overall and already getting into traffic as he dives out of turn one. Back to Boo. Something's, something's hanging on the bottom of his car. You see that? Yep. Just behind the right front wheel, uh, probably just a little piece of, uh, what do you call that, the body that keeps it a flat uh, underneath. Something's come loose there, and there's our leader. The but tray, the, the, yeah. the gap has dropped. Yeah. It was three and a half. Well, Engin doing a good job of controlling this race, but, uh, yeah, we'll keep an eye on the gap. It's 2.8 now. Look there, you can see it now for yourself. So it's come down a little bit, so he's replied well, has uh, Muka. So Mac 450 says his money is on the Audi, but he's rooting for the Caddy. Well, bit the battle of the Myers is over, that's for sure. And it looks as though Benjamin's easily won that. Andrew a long way back now. Look. Yeah, wonder what happened. Meanwhile, the leader's coming through. Engin on his way. 
looks like a, so the person at the flag stand looks like he's ready yeah, to throw something. He's ready to throw. Well, he's ready. Uh, it's a flag of surrender for Muka. <laughs> it's actually a white flag to say last lap because Muka is a long way behind. There you see the gap. Yep. Muka some 5.1 seconds. That's why I say he's surrendering because it was down to just under three, but now it's gone back up to five. So. You know, what's so interesting well. about endurance racing that we've seen in the years past, you know, you look at the record books for 12 hours of Sebring back from the 60s, sometimes it was, you know, 60 lap difference between the leader and stuff like that. But, man, the last couple of 12 hours of Sebring, last couple of 24 hours of Daytona have yeah. come down to the last lap with the cars inside of each other. I know. Endurance racing has changed dramatically over the years, and they've got it down to an absolute T now. So, last lap into the hairpin for the last time for Travis Engin and that famous Audi R8 LMP. Nobody else taking the white flag. I've spoken to Travis because sometimes he'll race four cars in a weekend with us. And it uh, I've, I've never really done that. You know, I've never gotten from one car to the other race car. And he said, no, it, every, all of them feel a little bit different. So he knows exactly what car he's in. He never thinks in that Lotus 23 that I've got the downforce to go into this turn as I do. You know, he yeah, just yeah. kind of repositions, reprograms his brain. I'm in the Audi. This is what this car can do. Well, I think because the cars are so different, that actually helps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. So the battle between Engen and Muka coming to a close now as we look at the last part of the track from high above here at Sebring. And Travis putting on a good show. And here he comes down the Almond straight for the last time. Now, I wonder, I'd love to get a, a record or a readout on just how many races, just by fact, this, not big, big Super Le Mans races, but just how many races this car has won. Because it's been oh, ru gosh. running around in historics. Yeah. Of oh, winning yeah. constantly. Yeah, and he doesn't just race with us. He's doing all kinds of different oh, yeah. historic events. Oh, yeah. I've seen it all over the USA. Check the flag then for Travis Engen, who wins once again in that Audi R8. Acknowledges the checkered flag. Thank you, Travis. In a moment. Yasek, Mook Sharp, there he is. Muka comes across the line to take second in the Cadillac. That was a cool race. That was fun to watch. And, and Rob and Alex told me a couple weeks ago that we do have a lot of Group 11 cars here coming here, and they were right. It really uh, paid off. All right, well, as we pull just away from Sebring for a moment, we'll take a short break. We'll be back with more action from SVRA here at the Speed Tour in Sebring. Okay, so pretend this is your race car. It's on the trailer, and you have an accident. Ouch! At least your truck's insurance will pay for another one? Yeah, not so fast. Standard insurance won't replace your race car, whether it's in the trailer, in the paddock, in the garage, or the repair shop. But at Haggerty, we can protect it for what it's really worth any time it's off the track. No matter what or where you race, offer less than a set of race tires. Haggerty, let's drive together. Taking on the challenge, moving ahead. It's about going further, faster. At Customers Bank, we know that great things happen when you combine the best of technology with a deeply human touch. So we offer a wide range of personal, small business, and commercial banking solutions with outstanding personal service, giving you the edge you need to take on tomorrow. Did. 
Yeah, no, I mean, it was his fault, but unfortunately, it was his fault. And what's his face is going to fix that. There you go. You're good. Welcome back to Sebring International Raceway. It's a beautiful day here in central Florida. Here in February, the only place you can get proper sunshine. Well, it's the only place in Arizona, Texas, California. Actually, maybe not. It's raining in California, but it never rains, supposedly. But we are looking at the Miller Genuine Draft. NASCAR. The number two. That should be Rocco there. Uh, been in the paddock with us for a long time. I always knew him as a crew person with Cobra Automotive, and turns out he is a, a pretty good wheel and uh, really good race car driver with us in our SVRA Group 10. This is kind of a weird group because, yes, it is one group, Group 10 as opposed to 1345B, but then you've got Group 10 GT4 oh, or nice Group work. 10 stock Garcia car. Look at that. Wave, then? wave no. Tony. Garcia. Let's see. Let's the see old it. ham. Yeah. Come yeah. on, wave to us. We can see you. Too. There he is. He's yeah, waving yeah. to us. We got you. That's the 7A of Charles Wicht, uh, International GT competitor, 2021 Porsche 992 GT3 Cup car. We've got about one minute on the grid. So oh, this, this is full of a lot of Cup cars in both series. Yeah. NASCAR Cup cars, Winston Cup cars. And How do you then we've got cup? some cup? Is, that, is that with an R in the middle? <laughs> Maybe. Cup. And uh, we've got a lot of NASCAR Cup so, cars. Tom McGlynn. And we've got a lot of Porsche Cup cars. 996. Nine, Look at that. Oh, yeah, oh, that's a, a good one. Thumbs up forward. Thumbs up forward. I like that. All right. That, that should that be the new thing. Tom McGlynn with Young Blood Wheels. I like that. You're winning, Tom. Yep. He's rolling out with his Young Blood Wheels. There's Ike Keeler there in that number 15, Bud Moore, Mercurio. And that was the one I need to make a correction. So I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. Casey Kane. In the comments, you were right. You, you showed me in all caps and a lot of exclamation points. It's Casey Kane, not Bill Elliott. The car tomorrow to be was fair, Casey Kane. To be fair, Billy Elliott drove the number nine. Chase yeah. Elliott drives the number nine. We, we're not NASCAR folk. I feel we're, like you know somebody like a Bill Elliott, Richard Petty, yeah. should Dale Earnhardt, they should retire those numbers yeah. unless they give permission to use them again. Well, they, they retire. In MotoGP, they retire the numbers. Uh, the 66 is retired. Uh, we lost uh, a great uh, uh, rider in Marco Simicelli. They retired his number. Kevin Schwantz is 34, is retired uh, for the same reason. One of the greats, one of the legends of MotoGP. And I agree. I think they should take that into car racing, too. I mean, uh, why not? Trouble is, you'd run out of numbers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now... Alan Davison with food is this the processing chicken, is, is equipment this the chicken, company. Chicken nugget, yes. man. Yeah. There you go. Makes a food processing equipment company out of Arkansas. And then, oh, I was wrong. I did speak to his wife, I believe, today at the grid. It's Chopatini. Oh, Chopatini. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So I've been saying it wrong this whole time. He corrected me last season, and I forgot his correction. So we're going to make it right today. That is Frank Chopatini in a Chevrolet Camaro. Let me go through the grid here go real quick. It. Did you see Ernie Francis out there? Not yet. Okay, so Jeff Rocco. Yeah, there's Jeff Rocco in the front in a Pontiac Grand Prix, the Rusty Wallace car. Then we've got Edward Savagian is not out there. So Brian Collier, I don't see him out there either. Blaze Chitta is not out there. I don't see him. So Charles Wicked in a Porsche 992. Mark Mercurio in a How Camaro. Tom McGlynn, Ike Keeler, Randy Walker, Scott Frazier, Dave Ricci, Rick Frazier in the Hooters car. Alan there Davison. He is. There he is. Start. Oh, he's about to make a show of it. All right. Rick Wait. Frazier, Alan Davison, John Kyle II, Tom Forgione, Paul Mortimer, Frank Chopatini. In that Chevrolet Camaro, Tom Capigi in the Lamborghini Super Trofeo, and then Ernie Francis Jr. starting from the back. Well, I won't I've, be long. I'd put a hundred dollars on him winning this race. I'll take that bet because actually I'll I'll go I'll double it. I'll I'll, I'll put two hundred or any any comma. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is a figurative one hundred dollars because I don't know the legalities. <laughs> I don't of us, have uh, the other hundred. I was doing I was just this it online, up. so we are just. Imagining. That's the faith we have in Ernie We're Francis. Putting, yes. You know what the problem truth is? If I could bet $100 legally, I would do it. Do you know what the real true story is? Dave Rishi is a breathless car ride. And I bet you yeah. Ernie Francis and his mom and his dad were busy fixing or getting ready Dave Rishi's car. And then they went, hey, you're in this race too, you know. Yeah. And, then, and that's why he's out there at the back and took the longest to get out there. So that's probably what's going on with Ernie. But it won't stop him. 
I love this. A great, great line from Jeff Logan uh, on uh, YouTube says, NASCAR versus Porsche? What? I like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, uh, they run similar lap times in a completely different, different way. way. So it should be interesting out there. And they have to be aware of that. They have to be aware that the big stock cars can't stop and the Porsches can come right through and dive bomb them at every corner. But then down this long Ullman straight, the NASCARs let them go and uh, away they go. So then, the Janetta's lights are out, and we are ready for some real muscle car magic here at Sebring once again. Listen to that roar. I think Ernie will have it by the time they reach Mish, by the time they reach turn three, second lap. Okay. Well, that's a better bet, actually. A more interesting bet, shall I say. He's got one already. He's ahead of the number six of Frank Chopatini. 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 All right, then, get ready for the green flag. Group 10 about to get underway for their second race of the weekend. And away they go. NASCAR roars. Porsche roars. Randy Walker in third. They all spread out. Where's Ernie going to pop out? I'm Ernie Francis just being patient. Yeah. Into the first corner they go. And into third goes the number 15. Mike Keeler in that Bud Moore livery, tribute livery. Now, this is where uh, it all went wrong for Ernie earlier today. Yeah. So Ernie's he's picked up one spot. Biden is time here. Joe Biden is time. Yep, he's one spot up into, th into the turn three. And looking to try and make another move. But the field's starting to spread out, so he's going to have to get a hurry on. Jeff Rocco not in any mood in the Pontiac Grand Prix to yeah. slow down. Down towards the Cube 3 turn seven hairpin. Under braking, this is where the NASCARs, if you will, have a bit of a disadvantage. The heavier, not as good a brakes as the more nimble Porsches. But this, you know, we say this every time, but that is the era that I liked, where the NASCAR cars actually look like the cars that they were based on. Like, that looks like a Pontiac Grand Prix. Soon after that, they started looking like, you know, uh, they resembled the cars that they're based on. Silhouette, as we call yeah. them. Yes. No, I know. I, 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 I share your interest in them looking. I, I like the Gen 3 car. I like the fact that it's just a little bit more yeah. racier. Yeah. And actually does look a bit more like it. Yeah, it does. Car. I now, think here it, comes Ernie. They got that right. Now, by the way, this is one of Ernie's uh, championship winning cars. Now, he's been away from um, Trans Am for two years now. He's been doing Indy Next. Uh, he's still a youngster, remember. But seven titles in all, four uh, consecutively in uh, Trans Am. That's, of course, what Chris Dyson is chasing this year, but he's not made it easy for himself in the first round. So it's great to see Ernie in his championship winning TA car. Put on a hell of a show back in the day. Down the back straight, roaring, making a beautiful sound, even echoing through our commentary box here. Sounds but like an aeroplane landing. It is cup car versus cup car, because I think that car ahead would have been a Winston Cup car. It looks like the era that Winston was still the main sponsor of NASCAR. So that's a Cup car versus a Porsche Cup car. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, that's a 992 GT3. What's the difference between a 991 GT2, 3 GT3 and a 992 GT3? You know? Well, they're different numbers. Thank you. That's brilliant. <laughs> you know, I can see why <laughs> we got you. That's what I know. Yeah, that's my expertise. Yeah. yeah. One's bigger than the other. Thanks very much. Yeah, I don't know. I, Thanks I, for playing. They all look... To, to be honest, and I know I'm going to get criticized for this, but they all look the same to me. Yeah, wow. Oh, oh. I know that I'm about to You're just make You're going straight to hell for that one. Up. Oh, man. But Less you know, than I'm a second between it. Rocco and Wick, though, at the front, which is good. And then a bit of a gap to Walker in third. Keeler still fourth, and there's a good battle going on for third and fourth. Ernie Francis is up to fifth. Where did you say he would be by the I end? I thought he would be by him by now, but he's actually being pretty patient. Um, he doesn't want to tear up that car because no, he, he has to fix it. He has to fix it. He'll have to take it home and fix it. He's already had one smash. He's already got a repair bill for Weaver at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, he won't be paying that, I don't think. But look at him go. He is scything his way, as he always did, through the field. We've seen Ernie do this when he was back you in the know, day. But, but look at this. All of the IndyCar paddock is here. Yeah. Ernie Francis was just in IndyCar, yeah. you know, yeah. in that family. So maybe this is a little bit like, hey, hey, guys, don't forget me. Check this out. Well, I heard this morning that he did get a late offer from to be in the championship this year, but he'd already signed up yeah. with Trofeo. So he may find and squeeze in some Indy Next uh, races in he his schedule. He needs to, because you, 
the talent is one thing. Yeah. But the personality, the work ethic, the person that he is, if I were a team owner, he fits every every check mark in there. Well, I, I, I pray for the day when he gets picked up by a big IMSA team because look at IMSA because he will – he will absolutely do the 12 hours, the 24 hours. He'll do Le Mans. He'll do IMSA. And before you know where you are, he'll be doing WEC because he's that good a driver. And he's, what, 24? Yeah. Looks like he's going to be a lap later than I had predicted. <laughs> well, there's your $100 gone. But he's already passed another man as they cross the line. Ernie up to second place now and chasing the leader. It's now NASCAR versus Trans Am. Pontiac versus Ford versus Porsche. Yeah, as is always here. Yeah. Look at Ernie. Oh, gosh. He's going to make it before turn three, is he? Yep. Under braking. Ernie See, Francis Jr. See lap ya. late. Lap late. I'm sorry, but your $100 stays in your pocket. Yeah, that imaginary $100. It yeah. does. But Ernie Francis Jr. has gone from the back to lead the race now here in Group 10, as we predicted. And from here on in, goodbye, everybody else. It's the Ernie Show. But this battle between Wicked and... Uh, now watch this Porsche be able to Should outbreak. Should break him now, yeah. Right by. And then uh, from 60, 60. Oh, he's not giving up. Oh, gosh. All right, let's see if you got the grunt, Dan Fangio. Come on. Come on, NASCAR. Boogity, boogity. you got to wonder if Rusty Wallace ever comes across these clips and just thinks, you know, it's so cool to see these cars. cars. Yeah. Because <laughs> you don't, you know, as a driver, you don't want him to just waste away in a museum. I certainly don't. You'd love you want to see them out there. On track, yeah. and, and, you know, I bet you Rusty Wallace is like, I'd like to drive that thing around oh, Sebring. I'm sure with uh, social media the way it is, he probably gets Instagrams of this car every weekend. Yeah, I'm sure he's got, I'm sure he's been texted. Yeah. Your car's racing right now. Where you are you? Check it out. Are, yeah. you, are you in it? <laughs> That's probably what people say. Were you at Sunset last week? Now, we will have some legends with us in July at Lime Rock, the Speed Tour All-Star Race, and we have some huge names. Come like. On. Well, first of all, let me just say this. Greg Biffle and Boris Said are about to be on track together. Oh, so my word. What could go wrong there? Nothing. Then we've got, like, Ryan Newman, Bill Elliott. Oh, um, awesome. Labonte's going to be out there. Uh, Hornaday is going to be out there. So we have a huge list of cars. But will, this will, time Farrell, will Will Farrell be out there in his uh, <laughs> Maybe, NASCAR? yeah, yeah. Okay, good. In the, yeah, he'll be out there, the Ricky Bobby yeah. Talladega Knights. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. They're going to be in TA2 cars this time. Well, Ernie sets a brilliant scintillating 0-2, 2 minutes and 4.2 seconds. So he is railing around up there. He's, <laughs> he's miles ahead in terms of time than anybody else out there, enjoying every minute of it. This is why, by the way, he came back. He wasn't even supposed to do the Trans Am race. He came back specifically to do this historic Group 10 race. And then uh, Brent Cruz fell ill. So uh, that's how he got the chance to do the TA again. Uh, didn't come to anything, but he did get the pole, the fastest lap yeah. he's ever done here, a 58-4 around here. Wow. Pretty impressive. There's Dave Ricci. We saw Frank Ciopatini through there. And there is the 110 of Tom McGlynn, Young Blood Wheels. What is Young Blood Wheels? That's his wheel company. Okay. He was a, a partner and supporter of us last year. And uh, we got to go to his factory just uh, south of Sonoma. And there's the Frasers. We haven't seen much of the, the, those two cars, Scott but the Casey Rick. Kane car and the Hooters car. Oh, I can't. Man, he told me yesterday, who would have driven the Hooters car back in the day? He told me, and I can't remember. They had a pair of <laughs> That's the best one this weekend. And there it goes. Uh, that's well, in I, the house. I thought you took it endurance racing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. But um, come on, comment people. Who was in that car? And Robert Ness says, you ain't first, you're last. So yeah, he liked first, your Ricky Bobby comment. He liked my Ricky Bobby comment. Good. A few years ago, uh, we rented out Rockingham and did an SVRA event at Rockingham. And we reenacted uh, with one of our drivers, uh, Ron Branham, stripped down to his underwear, got out of the car, oh, no. and said he was on fire. <laughs> and I have it all on video. I'm going to have to share it. that to our social channels as we zoom in here on Frank Chopatini. Yeah, he's had a good run. He's sixth place at the moment, chasing down Ike Keeler. Dave Ricci up to seventh. He's gone forward. Alan Kowicki, that's who it was in the hit Hooters car. Who wins that one? That is Brandon Temple wins the congratulations Alan from us. Alan Kowicki, yeah. yeah. Good call. And like a true NASCAR fan, Brandon Temple didn't spell his name right. Well, Alan everybody Kowicki. else seems to remember who drove the Hooters car, except us. Yeah. 
second. So there we go. He was the owner driver. But Brett Bourdain drove this particular car. Wow. Look, our audience is on it. They are. I love it. See? We've got experts everywhere, and we absolutely love that. There's that Dave Ricci Camaro. Beautiful car. Yeah, breathless prepared, and that means it's a Francis family Did you see affair? all the Corvairs? All the Corvairs were Ernie Francis's yeah. too, out front. I love that Monza station wagon in the paddock. Ernie's just got another two. He's just flying. 2040 this time. Here comes uh, Casey Kane. I do apologize for that. We had a lot of experts here on the comment chat. I really did think that was Bill Elliott car, but you guys were correct. So feel free to correct us whenever we get it wrong. We do like to get things right. Jonathan told me it was Casey Kane, and I told him, no, it was Bill Elliott. So I apologize for that. It's all right. We, you're forgiven. So Ernie Francis has extended his lead to almost 20 seconds now in the time that uh, he got into the lead from the back. And he's still got time to extend it further. Just enjoying the sunshine of Florida. Ernie Francis Jr., welcome back to the Trans Am paddock. It's great to have him. It was so cool to have him in the paddock and get to interview him one last time on the grid, you know, mm -hmm. after he's been gone for two years and, and doing so well in his career. Yeah, I've been watching him in Indy next. He's not had the best of times, but it's never easy. I mean, I, you know, it's, it, that's the rough and tumble. That's the hard, one of the hardest championships in the world, in my mind. And, uh, you know, he, he never really thought about being an open-wheel no. driver. He His path, he really always wanted to be a sports car driver. Yep. Yeah, not, a, not never looked towards stock cars per se. Did Trans Am, was surprised by how well he did in Trans Am, and then... He ran an Xfinity race, though, at Road America, yes, did, he did pretty well. Yeah. But here they come, look at this battle here. Alan Davis and Alan Kowicki. With a pair of ones on the side of it. So that's the Alan Kowicki car, and the Frasers are usually in green midget spridget cars with this group one car. So I told him, I was like, you couldn't have gone to a more different car. You know, they went from a light, low horsepower car to a way too much horsepower, way too much weight, no brakes car. Mm -hmm. And so Ernie's extended his lead over Charles Wick to some 27 seconds. He's, he's not really holding back, is he? <laughs> Rick Frazier won our customer's bank. Uh, just basically a great American citizen award last night. That's him there. How did and he, then what, his, what did he qualify for that? How did he uh, just that? all the philanthropy the Frazier oh, okay. family does. Yeah, yeah. And customer's bank wanted to reward that. That's and nice. then Scott Frazier uh, won his group, group one champion i think that's his third win and he's been a group one national champion a few times so now they've moved up to this group 10 stock car and there's alan davison in that ta2 car alan davison another one of our svra drivers who really stepped out last year and sponsored dylan archer that's right for for many races that was really cool to see so thank you alan davison for doing that yep and dylan a uh, pretty good talent to be honest um he evan slater there's a couple of guys that i really like to see back uh, Thad Boffert seems to have disappeared as well. I'm guessing he's on to bigger and better, but uh, I'd like to see the two I mentioned earlier back in the seat, although it's great having Evan in the commentary booth. So we're getting down to the closing stages of this. Ernie Francis Jr. has made it a cakewalk, as they say here in the US of A. So Ike Keeler got around that Camaro. The white flag will be out for Ernie in a moment. And this is a good little battle between these two. In fact, that's the best view of those corners I've seen at Sebring. I always get confused when it's on board or low down at that shot. You get you, you can follow it much easier through 15 and 15A from above. Here comes your leader. Or leaders. I thought Ernie Francis was the yeah, leader. Sorry, yeah, he's gone already. That's our leader in stock car, though. You're That's correct right. there. Thank you. Thank you for uh, holding me up. I love the font of those numbers there. You like that? Randy Walker and Ike Keeler going at it right here. Sounds like a band. Ford versus Chevy. 35 seconds now over Wick in second place. Rocco. Uh, some seven seconds off third place, and through goes the 0-3 of Walker in fifth. 
there's a slight delineation. So Ike Keeler is in a TA2 car. I don't think Randy Walker is technically in a TA2 car. I don't know what the delineation is, but there's something in that car that makes it not a TA2 car. Okay. And then there's our cup car. <laughs> the Porsche cup car. There's our cup, cup car. car. Back in the day when the drivers would get out and you could barely understand them. You know, they'd be like, oh, man, that is going to be coming off in the turn four. I like those days of NASCAR. Are you from Tennessee? Yeah, I am from Tennessee. <laughs> and I had trouble understanding some of the NASCAR drivers, like Ward Burton. Whew. They'd have to put, like, closed captioning to interview him after a race. I used to do the, I used to do the Daytona 5 uh, 100 for Channel 5 in the U.K., Boy, that was fun. <laughs> trying, trying to explain what was going on. Yeah. Yes, they're turning left. <laughs> and left again. So we're getting to the closing stages. Ernie Francis Jr. absolutely in the zone in the 1998, 98, excuse me, A. It is his Ford Mustang of yesteryear. And I bet he's enjoying being reunited with the old girl, to be honest. I think that's, he hasn't had much to enjoy. He was really enjoying that Dodge Challenger until he got taken out. Out of the mist comes that Porsche. Is Ernie still out there? I haven't seen him in a while. Yeah, he's, he's just gone. He's so far ahead. Jeff Rocco, though, man, really great talent. That's a difficult car to drive. Yeah, I can imagine. At Sebring. And, um, you know, before I say anything, John, before I jinx this, I just want to point out we haven't had a double yellow in any of the SVRA races this weekend. Oh, you've done it now. No, you're absolutely right, though. Some no, good, clean racing good, to start the racing. season. Yeah, exactly. I well, love right. it. Good job, SVRA races. Uh, oh, reserves. pass here. Randy Walker over Ike Keeler. Yeah, he did. Randy Walker moves up to fourth Ike Keeler's fallen back. Not sure what's happening there. Well, he's been chasing him the last two laps, and he's finally got by. Just a big shout-out to Juan Gonzalez, Mission Foods. Thank you for supporting us. These couple years, we've had a lot of fun. We've got the Mission Foods Laguna Seca Speed Tour coming up here soon. Now, keep an eye on Randy Walker because he's in fourth at the moment. He's now going to try and see if he can chase down Jeff Rocker. Closing stages of this one. Here comes the Pontiac into braking. Let's take a look at the gap as they come out of this corner. It's not too bad. The Pontiac's got a... Good, good advantage, but from high above, you can see it's not that much. So he's closing in the gap from fourth place now. Here's Randy Walker in that Camaro. Into Tower Corner and down towards Bennett's Bridge Hall, Bishop's Bend. You said Camaro like an American. Did you like that? Yeah. Yeah, I've been practicing. Because it's a Camaro. And we got, we got. It's, a it's Camaro right now. Come on now. Oh, what a mistake! He was pushing a little too hard, was the 15 of Ike Keeler. And he's gathered it all together. But a uh, bit of a moment there for Ike. Nice job from Ike Keeler. Good recovery. We saw him kind of falling back, and then he went through turn five. I saw him go wider than usual, so maybe the tires are falling away yeah, from him. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, it's hot out there, too. It's a hot day here in Florida. Wind has gone away. I, I think Rocco's going to be able to take it here. Yeah, he's, he's certainly caught up enough. We'll check the gap between them coming into the next lap. Chopatini. Frank Chopatini. I like that era of the Camaro. You do? Yeah, I do. Because I think that was kind of like, you know, I was high school age-ish. Well, you would, yeah. High school for like 15 years, were you? Yeah, still no degree. Still no degree. Well, now Chopatini's turned it on as he comes up behind Randy Walker. Ah, Chopatini's the fastest man out there. He's just done his fastest lap at 212.7. Obviously, that's not on the same pace as Ernie, but all that group of races that uh, we're looking at. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that. But he's up to fifth, just to this fastest lap, as we say. Here he is. 
Yeah, what's happened here? Frank Chopatini turning it on. I know. Closing stages. I see the I see them waving the white flag. There we go. White flag is out. And back to our leaders. There's Arnie Francis Jr. Just made a pass on Alan Kowicki. It's just a joy to watch Ernie. It really is. Uh, he's ever so smooth. He's so precise. And, uh, he just does what it needs to be done. I mean, he's gapped them. Well, he came from the back, and now he's gapped them by almost a lap. Uh, over 45 seconds ahead of the rest of the field. That's how fast he is. So when I was talking to Bobby Labonte, I asked him, how, how do you want me to pronounce your name? And he said, well, we pronounce it Labonte. But all NASCAR fans and announcers call it Labonte. Labonte. They, he said they try to shorten all the words. Right. Why waste a vowel? Yeah. You know, odd times. Look at that. That's a beautiful car. And obviously, it's still got the pace. Oh, yeah, no question. It's been prepared perfectly again by Breathless, his family team. Goes into the hairpin at uh, turn seven, Q3 again. Down the mini straight that bends around the jinx to the left and the right, although they call it the Fangio straight. And then the home run down through this next complex here, past the Bennett's Bridge Hall. Bishop's Bend and into 15A, then 16, and then that long run down to the final corner. Let's celebrate with one of our great champions, seven times Trans Am champion, not taking part in SVRA. Look at that TA2 TA car. That was a great representation of the differences yeah. of the cars. No kidding. And Ernie Francis Jr. from Jupiter, Florida coming out of the last corner. And we'll see the checkered flag for the umpteenth time here at Sebring and win in SVRA as he has done so many times before in Trans Am. Well done, Ernie. It's cool to hear you say Ernie Francis Jr. takes the checkered flag again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was very lucky to come into Trans Am just when he was at the height of his powers. and uh, He was a phenom. Yes. I missed his uh, GT Stroke production car day wins, but he, he must have been GT, GT champion. Then what was it, TA3? Yeah, I think TA3, maybe TA4 the first time That's back right. then. Yep, because he got seven in total and four consecutive TA titles. Mm -hmm. Plane landing, and Charles Wick coming out of the heat haze, and still hasn't finished the race in second place yet. Here he comes. And he's not going slow, folks. Mm. So, Charles Vick, Wick in that 992 GT3 Cup car, comes out of the Mission Foods Sunset corner for the last time to take the checkered flag and take second place. It's a long time coming, but he'll take it. And Jeff Rocco will shortly be crossing the line again in that uh, black Pontiac Grand Prix car to take third. Actually, Frank Ciappettino got ahead Whoa. and got third. Well done. Well, we said he was going what? quick at the end there. Yeah. Yeah. He, he beat Jeff Rocco right at the end. Amazing. Great stuff. So Frank Ciappettino takes the Camaro. To Wait, hold on. We got to get it right. Ciappettini. That's it. Ciappettini. Excuse me. Well, that was an interesting race. and yeah. Had some twists and turns for sure. Let's take a look at the highlights of our final Group 10 race from SVRA. And we started off with a NASCAR versus Porsche start. The Miller Light car out front. Ernie Francis starting at the back, but quickly making up spots in his famous 98 Ford Mustang. And that was the moment he took the lead. And once he got the lead, well, he never looked back. It was a good fight, though, for second place. Finally, the Porsche going through on the number two genuine draft NASCAR. Ike Keeler was also in a good battle. And in the closing stages, though, Ernie Francis Jr. blitzing away. A little mistake by Ike. 
but uh, Keeler getting it right. And in the end, Ernie Francis Jr. winning by country miles, I like to say, and doing it in style. Charles Wick in second place and Frank Ciopatini in third. Confirmation then of the results. Francis Wick, Ciopatini, Rocco Walker, Ike Keeler six, Dave Rishi in seventh, so breathless are both first and seventh. Scott Fraser, Alan Davidson, and running out the top ten, Rick Fraser. My thanks to Ben Sissel for coming up and enjoying some SVRA action. And uh, once again, thanks for working the pits. And thanks to all of our help. Thanks to Ken Twait. Thanks to Evan Slater. And thanks to all those involved in the Greenlight production. I'm Jonathan Green. We will be at the next round of Trans Am, that is, uh, live on MAV TV at uh, Road Atlanta. And don't forget the Trans Am Thursdays on MAV TV. Thursday nights from 8 p.m. to all the way through because you've got the documentary series after all the highlights. But until then, for our... Speed Tour from Sebring, that's your lot. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now. That bush is really coming along. Hi, Carla. What are you up to? Oh, I just spent the whole morning having a little battery-powered fun. I can see that. This thing is powerful. Hey, honey. I was just gushing about our new favorite toy. Let me tell you, the battery life on this thing, <laughs> you wouldn't believe it. Sometimes we need a little extra push to get there. Sometimes, hey, I let it do all the work for me. And it has so many different settings. All right, Joel, ready to go again? <laughs> you should join us sometime. <laughs>